What, why not Knight of Six? I know, he wants to play Knight of Five. Oh, Knight of Five, you can't, Knight because of five, after takes it. Because right? yeah, 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 he right. takes and forks on H6. Yeah, 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 right. No, Knight of Six was winning, and he just blundered. Oh my god, Look Jordan at this. just promote tonight. He has to promote tonight to, to keep playing the game. He could have promoted you a Knight. But he still has under to. Under promote, hold all, it's not the control. Only, it's the only way, hit control. So if you have auto queen on, he did it. Oh, he did <laughs> it, he holds all. Promote tonight. most elite event in online chess returns with more than a hundred thousand dollars in prizes the speed chess championship is bigger and better than ever as players try to qualify their way in through the women's and juniors field we take a look ahead and see who's on deck waiting amongst the seated players of course right there at the top you have defending champion Hikaru Nakamura he'll face a familiar cast of foes in guys like Jan Napomniachtchi, Alexander Grishuk, Jan Christoph Duda, and more. But perhaps his biggest challenger will be a brand new player in the field. Currently the world number three and the top chess player from China, Ding Li Ren at 2809 looks to make his SCC debut a memorable one. Look ahead and mark your calendars for November 29th through December 1st, where the semifinals and finals will happen. You can follow all the action at twitch.tv slash chess, chess.com TV, or go to speedchesschampionship.com to stay up to date with all the latest news and info. Be sure to fill out your fantasy bracket and try to predict who's going to win this year's Speed Chess Championship, and we'll see you on chess.com. And we are live with the first ever Junior Speed Chess Championship presented by ChessKid.com. International Master Danny Wrench here alongside the one and only FIDE Master Mike Klein. Fun Master Mike, as he's known to the kids over at ChessKid.com. Mike, we are in store for what I think is going to be one of the best matches of the first round today. Yeah, by every statistical measure, these guys are so close. They both began playing chess around the same age. Both became grandmaster around the same age. FIDE ratings are so close. Uh, Van Furys does have a slight uh, edge in head-to-head, -head, but even he admits classical is not blitz. Um, so uh, it's a toss-up, and an 8-9 match should be a toss-up. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the, their matchup score head-to-head, -head, but they also play regularly on Chess.com. These guys are both well-known commodities to the online chess community, their usernames being Aryantari and Jopi2. Uh, but, of course, we're, we're going to be breaking down what we predict will happen here. Let's talk about a little bit of what our stats and data suggest here. Uh, we see that is the 8-9 matchup there in the left side of the screen. That's who is throwing down today, and... Less, less than 10 minutes right now, but as we said, this is what uh, we're, we're looking at here. I mean, you're looking at something that says, okay, we predict that one of these players is going to have a one-point edge by the 1-1 one, one segment. Uh, are we in store for overtime today, Mike, you think? Um, it could be. I mean, in fact, you know, one of them is higher rated in FIDE Classical. One of them is higher in FIDE Blitz. The other one's higher in FIDE Peak. I mean, it's just completely, uh, this is as close as it can be. So, we you know, we do our standings based on FIDE Classical rating. However, all of the other measurements are exactly, you know, right. conjoined. So, uh, I... You know, it's a great first match in the history of the Junior Speed Chess Championship because we have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be super exciting. As we said, it is presented by ChessKid.com. They are our title sponsor. You and I had fun yesterday with a bit of a casual kind of preview of this match, and let's talk about all the fun you have when you're on site with kids. Uh, and uh, give a shout out to all the all the work that ChessKid.com does with the national championships, the local state championships. Talk a little bit, Mike, about what ChessKid is all about here before the match gets underway. Well, these kids are at some of our live events. We're showing off all the features of ChessKid. We've got a live server just like Chess.com. Now, we put safety above everything else, but these kids are doing puzzles. That was actually at the Utah State Championship this year. Uh, that was the New York State Championship where Tani became a national TV star. Um, I go to probably four or five state scholastic championships each year. 
That was at the national championship this past weekend. That kid right there, Brian, is actually playing in a very special event on June 1st called the Chess Kid Games. Those are the kids from the Detroit public school system. You know, they're actually buying Chess Kid memberships en masse uh, for the entire city school system of Detroit. Wow. Nice pilot project they have going on there contributing to the city's renaissance. So very cool um, to, for us to be able to show off the website in person. Uh, as far as our match yesterday, I spent all night wiping it from the Internet Archive. It's gone. Okay. So uh, well, they won't get to see my win over you. I was going to say that <laughs> I guess that helps me to recover from the from the the wound I, the wounds that I'm licking currently from Puzzle Duel, um, and uh, the fun time we had yesterday. But let's move forward to talking about what's in store today. Of course, those who follow the Speed Chess Championship, you know what this is all about. Yes, we have some of the world's most talented juniors uh, throwing down for a spot in the main SCC. But otherwise, the format is the same. You've got three different segments uh, getting faster as we go. The winner, of course, moves on within the bracket. Uh, we have 16 of the world's most talented juniors, and as we've said, a lot on the line, including big prize money for these kids. Um, uh, in addition to the top prize, of course, the, the chance to play in the, the main speech as championship event. But I don't know how much money you made as a 15, 16-year-old, um, but uh, this, this, could be, this could be a good payday for some of these kids to make it through uh, this entire event. Yeah, I won the World Open uh, under 2250 prize one year and bought my first car with it. My dad had to drive it off the lot. Other than that, I never won any big money. Now, I did ask the players what would happen if they won first place. Ari Antari said big holiday. Mm -hmm. Jordan Van Foreest, he's going to buy more Ralph Lauren shirts. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, how many so, Ralph Lauren shirts do you really yes. need? So uh, if, if, Sar if Sartorial Sense was a uh, tiebreaker, I think Van Foreest would already win. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's clearly got style. Okay. Um, uh, let's talk about who else is going to be throwing down here in the first round. These match matches and their dates are all all confirmed. So if you're uh, holding your calendar, grab that phone, add it to the calendar. Like I said, reorganize your dentist appointment. Make sure that you don't miss any of these matches. Uh, we're going to, of course, preview a little bit of all of those or talk about them throughout the entire summer. But uh, next week, we've got Ali Riza Ferrugia throwing down against El Contra Martinez. Um, and... Uh, and just so many others, so everyone can mark their calendars. But, but today, these are the two guys throwing down. They are they are already with us and ready to go in a few minutes. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about the interviews you had with them yesterday. You previewed their favorite games they each sent you, which I thought was awesome. A lot of people loved the uh, the the chess kid videos and your analysis of their top top games. But what other fun facts can we take away about these two? You mentioned they both have uh, strong family support but slightly different types of family support in the sense that I don't know if Arion has a lot of chess history in his family, but Von Forest, I mean, his brother, Lucas Von Forest, is actually one of the top Puzzle Rush competitors on our site. And a GM as of 2018. And a GM. Yep. He's got a younger sister that's also... She's 11 years old and about to break 2100. I'm uh, sure she uses Chess Kid, Yeah, her, her, her His other brothers have FIDE ratings, not so active, but his great-great-grandfather was three-time Dutch champion. So was his great-great-uncle back in the late 1800s, yep. early 1900s. And uh, he was also born and raised and lives in Groningen, which is a famous chess city. So uh, I think he was born at, at 1200. Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously, yeah. I think you come out of the womb knowing... <laughs> Knowing what a, a pin and fork tactic is, right? Yeah. And you, uh, if you're never, if you're not born to be a grandmaster, being from Groningen, I don't know, I don't know where where you would be born from. So uh, we also had uh, the king himself, King Luke, Luke von Wheely, who is uh, very well known, of course, to the Dutch chess community and the global chess community, a uh, perennial for many years top ten player in the world. Um, he was just hanging out. He actually went to get lunch with Jordan a few moments ago, and then he came back. Yeah, that's so the... So they, I bet they're eating right now. He's the highest-rated Uber Eats driver of all time. I just <laughs> researched that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's just a fun fact. So right. Luke Van Wheelie, Loke Van Wheely, uh taking care of uh, of lunch there for Jordan before he goes down. But uh, we, we still have a couple more minutes. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what else. Oh, there he comes back. Awesome. You're okay, buddy. I don't even know if you can hear us, but you're no no matches have started. He's full Dutch. He put mayonnaise on his fries. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, right? Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll get we'll get Peter to talk and explain a little bit of that later. But um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about uh, what else is coming up, I guess, in the JSCC. Maybe we can go back to our bracket or schedule and, and remind everybody that this is the first match, but there's so much more in store this summer. Uh, and, uh, again, we, we mentioned that all of those matches with the players' names next to them are 100% confirmed as far as who we know, but so are the dates starting in July, the quarterfinals and the semifinals leading all the way up to our final. Uh, that that sort of end right around that last week of July is going to be when uh, we're already previewing the main SCC uh, because that is set to kick off basically the first week of August. So if you're wondering, hey, what was I going to do with my summer after the Pro Chess League, which, of course, we also have the PCL Summer Series. But there you go. Th these dates 
are going to be the biggest thing happening in chess, I think, over the summer, along with our Women's Speed Chess Championship as we prepare for the SEC. So, so mark your calendars, everybody. And I should mention that on June 1st, this special event on Chess Kid called the Chess Kid Games is actually going to qualify one player for the 2020 Junior Speed Chess Championship. Mm -hmm. So somebody's going to get into the next Junior Speed Chess Championship based on the June 1st event. And I like how compact it is. Everything's going to take place in about eight weeks or so. Yep. Remember, you know, Speed Chess Championships in, in years past would go with basically the entire calendar. Yep. So it's going to keep people's interest and motivation there, and then we go right into the regular Speed Chess Championship. Yep. Of course, as people saw in the high video before, we still will have a lot of, of the SEC going during the fall, partly because we are conflicting with so many big chess tournaments around the world, our own Fisher Random World Chess Championship, and of course there's... Uh, uh, a tour that runs called the Grand Chess Tour. There's so much. So the finals are still set for that last weekend of November, first weekend of first day of December, and everyone kind of is starting to get used to that being the the, the finale of the Speed Chess Championship annually. Uh, but we're we're about to get set here. We're about to get set to get underway here. In just a few moments, the games will begin. I'm excited. Hype over. It's yeah. time. I'm. I got the gray on. Just like the video, you got the black. I, I knew you were going to wear the gray. Have I gotten you one of these yet? I have one, but I didn't want to do the whole, you know, Arnold and DeVito thing. Right. You know, or right. maybe I'm Arnold because you're a little. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I can... I, I can, I, I, hey, I'll be your DeVito to your Arnold anytime. You got me in bench pressing, but I bet I got <laughs> you in a bike race. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're going to be getting started here in just a moment. In fact, we are officially underway. There we go. With a Caro Khan. And look at, uh, look at Statman there. Oh, yeah, they're ready. They're throwing down. I'm ready. I, that just got me a little excited. Um, we've got we've got a Karakon, but in a, an avoidance of a Karakon here. Sort of a, a uh, what I thought might become a King's Indian attack. But then Tari plays the move G6. So uh, what's interesting here, everybody, if we if we back up the analysis board real quick and show you where we're headed, the, one of the things about the, the Karakon, of course, with D3 is that he invited the queen trade, but Aryan not interested in that in that endgame. Normally, this structure is sometimes met with things like knight B to D2, so you can play G3 and bishop G2. And again, this is a king's Indian attack as a way to meet sometimes a Karakon or a French. But when black plays G6, Mike, I don't think white thinks that you'll get a, a big kingside attack, which is kind of the point of the king's Indian attack. So instead, uh, Jordan decides that he's just going to throw a curveball himself with e5 and now c5 still going for a big pawn chain and I, I don't even know who i think is getting the better out of this opening it's very unorthodox early on and uh i think knight takes e5 will be met by bishop e5 check here but your thoughts on on the obscurity of this is this a strategy that we think jordan might might employ all day something uh something a little bit odd out of the opening to throw Aryan off yeah, I'm not quite sure. I mean, the trade-off always in these type of Karo Khans is that you waste a tempo playing c5 in two turns, but you get your light squared bishop out. Um, but I'm more familiar with a regular classical advanced uh, French structure, and the center has already completely disappeared for white. Uh, I am looking at my notes and the um, the particular openings that the players play, and actually um, Ari Antari does play the Karo Khan quite often in classical chess. So this is not like some sort of curveball that... Uh, he's looking just to use in the match. In fact, were it not for Tari's Karokan prevalence in his games, he basically plays the full MVL, which means Sicilian mm -hmm. and Grunfeld. So the full MVL the full, yeah, Except he's, he's got the modified MVL where he throws in the Karo. So right. uh, that's really the only major difference in his opening repertoire. Well, I was just about to say, all, all the tension is building up here on, on D5, which is kind of a reverse Grunfeld, uh, because one of the main things you do sometimes as black in the Grunfeld is give white the big center and then undermine it. But Tari decides he can't really hold the pressure that's coming anyway, allows it to be broken, but that comes at a pretty big cost here as the C6 pawn falls with check. I'm I'm liking what's happened out of the opening here for white. I'm yeah, I mean, lie. isn't white just going to put a rook on D1 and yeah. cause if black like headaches it, the rest of the game? you put a rook on it, Mike. I taught you that yesterday, remember? <laughs> If you, if you like it, you got to put a rook on you it. Taught me, actually, you taught me how to make salmon. That's but, true. Yeah. We did have some good But no, a rook on D1, there. and how is yeah, Black no, this, ever going to get his, his uh, development organized? It looks like something went a little bit wrong for Aryan. We see the clock starting to slip a little bit in the favor of Von Forrest. Um Even the knight on C3 getting to C7 in certain variations I could see happening. Oh, yeah. No, I love that. And uh, one of the big things that, that's a problem for Black, as you said, is that when this rook comes to D1, 
even if you play bishop g7, this knight is going to be under fire forever and, and make it very difficult to get castled. Yeah, and um, that's a rook d1, as we say in the chess kid parlance, that's putting pp on the pp. That's right. You put, put pressure on the pin piece. Pressure on the pin piece. And if you thought I was talking about something else, I wasn't. I was hey, just using an acronym. Well, some yeah. of these some of these chess.com <laughs> users aren't as familiar with your with your famous lingo yes. at chess kid, but they're going to learn all about that during, <laughs> during this match here They today, certainly so. are. The, uh, the first call to action we have for social media happens right now. Let's remind everybody that we always have a daily question during our big events. And what better way to start off the JSCC than by asking who you think is going to win the whole thing, right? Uh, we've got two guys throwing down right here, the eight and nine seeds respectively. But I think I think both these guys have a decent chance. I think a lot of people look at Ali Riza Ferruja, just his reputation kind of precedes him on chess.com as a big favorite. But give us your opinion. Get involved. Use the hashtag speed chess on social media. Let us know who you think is going to win. And if you have a fun and creative reason why, maybe a diamond membership uh, flowing your way. So um, uh, First fun line of the day. Well, okay, I have to take the bishop back, but I was looking at playing c6 and after knight b6, c7, and giving away your queen and playing rook d8. Mm -hmm. I don't actually think it works. It's just the first fun forcing line of the day. Uh, anyway, none of that's going to happen now because when the queen goes to c7, there is no c6 and then c7 push. So any of those discovered attack possibilities are completely gone now from the position. Yeah, um, and that's probably why Aryan put the queen on c7, as you said. Now c6, the knight can move safely, and there is... No obvious way to dislodge the queen. There's still weird tactics on the board. Whenever you have a king that's not castled, you have to be willing to consider any kind of sacrifices and and get get frisky before that king gets out of the center. Yeah. So the doubling of the rooks is still just keeping the knight in a you know in a forever pin. What's yeah. the, what's the word for that? Not absolute pin, but like when it's absolutely forever. Per permanent? No, there's something uh, better I, than permanent pin, right? Is that like my BFFFF? -F -F? I'll just say forever pin. BFFFF. -F -F -F. <laughs> yeah. Why uh, did the rook not go to D8 to help solve this problem? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I think that even if you put the rook on d8, white is one step ahead, and I don't I don't see Aryan solving this problem quickly. And I think that's why the clocks are indicating yeah. um, that that white feels more comfortable, right? We know that these guys are all very strong grandmasters, and they're not going to be taking time in blitz unless they need it. Everybody, and that's um. That's an interesting thing to see how he solves this problem. I, in I, certain positions, you can walk your king to e7 and just hope he survives in the middle while you get your king's rook over. But e7 is a dark square. And uh, I just can't imagine that's a possibility when white has that bishop on e3 waiting to go to certain dark squares. So, uh, yeah, I just don't know what happens after rook on f to d1. Even if you don't win the knight, you just paralyze black forever. Um, and even you could play, uh, you know, like... Bishop f4 ideas. Okay, so he's giving away some material here, right? He's going to give away right. the a7 pawn, unless your queen's getting trapped after queen so, takes but a7. My, my wonder is whether the d file is more important than the a7 pawn. I think Aryan might even be happy if you took... Yeah, I was going to say I think take. your queen might have gotten trapped after rook a8, by the way. Okay, so that yeah. immediately solves that. But I, I think taking and using the d file is more dangerous anyway. This knight can't move because we have a new pin. Sometimes you have a piece pinned to a square. In fact, right. it's, this is so powerful. Rook c7, c6 was the idea, I think. Yeah, rook c7, c6 is c6 just game over. is 100% uh, the idea. I was about to show that, and I'm actually going to bring up the board here on the analysis board because we have that ability and show everybody why that game ended because I think it's confusing for a lot of our viewers when a grandmaster sometimes resigns before it's over, right? Yeah. The point is we were saying is this knight was actually pinned no longer to a piece by the queen pinning it to the king, but actually to a square. Rook d is a problem, right? And if you play rook c7, as Mike said, c6 comes very quickly, and your choices are either move the knight and get mated, if you're into that kind of thing, hmm. Or take and give up the free piece. So again, a very, 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 very strong start to the match by uh, Jordan von Fries, who was the underdog by one game, according to our cap score, which basically means there is no underdog in this match as a coin flip. But that was some really, really high-level preparation in an in an odd, semi, semi, I think, kind of unorthodox line. Um, in the Carol Khan, but he executed perfectly, and he's now got a one-game lead. Yeah, Terry never even got in that game. I mean, yep. he was just behind from start to finish. So yep. it's funny how sometimes in those positions as black, if you destroy white center, you think you should have the advantage, but all that right. did was open up all the lines for white's pieces. So yeah, you uh, know, don't and be careful I think what you wish for. One thing we, Rob and I talk a lot about this in the SEC, and we haven't done a speech chess championship with, with players this young, at least not across the whole field yet. So speaking of obviously our presenting sponsor here, Chess Kid, and talking about how kids will deal with the emotional roller coaster that can be losing games versus how 
more seasoned professionals, right? I think that it'll be interesting to see what happens throughout the JSCC. If somebody starts off on the wrong foot, mm -hmm. are they able to do what, you know, Nakamura and, and Maxime vachier Le Grave and a lot of these guys are able to do, which is sort of stop the bleeding. Don't mm -hmm. let it run away from you. So I think immediately, you know, the challenge is now on Ariantari right away, which is you've lost the first game. Um, how do you rebound, and uh, we'll see how he handles it. I imagine so. almost all of these players play, have played seriously long blitz sessions to get where they are today. Right. So that's not to say that... Uh, you're, maybe the young kids handle it even better, right? They probably have as much experience playing online as, as anybody. I was right? going to say, I don't know that that means they handle it better, but I know it means that they've got experience in long sessions, right. so uh, right. well, I don't know. Uh, they're actually playing a little bit of a joke kill here, and when they played in the Pro Chess League this year, uh -huh. we also had this, I believe with colors reversed, but Jordan Van Furiest's Amsterdam Mosquitoes uh, well, he won the individual game against Tari when they played in the Pro Chess League this year yep. against the Norway Gnomes. Give a shout-out to the Twitch chat for the first time. Shared my own personal 18-month anniversary as a subscriber a second ago. Thank you to everybody that's here, especially our mods. Use that mod love email. We appreciate all your support and everybody that is tuning in for the first match of the Junior Speed Chess Championship presented by ChessKid.com. So um, as, as uh, Mike said, this opening Gioco piano here was played by these two gentlemen in their battle in the Pro Chess League. And now we have a position where I, I tend to prefer white in a lot of these uh, a lot of these structures because despite the bishop pair, I feel like the this bishop on b6 is never fully happy. And in a lot of positions, you actually can use the squares like c5 for the knight or even the c5. I'm a little bit biased because if I admit, I'll back up and actually show that I get a structure similar to this in an opening I play regularly. At times, you can see in a uh, in a uh, di different types of variations of the of the scotch you get a structure very similar to this after d5 uh and and e5 and, and knight d7 so um you get a structure sometimes that can be similar where where white even though white loses the bishop pair has kind of a positional edge so i i like white a little bit right now and by the way if you like wild scotch games in my research for this broadcast tari played this unbelievable game against filipino legend eugenio torre at one of the olympiads i believe it was the 2016 one so go find that game on the internet it was just fantastic it ended in a draw but people they were just chucking pieces at each other and uh i guess that's allowed at their level i don't know yeah so uh, this is a good example, too, where the, the quote, standard rules of chess, Danny, don't apply. I was brought up, and this is another chess kid video-ism, uh, that when you have the IQP, you want to keep at least three minors on the board because you want, you know, you want volatility. You don't want to go to the end game. Right. But Danny has just brought up the fact that you can throw some of the... The, the rules out the window based on the dynamics of the position. Right. And uh, the bishop on b6 is not a real chess piece. And well, it, black's not going to get Specifically here, as you're saying, the d file is closed for black, right? So this normally weak, isolated pawn yeah. is, is never going to be under the direct pressure that black would like. And I think if we're comparing structure for structure, pound for pound, probably black has a few more weaknesses right now than, than white does based on the backward c file. D5 pawn also kind of weak. And, and I, I like this move by Tari. He's saying, you take my weakness... I get your weak pawn, except that pawn's probably a little bit better, right? And the reason for that, everybody, is the seventh rank is not necessarily something you want to give up when all the heavy pieces are still on the board, right? That's how that's how bad things happen. I'm sure you've talked about that. Is white just going to play rook c6? Not for any particular reason, but just, you know, black has an outposted rook, so shouldn't white be allowed one also? Yeah, I agree. I love it. In fact, you know, all things equal, right? Um, rook to c6 is a, is, a, is a move to keep in mind. I also think that white... Might look to take advantage of this bishop at some point with things like b4, a4, and maybe a5. Um, and again, what what Tari's doing is just sort of calling calling uh, Von Ferris bluff here by saying, if you ever take here, I'm going to win the c7 pawn, and my, my pieces will be much better placed for the ensuing position. So Black's idea is after the queen trade, Black can effectuate the f4 plant and really break down White's position. If the bishop on e3 has to move, then all of Black's pieces come alive, yeah. both of his rooks and his bishop. So White needs to figure out a way to deal with the fact that he cannot allow a pawn to get to f4. He yeah. might just toggle his queen sideways or something to g3. And, okay, and he so does just that. I, I, I think that's a great point that, uh, as you said, uh, Von Ferris is... is really trying to justify the position of his pieces right now by punching f4 through. And I wonder if you you consider getting g5 in. I mean, maybe you have king f7 and then g5 yeah. and f4. I was just going to say, now you see a little bit of utility of white's rook being on c6 yeah. is that he prevents g5 right away. But it's just going to be a matter of time before the king walks in. So maybe after king f7, h4, um, yeah. trying to prevent this g5, f4 idea. Uh, of course, white's idea, as Danny said, is b4, a4, a5, because if black's bishop leaves, then his oh. position falls apart. Okay, rook wow. takes e3. 
Well, that's that's, a, that's an interesting way to try to to try to force activity of your yeah. pieces. White, White could almost take back <laughs> and get some activity. Right, himself. and sacrifice the exchange right I back. I don't think he will, but it's just uh, my first thought. Well, well, it's 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 actually I think a very well timed exchange sacrifice uh, by Jordan as as uh, as playing the black pieces here. Um, the uh, I, I mean I actually really like it from a practical point of view. Now the time is favoring uh, von Forest, and and actually if he brings the rook back to guard c7, d4 is a permanent problem. Um, that's assuming he doesn't get anything more aggressive, right? If you play king of two uh, to guard the g3 pawn, then bishop takes d4 might be on the board right away. He certainly gets some time on the clock if nothing else. And in fact, one of the best games I ever played was in a Chess Kid video. Uh, the Chess Kid video is called What to Do When You're Losing. Yeah. It was Vitkevich Klein. I was completely lost, but I found Rook takes Bishop on E3 exchange sacrifice, and I made the game complicated, which is what you want when you're yeah. worse. And uh, I showed that in the Chess Kid video and earned the draw. Cost, uh, cost Grandmaster Vitkevich a bunch of cash. So. And I'm sure he wasn't that happy about that. He, he was Joe like I knew him. He was not happy and, about uh, that, no. Okay, so this know. is... Uh, uh, Rest in peace, Wojo. But yeah, um, I, I think Rookie 2 is possible here. Keep the pieces on the board, or right. rookie four. You're gonna you're gonna win the d4 pawn, and you know I have no idea what an engine would say, but instincts tell me that Black is actually doing perfectly fine here, and that that Tari may indeed have just underestimated or completely missed uh, this exchange sacrifice. And um, uh, for those of you wondering why Black did not play Bishop takes d4 to win the pawn, you all this is a general rule that does apply here. You almost never want to trade one set of rooks after you sack the exchange because then White's rook on c6 just goes full Pac-Man on all of Black's pawns. So yeah. it's not even worth a pawn for Black to get the rooks off the board. He wants to keep one set of rooks on the board. Which is an instructive thing to point out that very often when you sacrifice the exchange, uh, keeping the pieces on the board is in your in your favor because when you get one rook versus just one bishop, it's a lot easier for the rook to sort of flex its muscles in the open board, take advantage of the things it can do that the bishop can't. But when you have the rook and bishop working together, now you see, I was just predicting rook d2 because we see potentially f2 will always be under fire. Obviously, black can go full Pac-Man over here on the queen side pawns. Um, yeah, White can't coordinate his rooks, which is what he wants to do. Like, if you yeah. get both of his rooks in the 7th or something. Uh, one more point to add to what you said, Danny. You're exactly right. And if you keep both White rooks on the board, it also gives the Black Bishop more targets. Right. Uh, no, not right now, because the, the rooks are on yep. the wrong colors, yep. but uh, later on in the game, perhaps. Now, clearly this has transitioned well, and now you're going to see rook f3, which was why Von Ferris played this check, everybody. Taking advantage that king g1 would have been met by a devastating discovery. If we show that on the analysis board, we love devastating recovery uh, recoveries. We also love devastating recoveries. But that would have been winning the exchange back and had a winning rook ending. So Okay, idea here is if black plays pawn takes pawn rook g6. Yeah. And I guess you could play rook h7 in an emergency, not, but white... Not a happy camper. But yeah, white yeah. is trying to find a drawing technique here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, there's no way that white could win this game. And so here, Von Furst has has a few things to consider. You could play the rook to f3, but then you have to worry about even g6, right? And now, as you said earlier, Mike, one of the biggest problems for Aryan's position is the rooks were never coordinated. They weren't working together. If you allow something like g6 threatening mate immediately, and then I play something like rook e6, suddenly Bob's your uncle, you may actually... Uh, okay, so you did find a way for, for white to win this game, but maybe you do take and accept the fact that that you can't do any better. Yeah, yeah. it looks like he, he yeah. agrees with you. Because you can't really be worse after rook h7, right? I mean... Yeah, as, it, as painful it, as that rook is, if white doesn't have a follow-up, maybe black just walks the dog over here, and here he goes. Yeah, he's 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 taking kind of what seems like a visually very un, unappealing approach, but, but black still holds all the winning cards. Yeah, I he, think we're just going to see check, 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 check on I, at I, some point. I, I know that Von Furst would, would love to play this and stop it, but it comes with a new cost, right? The pawns get going, so... So indeed, I think uh, he's going to allow. Oh, but this move was this move was interesting, right? He's saying if you check me all the way back, well, you could actually, just take on g7 here. Yeah, that's, that's and now an easy now draw. we now we likely most certainly will see a draw. Yeah. Now, um, by the way, black will not lose both pawns. But if you do, in another chess kid video about uh, pawnless endings, we have that video. Yep. Um, you want your king to walk to the opposite color corner of your bishop. Yep. A little hard to explain why. Go check out the chess kid video. Everything's there. there. Yeah, yeah. We don't. We haven't missed anything on chess kid. Now, uh, we we saw Aryan recover, I guess, in the sense he didn't lose two in a row. We always talk about momentum and and who's going to be the first one to deliver, you know, a couple victories or or, or lose a couple games. Um, that hasn't happened yet. I think that's a that's a semi win for Aryan in that he didn't lose the second game, but it's but also he drew with White. So certainly match advantage. Jordan Von Forest right now. We see the same opening played here as we saw in game one. If you're just joining us, this is the, the variation that uh, Jordan preferred. 
And uh, well, except the queens have left the board quite early, but it exactly. was a it was another Caro, another Caro, um, inviting Aryan again. And Aryan was not interested in repeating that again. If you're just getting here, Jordan won a very, very nice game to start this match, which is why he's up one and a half half. So, um, shout out again to the chat. So many people active, actually, both chat rooms as active as they've ever been. We got Brother Josh and Lady Wolf in the Chess TV chat, along with all of our premium members. Shout out to the Twitch chat here. I've seen, uh, uh, we just had a sub there. Thank you, Isaac Cato, for that. And uh, just thank you to everybody for being here. It's going to be a long match. Don't go anywhere. Things are just getting underway. And uh, this is the Junior Speeches Championship presented by Chess Kid. All right. Knight E1. What do we got here? This is this is a creative way to defend F2, right? You don't want to put a big piece defending a small piece, kids, whenever you can avoid it. So knight e1 is a dynamic way to deal with the threat, saying if you take, you bring my king to the defense. And if for some reason Aryan said, I don't want to take this knight, would have popped into d3, I think, both attacking and defending f2 at the same time. So Yeah, probably still going to go there anyway at some point, if yeah. I had to guess. It's something that I think, uh, this, this is not a position you would see as a very popular chess kid choice, I think, for a lot of kids, Mike. Queens are traded early, mm -hmm. right? What do you tell kids when they're afraid of trading queens because they just like having the lady on the board, even if unbiasedly they should. Yeah, actually, I have a problem with this because uh, when I teach kids like the Scotch Gambit after e45, knight right. f3, knight c6, d4, when black plays d6, I think the best line is to trade and trade queens, but there are some kids that just won't do it. Right, because on principle. Yeah, you could tell right. them you're going to win a pawn after trading queens and they still won't do it. Right. So th then they bail out into the uh, the low plays line where they play bishop b5. But uh, I tell them they have to be a more versatile player Okay. and that uh, if you win a pawn by trading queens, it's okay, you're going to get queen back. It's going to take you 40 minutes. Yeah. Right, right. This is this is the whole uh, donut thing. You put a kid in a room, and if he doesn't eat the donut, he gets two donuts when you come back. And you know the psychology. Yeah, I, stuff. I love the psychology yeah, of this. Yeah. And uh, we've uh, we've got a, a, some a, a fun little quip here. In 2018, the Tata Steel Challengers Tournament, Jordan beat Aryan in 22 moves with a Scotch game. So you keep mentioning the Scotch game. I've mentioned that I play it. So for some reason, a lot of Scotch on the table here. The uh, the uh, non the non-alcoholic kind. A lot, a lot of scotches on the table to discuss. Um, I often, with kids, I often quote, uh, you know, how, how the masters before them have played, what comments and, and, you know, quotes I think that can be inspirational. And I'm always referring to a guy like Kromnik who there was a quote, I'm sort of paraphrasing that I don't play the position, I let the position play me, right? Suggestive of the fact that there's a right approach in every position and you don't want your own biases or styles to influ influence that, right? And so the more you push yourself to understand that the best move might be trading queens, it might not be, right? But you have to be willing to just uh, assess it unbiasedly. Yeah, and so. in fact, when I, when I, my other life as a chess journalist, when I go to the, uh, like the world championships, uh -huh. and you get a lot of amateur journalists, they tend to ask the players like what kind of style they are and almost all the top 10, they're universal. Because uh, they have Sorry, to. Be. I love the prime. But I'm listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Some things are jumping. You, you see, you're used to all this multitasking. I know. I'm I, used yeah. to this. You I was, li I was listening on. to you and watching that prime thing because I just love the the explosion. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk about the X's and O's here. We've got okay. this knight popping into d4, and a big question for White is: Am I ignoring that, or ready to trade, or do I afford c3? And I, I, I'm guessing c3 will be played, everybody, even though it comes with the potential weakening. Of, of uh, pieces on the D file. You know, it's funny. If you play C3, uh, I don't think it works, but another exchange sack coming maybe. May have been on the board, Rook right? I don't think takes, it might work. Shake and bake and uh, bishop B6. It's possible. Well, the king could have walked to C2 and given right, away the e given pawn. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to say. But either way, uh, Jordan surprised me with the move king of three. So he said, no, I actually am prepared to part with my bishop and then continue to play the the two knights tango, if you will, versus the, the different minor piece set. Um, I still like white a little bit, but um, I'm feeling this is already a much, much better direction, obviously, than what Aryan had in game one, clearly. He, he lost that one very, very uh, quickly. Um, and you like white for what reason? Because I'm not sure well, I agree with you on I, this I think the main reason I like white is because as long as the structure stays this way, mm -hmm. then this bishop is a worse minor piece than either one of white's two counterparts. Okay. I like this idea of the knight working it. Right, with no diggity all up in the light squares here. Yeah, I, 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 I think you're right. I mean, there, it's unclear, right? Black has the D file to compensate for that. There's clearly some awkwardness about White's king here, right? Um, but I don't know. Instinctively, I feel like I felt like positionally, I would prefer White. I might still go for C3, Knight C5, and yeah. just try to use the fact that this bishop is not my favorite minor piece as long as the structure remains this way with a center pawn on the dark square blocking it. So Black has a choice. I thought the idea of Knight to G4 was to play F6 and relieve the bishop on C7 of duty, mm -hmm. but actually you could try to get your E8 rook to C6 and actually create some kind of weird counterplay. It's probably not enough with just two pieces. 
Um, the other problem with playing pawn f6 is that if the king walks back to g2 and white gets an f3, then mm -hmm. your knight has to go to some really bad square. Yeah. So black may not commit yet exactly what he's going to do on the f file. We see Aryan kind of showing his first, first kind of emotion of the day there, it seemed, right? He's down a game in the match and kind of takes a big a, a big sigh of uh, gather myself frustration. Nice wainscoting behind him, though very clean, very fresh, very uh, very uh, European. Look at you, new homeowner in, in, in this style right Wayne's there. Wainscoting or wainscoting? I, th I think it's I think you're right. You, you watch yeah. the HGTV. Hey, you know now the bishop comes alive, though, because when the knight's traded, the bishop has access to b6. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other knight's going to replace it on c4. But the bishop could still sneak out to the c5 square. Um, but still, I think that I think that partly Aryan's frustration there is is coming back to kind of what we said that this is this is an endgame where even with that slight activity, probably it's a two result position for White and and for those uh, kids tuning in, people don't know that phrase. It kind of means that as long as as long as we we stay in this sort of direction, probably White's the only one who can win. Uh, if if we're talking about the knight coming in, going to be the more powerful of the two minor pieces. Black has some pieces that are kind of blocking the bishop's mobility. Yeah, the, I, the knight looks pretty juicy on c4. And by the way, yeah. knight versus bishop in the ending? The chess kid video on that. That's king right. level 34. That's that's because that's and that's why it's all the way at king level 34 because it's kind of complicated, right? I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of different, you know, because we know open end games, right? The bishop's going to outplay knight end games, um, you know. Yeah, you have to factor in are there p are there pawns on both sides right. of the board? Yes, that usually favors the bishop, but there's not a lot of targets for the bishop, and the knight will have targets, and also the black bishop is hemmed in by two very important pawns. So it's not just one factor to think about. Now we have a true knight versus bishop. I'm already making another. Kid video. We're all kids to someone, uh, subscriber Bon Heel of all of in uh, in uh, Twitch chat, right? We're all we're all somebody's kid. So a little high end uh, idea here, though. White never wants to play e4 takes f5 because after the recapture, then the e5 pawn is mobile uh -huh. and the bishop comes alive. And you, this is the only thing you can't do as White is let that bishop have any fun. So no inviting the bishop to the party. The right. evite has been lost in the inbox. No, you're right. As long as the structure remains, then then White has the the two results we're talking about. Now that we've seen a couple games, um, I think that I think that we can discern that it feels like Jordan is a slightly faster player at this point. Now, sometimes that changes. We often see this throughout the different time controls. Sometimes the player who's down on the clock in five minutes ends up being the faster player in bullet, right? I mean, it, there's there's things that can certainly change throughout the momentum of a speed chess match and the format. Um, maybe uh, whatever but, Luke got for lunch had some uh, some caffeine yeah, or maybe high energy some caffeine in, it, in yeah. it, right? Right now, it just it seems like Jordan is his. I mean, not seems he has been up on the clock in all three games so far. I have a question for you. I'm sorry to cut you off, but yep. if you trade pawns, you have to worry about this G5 break. So I was just and, wondering, and, and even the H4 pawn just being a target in some positions. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, maybe that was just the reason you couldn't play Knight F1 because after the pawns trade, maybe you're just going to lose H H4 very That's quickly. That's a good point. Yeah, I think the idea would be if Knight F1 takes and takes that h4 might be weaker and easier to get for black than any of these pawns here. Yeah, um, you just can't guard it. It takes your knight three turns to get to g2, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, just lost. No, and, and, and but, uh, you know, Aryan has created that potential anyway, right? I mean, this is this has become much more dynamic than it was earlier, and and you got to give Aryan some credit for mixing it up and fighting the good fight despite having the, the worst, quote-unquote, uh, minor piece of the two. Okay, um, this is a really interesting decision. You can take on h4, but I think it costs you two queenside pawns. Okay, so yeah. instead he's going to try to not lose two queenside pawns. And actually, he might make double rook passers, which is the last thing you want when you have the knight on the chessboard. So. Interesting stats there by our team working so hard behind the scenes. Shout out to all of you. You know who you are. Thank you so much for everything everyone does to make these shows the best they can be. But we just we just drew, drew a comparison and asked how many bullet games have these guys played. Look at the difference. Jordan Van Furiest has played 6,000 in bullet games on chess.com. First of all, his parents might want to talk to him about how he's spending his time. But Aryan Tari has played 14. So bullet games, not Aryan's thing. We know he's active in the pro chess league and plays blitz. What does that say about if we get time scrambles? We're already having a very, very clear nod in Von Furry's direction, which makes me want to call out our guy, our stat guy, Smarter Chess. Sorry to do it, but why in the world would you have our cap score suggesting that Aryan Tari is the favorite by one game in bullet? If that's the case, if Von Foreest has literally played 6,000 more games. So, Matt, we're going to talk about this off camera, buddy. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I, I don't understand that. We're going to have to uh, Wait, wait, wait. Smarter Chess has just told me 6,000 is more than 14. So there yeah. you go. So thank you. <laughs> so thank yeah, you. It does, well, it doesn't make sense, right, that Aryan Tari would be the, the slight favorite in Bullet then if that's the case. So all right. Uh, but look at this. I mean, we ask who's going to be better as the game goes on in time scrambles. Well, this you got to give Tari some huge credit for really outplaying 
Um, I think this game is going to end in a draw, which is a win uh, if okay, there well, is such a thing. Well, Tari's countrymen does not generally believe in blockades. By the way, that's one of the most misheard quotes in the history of chess. You mean Magnus Carlsen's yeah, blockades the don't exist? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, no, it's not what he said. See, you, you, you botched it, too. No, I know what the real quote is. I was, okay. I was oh, sorry, helping sorry. everyone else know what, okay. what, what, what the you botch set, was. You set me up. Go ahead, go I ahead. I apologize. The 2016 World Chess Championship, he said, in general, I don't believe in blockades. Not, I don't believe in blockades. Clearly, he's, he's good at chess. He's, Look at that. Von Furies just blundered the knight. Yeah, King G3, King E3, and resigns. And that's why we don't believe in blockades. Von Faris takes a look to the side, uh, gathers himself emotionally. The point is the knight mm -hmm. is pinned, and we're going to bring PP on the PP. Yeah. More pressure to the pin piece, chess kids. He gave a little waggle, and, and uh, oh, it's like Luke Van Wiley's mic is turned off. He's probably yelling in the other room or something. Yeah. Well, that's, a, I mean, let's talk, that's a huge win right there. We talked about the fact that... I mean, Aryan, we saw his his body language earlier. He was distraught, not happy with how that game was going. I think objectively we were correct and that Black was a little bit worse. But he outplayed Jordan von Friesen in that endgame. I mean, no other way to put it. And it ultimately led to a blunder by the Dutchman. Noticeable, we have a tied match. Noticeable change in his demeanor, too, by the way. Yep. When you put your head over your eyes like yep. that, that means you're a little... Now, I, I always forget that this is a Rosalimo or a Moscow, but it doesn't matter what you call it because... When I interviewed the players before this match, yep. I asked Jordan what was the best chess advice he ever received, and his answer, got it in my notes here, play the Nidorf. And what does he do? He avoids the Nidorf. He avoids he plays, the Nidorf, yeah. so who knows? Well, actually, Atari avoided the Nidorf. That's really, you know, I should be clear about things. But, uh, but you know, maybe Atari uh, he somehow got access to my notes and doesn't want to play into a Nidorf. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, hmm. we'll see. What I, I always wonder if sometimes they save secrets for the faster time controls. Um, but to show how that game ended real quick, everybody, again, uh, Jordan played the move knight e1, thinking he was tricking Tari by bringing the knight to d3, where surely one of these pawns is falling, right? But when king c5 was played, I think you always have to be careful, assuming your opponent has blundered, right? Uh, obviously, Von Faris played what we saw in the game, which was thinking, oh, he blundered a pawn, but that is what ultimately led to this pin tactic, and again... White resigned because he was losing a piece and going on to lose the end game. So, but Danny, it needs to be said: ahead. if the knight stayed on c2 to cover d4 and this the king stayed on h3, wasn't White just going to get Zugzvand because he has no waiting moves? So, if you put the white king on h3, interesting, right? The bishop can toggle on the d8 h4 mm -hmm. diagonal, and at some point, you either have to move your knight and allow the black yep. king. So he was going to get Zugzvand no, so anyway. No, he had right? been outplayed for sure. You're right, yeah. and again, that's a great point that that Mike is saying. Let's say king h3 guards the pawn, king c5. If the knight moves, the king enters. Working on your knight moves, everybody. If the king moves, then the h pawn falls. So even if it were black to play, what Mike is saying is even if this position were reached with black to play, black has a million ways to wait with the bishop, which is one of the flexible advantages it has yeah. over a knight when, when a knight always has to leave this, uh, uh, defending a square when it moves. And that's like a, that sounds like a random fact, like a knight must always switch colors, everybody. But it's very important to understand that that's why the bishop has the ability to sort of play tickle and, and outplay and put a knight in Zugzwang because the bishop does not have to leave a square that it's attacking when it makes a move. A knight always leaves a square that it was previously defending whenever it moves. Do the math, check me out, and you'll see that it's right. So and it's I'm a very important point um, as far as how you evaluate those end games and uh, instructive stuff there from the and fun master Mike. Zugzvan, just checking here, king level 19. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, I think it should be more appropriate. King level like thirty, if we're talking about like my level of education. Like I don't know, I need a little more time to get to that. I'm just but doing these matches. These chess kids are faster than me these days. I'm just harvesting um, new material from these matches. That's yeah, why I'm here. Is, this is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got this uh, this now Maroxi bind type of position, right? You, you mentioned it was not. We'll, we'll mention quickly there because I was often showing the instructiveness of how the last game ended. But as you said, this was a avoided Nidorf. And I, I bet I bet that Jordan would have gone into it, speaking of that quote. Um, that means that uh, Aryan played the move bishop b5, which um, is the Rosalimo slash Moskva defense, whatever you want to call it. A very common structural transposition here. Let's talk about this Maroxi bind, everybody. Uh, the main advantage for white is that normally the bad bishop in this structure, this light squared bishop that has to sit on some square, is already traded. However, when black has less space in any pawn structure, usually you want less pieces because that gives you squares like this for the queen and knight to maneuver as as uh, Jordan is doing. Instead of the minor pieces all wrestling each other for the very few squares that exist when you have less space, 
the trade of the minor piece kind of helps white philosophically from the other perspective so this structure is all about white going to want to keep space when and where do i go for things like b4 and try to go big or go home black on the other hand is trying to maybe punch through with d5 and b5 at some point but Overall, I'm a little biased toward these positions as black, if I'm honest. I often feel that the departure that light square bishop is more beneficial for black for the kind of maneuvers we're seeing here. And white is still always held back to play moves like b4, Mike, because c4 is, is going to be a target now that that light square bishop is gone. So, okay, there's my there's my perspective on this, and I think it, it's an interesting one uh, to see how, how, how it goes, especially if they come back to it, if this position is something that we start to see repeated. You've had more Russian training than me, so I, I trust your knowledge on this. I would have thought that keeping the light squared bishop increases your chances of playing one of your two main pawn breakthroughs, which is d5. Which is true, uh, right? I, no, you're not. I, I think that, that we were listing the basic dynamics for sure. I think that uh, one of the things that a lot of people, when they see games like this, is they don't know just what the little idiosyncrasy of the light squared bishops being on the board versus off the board and how it changes everything, right? So there are advantages to both. And I, I would say that a light square bishop kind of Maroxy bind definitely allows the more aggressive Roxies, right? Whether right. it's f4 and f5, or whether it's, as you said, the bishops here, so it's the b4 and these sort of pushes. Um, so it, this is a different kind of a more slower positional game. Really, probably just frankly, very, very close to equality. I think I'm getting a lesson. Um, maybe that's because my invitation for private lessons with Zaretsky got lost in the mail as got a kid. Got lost in the mail. Yeah, well, you, yours didn't get lost in the mail. It but, didn't. It was, uh -huh. a, it was a fun summer. I like yeah. to call it my, my summer of Russian love. <laughs> um, and... Uh, I don't know why I just called it that. That was a James Bond title that never got made. <laughs> That's the James Bond title that got lost. I would have thought Tari would have a slight edge on the clock because in these kind of positions, I feel like white is always the one leaning on black, and right. black is the one that has to be extra careful. Um, but that's not the case so far. Jordan still Jordan is has been up faster. on the clock in every game. If you're just joining us, everybody, thank you for being here. This is the Junior Speed Chess Championship, the first of the year, presented by ChessKid.com. And... I agree with you. I, I think White's position is easier to play, like in theory, Dr. Evil, evil Fingers. Yeah. Um, but but Jordan is also, what he's pointing out here is, look, I'm black. I don't need to prove an advantage here. I, what are his last few moves? What has he done? He's well, just he, like gone back and forth with his pieces. He's playing shuffle puck here. He could have gone style. full Alakine's gun on the D file, but the problem is you can't really break through on D6 as long as the knight can go back to, to yeah, E8. And, unless and you want to do another exchange sack. Well, I think plus he was worried about tactics specifically. The knight coming to C5 and E5 might... I don't know. Okay, maybe it doesn't Maybe it doesn't fall. Cause that looks solid. And, and there are consequences. No, no, I, I don't know if that was right. But... Okay. but um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that's one of the issues with white here is you have more space. But often when you have a space advantage, the way you use it is you expand or you or you use the fact that your pieces should be more active in a space advantage. But you're lacking access to a lot of what would normally be the critical central square. So you know that's why these positions are um, are are solid for black. It's a it's a Maroxy bind, but you know, uh, less space doesn't always mean you're losing if you don't really have any weaknesses and your opponent can't use those extra squares. I'm so glad white didn't trade queens on c5 because I think all four recaptures were reasonable. And uh -huh. I, I would, I have no idea which one was, which was best. Probably rook takes is the only one that I, I would not consider. But anyway, but it look didn't at, happen. Look at your just, just playing fast, keeping a time ed edge on the clock. I have a high-level question. Yeah. If, if if it's Jordan and not Jordan, and it is Jordan, uh -huh. is his username Yopi and not Joppy? Huh? Can we get a Dutch man in the chat? Twist ending. Dutch are pronouncing his username. Okay, Yopi. so they just they they said we're just moving our pieces around aimlessly, and that's not what right. the fans want. And they're thinking about the fans mostly, so they agreed to withdraw our third straight Caro, uh, but our second straight, uh, you know, early queen trade Caro. Yeah. So uh, smarter chess, our man uh, who works on the stats and the the uh, the caps prediction, a lot of the things that we do uh, to try to add some math and use data and science to predict chess, and and we're working on that all the time. It's kind of kind of a fun passion project for us at chess.com, and. Um, and, and, and I think it's often been proven, despite criticisms by people like me and Robert on camera, to be right. So we'll see if Smarter Chess is right again. I believe that Matt missed the boat on this one. With Jordan Van Forest being the much more experienced bullet player, I would, I would be shocked at this point, now that we have the data we do, that he's played more than 6,000 games of bullet if he's not, frankly, the heavy favorite in bullet. We will see, um, but that's going to be my prediction. So it's called the dumb chess prediction. We'll see what happens when we get there. Um, but that's my prediction right now is that if Tari doesn't have a lead in bullet, that Jordan is going to pull away from it because I just don't see that kind of experience being overcome by Tari. So we'll see. And as a person who reports on these players in real life, yeah. I don't do predictions. Uh, uh, I love that. That well, is the per That's why he's our professional journalist. It, 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 I'm designed to look like an idiot on camera. He's designed to play the 
politically correct card. I spent hundred thousand dollars in journalism school to be told <laughs> to be told not to be uh, partial. Yeah. So, let's talk about your journalism career later. Uh, no, sorry. Back to back to the show. Jordan von Fariest and Aryan Tari throwing down. This is the Junior Speeches Championship. Thanks for being here. We got it. So we have a repeat where I thought that Jordan was better in that game despite Tari eventually winning. I think Jordan did too, or he wouldn't have repeated and gone back to this well. Yeah, this is uh, almost a battle of whose A pawn is going to be weaker in 20 moves because uh, they both have to be a little bit careful about those A pawns. Um, I don't see much going on here. I can't really understand a pull for either side, to be honest with you. A different dynamic than we had last time where we had Jordan playing the two knights versus the knight and bishop. Here, Jordan has gone for the same the same dynamic that black has. Um, the problem with b6 is that commitment makes this bishop more of a target, and I expect at some point c3 and b4 to ask that bishop how he intends to deal with the b6 pawn. So again, even though it, it you know didn't prove uh, to fruition last game, I, uh, I'm going to predict that white is better in this structure. I, oh, I'd really like that move. That's, you want access to d6, yeah, don't you? That, yeah. Look at that square, right? You want to put a rook on that or even a pony on it, but that is a that's how you call king e6 out. Um, like a d6. Like, like a, a d6. I think I got that one wrong. And 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 it, well, okay. You can you can say like a d6 because you've probably flown on a g6 jet. But if the bishop backs up to avoid that trade, b6. It is a 15 year old hip hop reference, though. I think I may have lost the uh, lost the, 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 the relative the relative pop culture reference contest. Yeah, so that would be a line of how white could grab the pawn everybody and come back and defend b2 at the same time. So is it already crisis mode for black, or can he play like put a rook on the c file? And ex oh, but you're still losing b6, and so I don't know. I don't know. I think you're losing the d6 square, uh, yeah. but I. I I think you might you might be right that that ends up being what Black settles on to the Bat Cave. Let's look at it. Rook c8, chop, chop, check over. Use that d file. Now I'm threatening to take on b6. I'm also threatening e5. So okay, it actually doesn't look like this would be possible for yeah. Tori. He might be he might be taking his time here, looking at it, like if he has to play b5 or if he has mm -hmm. to go crazy here. But again, he's down on the clock. Again, we see Jordan being more leaning in, which seems to be where his confident body language stands. And again, I'm going to say, despite the even score, I feel like right now Jordan has been outplaying Aryan uh, based on just the tempo and the feel. And I think that it shows maturity when you go back to an opening that even though you lost that game, you know darn well, I beat myself that game. I outplayed myself in that end game where Black eventually won, right? And for those of you just joining us, it was a very interesting tactic where, where Tari kind of swindled uh, swindled Jordan, but had already outplayed him in the end game. So, but I think that's what you got to do. You got to know: Did I lose that game because the opening was bad, or was it my bad? Yeah. And and Jordan is going back to his preparation, and I think he's going to win this one because he's of focused it. on the process, not the result of that pre of that game three. And you should write a book on quotes like that. I will. He's up trust two, the process. He's up two minutes, more than two minutes. That's the biggest time discrepancy mm -hmm. we've had. I have a question for you because you've done so many speech chess championship matches. Do you like it when the players get into a theoretical battle and play the same thing over and over because you get more into that theoretical battle, or do you like when they just go uh, haphazardly with their openings? Honestly, as a, as a commentator, uh, Robert and I are often critical of that. Rook d8, by the way, a good defensive move um, to stop the d6 pawn. But it loses b6, and I don't see a reason we can't go take it. a4 will fall in the end, but so will a5 and c6. Here's the line I'm looking at. Do you so, trade rooks once to make sure you don't lose your own a4 pawn? I don't I don't think so, because if this is played now, you can trade. And right, if you but, but, but black could trade first. If you force this trade... And then rook b8. And then rook b8. And then how you guard everything. My, my, oh, I can't throw in b3. Because fork town... Well, you could play rook d6 and then b3. Okay. I mean, if that's your idea, I could also play. Rook Everything D6 is just and hanging take here. Take on c6. Yeah. So I, I think I think Jordan is still better, and he's going to use this extra time he's earned to calculate. But to answer your question, I think as a commentator, we're often critical of these of these guys when they play the same thing. I think because maybe we just assume the people want variety. But frankly, as a, as a chess player, I actually really like it because I feel like I personally learn a lot. Yeah. Like I, one of my favorite matches that I learned a lot about the Berlin was one from I think the 2017 SCC where Nakamura and MVL just like played. They were they were playing their highest level of Berlin preparation. I mean, it it was like it was like thirty moves of just they had they ended up with like five minutes and twenty seconds on the clock or something at the end of the opening stage because they were gaining time, and and you learn a lot about that. And I think you you see some things about these players in terms of what they do in the kitchen. But all right. Um, By the way, he did trade rooks to avoid all of the complicated variations. Yeah. And now he keeps his a pawn. So after rook b8, knight c4, and nothing is complicated. Yeah. Uh, that's also a good idea too because. Uh, you know, I think if you don't let the position uh, simplify where all the queen side pawns leave, then your yep. time advantage means more. I, so, I love uh, that point. Yeah. No, and you were right. I think I think taking d8 
whether you could have gotten away with taking here right away first is irrelevant. Aryan um, is going to have a harder time defending without a simple, uh, w w in a simply worse position versus a complicated one, right? Yep. So I agree. I think this was the right choice. Man, down upon and passive. Well, at least the knight's passive. Now, would you trade rooks and go into the, f the king and knight ending? Because if you're up a pawn, I was trained. If you, king and pawn in game is the best ending when you're up a pawn. Right. But the next best is king and knight. Right. Yeah. I always say that knight and pawn endings are the closest to king and pawn endings because knights are, are the slowest piece along with the king, right? They don't deal mm -hmm. with, with with defending past pawns well. They don't deal with certain types of maneuvers well where uh, you can defend other endgames as we know. Geometrically, the rooks are very good sometimes defending down upon ending. Right. Um, and apologies it, to Karpov's Karakhan, but if white wins this game or if black makes a miracle comeback, that means all three Karakhans will have had a decisive result. That's right. And, uh, and Jordan will have won two of those games with the white pieces, right? So if, if Jordan wins this, the three decisive games that have come have been always when Jordan was with the white pieces, right? Even the one that uh, are won that's black. So um, Rook D4, I think Rook C3 is fine. Um, Rook A3 was a little odd to me. Honestly, if I was putting on my full Karpovian technique, I might have played C3 last move just to kind of stop that and prepare B4. That's true. Where I get the A pawn rolling. So, But every pawn move is committal. Maybe he didn't want to play C3 because then it's harder to play B3 and keep mm -hmm. a solid structure, which he, he's chosen here. No, that's a good point. C3 may have run into nice C5 where we have other other weaknesses now. So, Could be. So yeah, to each uh, to each uh, action is an equal and opposite reaction, right? Tari, and, uh, Tari better step it up here. I don't know if his parents are yelling at him from the other room, but how do you say, let's go in Persian? <gasps> I don't know. Okay. Uh, or in Norwegian. And you said we have, we have two players playing in the Junior Speed Chess Championship who are actually from uh, uh, Iran. That's right. The reigning world junior champion in Parham Maksadlu. Which, right. Uh, and then you have Ali Riza Firuja. Right. Right. Um, but Aryan is obviously Norwegian, but he's of Iranian descent. His parents are his, from there. His yeah. parents are from Iran. He was born so, in, in Norway. So the chess culture, the chess present for, presence for Iran in the JSCC is strong. Yeah, in fact, Iran, it's, Iran's strong. They're one of the most up-and-coming nations. Yeah, in uh, chess, yeah. In, in basic wins and women's, right? Yep. There you see Magsudalu versus Moroni, which will happen on June 5th. So, all right, interesting stuff. We'll see if Tari can hold this endgame. Um, we still like white. It's a two-result position. Maybe you swing the rook. And then go back to C4. Okay, he ultimately decides it's time to, to take a, a leaf out of Mike Klein's book, which is transition to the king and pawn ending, where... Um, I liked it better before there was a pawn imbalance, though, on the king side, because white, you know, suffers from, from some lack of center control, but... I think you're right about that, but I think from a practical perspective, he kept the piece on the board, which has probably taken more time off the clock right. for Orion, and now we look at it where I think that, you know, Jordan is, is playing two advantages here the extra pawn and the extra time. That's a very strong move, by the way. He's threatening C3, and that rook is trapped, and he missed it. I saw it coming. He yes. played E4, self-trapped his rook. And a reminder, this is not your father's speed chess championship. It's only a one-second increment, not a two-second increment. Oh, like, that's right. That's uh, right. Like in the glory days. Yeah, back yeah. in the old school days. The yeah. old school like the old school. F4, um, right, that I think there's a number of ways to win this um, because the king and pawn ending would be winning... If you take the rook, takes e3, takes c5, you probably don't want that. I think you're probably going to see a trade on e4 first. You play pawn takes pawn check, and after rook takes, start hopping with your knight and the black king. I has wanted to, but I didn't see a way to force the king away and win. No, it just elongates the game. You have all these checks. Wait, no. Uh, knight d7, king f5. Okay, maybe not, yeah. So he decides to just simplify it, and this looks like the easy easy route. f4 is going to fall. With it, with it now, we have probably a pretty easily winning game. You could take here and just call his bluff because the king and pawn ending is winning for white. Yeah, the, the H white and pawns G look pawn faster. Are, are faster than the A pawn. I believe so, anyway. I, I superficially It, it felt like it to that. me, too, yeah. But I guess the trick is that Aryan goes for this. He just says, I don't care about your C pawn. I go for the A pawn. Even that is... Are we going to have searching for Bobby Fischer ending? We're going to queen with check. <laughs> no, then you, okay. Yes, close to the searching for Bobby Fischer ending. <laughs> right, <laughs> uh, although if the king had gone to b5, this is the kind of stuff that Jordan is calculating right now. This is a big moment, because if he goes to b5, now now it actually, um, they both get queens at the same time, and unless there's a tactic, yeah, Jordan just shakes his head. So I'm, I'm making these moves in anticipation for what may be a line, but I think... Queen and pawn versus queen. Uh, it may be winning, but not necessary. Got right? John so Nunn on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, John Nunn, right? We have John. John, you in the chat? Pawnless ending. Stop that analyzing the, the universe, existence. John. Stop John finding Nunn. black holes and tell us. John Nunn was my Newman when I was younger. <laughs> Newman. None. <laughs> was there um, a, was there a way you could have traded knights and used your king to pin the black king? So that would I think that would have been the other way to go about it. But ultimately, I like what Jordan did because he said I don't need to calculate to win this game. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe he was wrong. Did he just blunder? Uh, uh, well, your king can walk back? King h5 would be the only... No, but that allows knight g4, and I think the knight gets back in time to sacrifice itself. Knight goes to g4 and f6. Uh-oh. We still need John Nunn. Where's John Nunn when you need him? I should have listened. Okay, but he's got to hold this... Uh, I'm he's got knight check and knight h6, and he's actually winning. We're supposed to know this. Poor uh, Aryan Tari. We have check. He's going to be in Zugzwang after king f7. King e6, the king moves, and king f7, and it's lights out. And a reminder, king level 19 of chess kit, Zugzwang. Zugzwang. We also have a knight endings one, but I think it's more of a Zugzwang Okay, I think knight g8 and, and knight g4 were winning, because when the knight comes to f6 now, black is, black is officially frozen. Why, why not knight f6? I don't know. He wants to play knight f5. Oh, knight f5, you can't, because after takes it. Because he right. takes and forks on h6. Yeah, 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 you're right. No, knight f6 was winning, and he just blundered. Oh, my God. Look Jordan at this. Just promote tonight. He has to promote tonight to, to keep playing the game. He could have promoted to a knight. But he still has under to. Under promote. Hold all. It's, the only, it's the only way. Hit control. If you have auto queen on. He did oh, it. Oh, he did it. He holds all. <laughs> promote tonight. Under my oh, but he sacked, still a draw. He sacked the knight. Oh, my God. And, and remind me, on the chess.com server, you can immediately claim draw with two knights versus That's king, right? That's right. Well, it's a draw, yeah. So if you press draw, all the FIDE, all officially acknowledged FIDE draws are a wow. draw if you just press the button. We we um, try to go by the FIDE rules as much as possible. There are some online chess sort wow. of like, you know, that discrepancy was there. I don't want to get into it. Someone's about to call me out in Twitch chat. I'm going to ignore it. I bet somebody but clipped that. I'm sure someone did. And we actually have a contest going on. I'm going to announce it right now that throughout all of our speed chess matches moving forward, we actually have a moment of the match or clip of the day. If you give us the clip of the day that we end up playing later on in the show, you will win a $25 Amazon gift card to Amazon to use that's, on Amazon. That's where an Amazon that's gift card That's where an Amazon goes. gift card gets used on Amazon. <laughs> so it's official. Clip a moment that you enjoyed from the show, whether it's educational, excitement, full of blunders. Use the hashtag speed chess and share it on social media and you might win a $25 Amazon gift card. So that that had moment of the match that was that had moment of the match potential. That was sure. cool. And I'm just taking some notes here. I'm keeping score. Yeah. And uh, so far it's uh Bob Seeger references you're up one to nothing. Okay. Under promotion foreshadowing I'm up one to nothing. Okay. So we'll keep track of that Although as the match goes on. Although I also referenced my Twitter which was really subtle. I don't know if you got that, but I have a very famous clip where I held control and not alt and uh, thought I was getting an under promotion. I actually queened and it stalemated. And it went nuts. Uh, I actually yelled on the air there, control. I forgot it was alt. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, okay. who's really, I don't know. Anyway. But, uh, all right. No, this has been really exciting. I, I got to say that despite my my um, belief in the fact that Jordan has played the higher quality chess today, um, he, he's been consistently up on the clock, and he is yet again, everybody. I... Um, you know, at some point you start eating your words if he's not converting. He was much better the first time they had that end game, at least from my point of view positionally. He eventually got swindled and lost. That game was held by crazy tricks, including under promotions with knights. So if Jordan doesn't start converting on some of these, then it doesn't matter, right? Scoreboard is what matters, whether you whether you feel you outplayed your opponent. It's like the story of, you know, my Arizona Cardinals, right? They did really well in terms of time of possession, but always lost. Yeah, you need a quarterback to be good at football. Okay. Um... That just, you know, pro tip. <laughs> Don't know if you knew about that. All we right, we so always have like a Benoni structure Yopi, in a way. Yopi is, uh, is, is again up on the clock, though. I do like the Benoni structure. Let's talk repertoires, too. In my research, Aryan almost always plays E4. He throws in C4 a little bit, whereas Jordan is a little more flexible E4, D4, yeah, although we'll, he's only played we'll E4 in this match. As you're talking about it. E4 was played here by Aryan. Go ahead. Um, so we, we can expect to see probably a great preponderance of E4s this match, especially when Aryan is white. Uh, he doesn't seem to play D4 much at all, unless I'm mistaken. Um, it's actually a little bit hard. Preponderance uh, was a word that Mike uh, heard last night in my family living room. We do SAT words in the wrench household. Who, kn Mike who knew belligerent, which you're belligerent. being right now? Had two L's. Had two L's, yeah. yeah I, you know, <laughs> you got to admit, Hazel did well. With I'm, not as nice as, right? I'm not as nice as Robert. Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> yeah, your family is pretty smart. They, they were handling themselves. Your wife's we, a teacher. Yeah, you know, yeah. they get it from her for yeah. sure. Um, all right, so we see the opening there having been played out on the analysis board. As Mike said, it is a Benoni. Uh, type of structure. Yeah, type. White wants e5 in a lot of these positions. Um, if you can get it safely tactically, then often it, it provides liberation to your pieces and more tactics. The problem is e5 here, d5 becomes weak. Um, I, I actually, again, I like Yopi's position. I like his spot on the clock. If I, I had to. So I, I don't know, but I feel like I've been saying that it hasn't worked out. Rook c7, a creative move, everybody. Don't don't fool yourself. 
has nothing to do with the C file. That is a sneaky rook trying to come to E7, where E4 will be the target. Um, and also, I should say that uh, when Jordan is black and facing d4, he mixes it up between the Slav and the King's Indian, so he's used to having a strong dark scored bishop. And why that might be important, you may not even care if you lose your d4 pawn. There's yep. many times where you just lose it to activate your dark scored bishop. So don't cry for me d4 pawn. Even if it gets lost, black might not be so unhappy. I got the reference, Argentina. Um, anyway, a Queen C2. Evita references, uh, Evita one, references to one to nothing. nothing Mike. <laughs> That's actually the only Evita reference. Queen to Z2. I can offer. Um, the, uh, the pawn is overprotected, but you still feel like white white has to worry about it. You start to wonder if black can undermine it where D5 can fall. But, but okay, let's give Aryan some credit, because if he gets B4 in and forces the trade, then maybe the C file becomes, becomes part of the problem for black. Was F5... Oh, the knight's on f3, guards to e1. I'll uh, I'll remember that knight's move backward next time I open my mouth. Yeah. Both of these players very strong tactically, um, obviously. Uh, although, as we tease Jordan when we were off camera before we went live to all of you, uh, his his younger brother, Lucas von Furist, is actually a better puzzle rush player, one of our top puzzle rush players. So, And, he, and I actually gave him the update that we have a lot of awesome exciting changes coming to puzzle rush where might be resetting some things to help kind of bring back some of the balance and integrity of the leaderboard as so many people uh have honestly spent hours and hours doing puzzle rush and memorized puzzles you want to know what some of the top puzzle rushers were doing 500 puzzle rushes a week do the math when every puzzle rush is five minutes how many hours a week that is they i'm were... asking you seriously do the math i dropped out of high school like, they what's were... the math like like five Hundred puzzle rushes. Well, if you do four a, a day, you get to a hundred. Wait a minute. Back to chess. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll call it seventy a day. I, but I'm looking seven. for hours. It's like thirty-five plus hours a week. I okay. think it's insane. It's a full-time job. It's a full-time job yeah. to break puzzle rush. Congratulations! You forced us to to you know work on the algorithm. By the way, bishop um, f4 not a puzzle rush move. That's a high-class waiting move. I don't know yeah. what it does. It just puts the bishop in a slightly better well, spot. I think I think one of the points is that if this bishop ever moves, h6 is under fire. Um, he's kind of sitting, sitting pretty, I guess, uh, from the fact that hard for Black to do anything different. It's 42 hours per week at 500 puzzle rush. Thank you. I'm assuming that was Matt Jensen. Smarter chess is smarter than the rest of us chess players. Um, you could, you could go knight h2, knight g4. I don't know. You could, because you, you kind of want to put a pawn on f3 anyway, don't you? You've yeah. already, you've already conceded that your bishop on d3 is not as good as the knight on c5. Um, I, I but it, uh, again, Black is the draw? one leaning on white. I don't think so. Black can still push. Yeah, I, I feel like Yopi is King still H8. on the card, but That's a high, high level waiting High level waiting room. But let's note this is the first time that Yopi is actually not holding a time advantage as both players near the under two-minute marker. Um, and that's true if you're just joining us. It has been a pretty consistent uh, performance from Jordan Von Varese to be up on time as we enter the critical moments. Remind everybody we have a new contest going, a clip of the day. Give us your moment of the match, uh, whether you're watching us at Chess TV, twitch.tv slash chess, or anywhere. Uh, and uh, the one we choose and play later on in the show as we enter the one-minute segment will win a $25 Amazon gift card. Okay, I was wondering if B4 was going to come because it allows knight a4, knight c3, if black wants it. Or you take the bishop, which is and not as good as your knight. And now that the light scores are gone. That's mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. I see you moaning over there. You wanted it too. I, di I did F5. for the wrong reasons. Right idea, wrong reason. Okay. F5, d5 is being undermined, and we have a pin on the e-file. I like it. I like f5. Well, even if dynamically it's not perfect, I feel like instinctively the light square bishop is gone. It's what I would play. The more I look at it, the more I feel like this might backfire. This is why I lose chess games. <laughs> Jordan, don't play like me, because the knight h4 is coming, and who's going to be attacking on the light squares? You know what might be key, Mike, is g5. Uh, and there, there we are. Confirmed. Knights go backward. All right, missed knights that can go backward. Confirmed. Is it, but is it g5 with tickle and then d5? I or think do, that... you, do you trade queens? And so, because here's the thing, and the uh, he does. I like that because in the end game, despite d6 falling, the d4 pawn will actually end up being faster. Right. I think. And 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 white uh, black correctly realizes that you can forget about pawn structure when the bishops come to life. That's mm -hmm. what he's interested in, and the bishops are about to come to life. And uh, putting the bishop here or here, pushing it, and look out for some backdoor action on the queen side pawns. Unfortunately for white, he's not going to be able to hold the d3 square. And once black gets d3, and then both bishops are alive. So this looks uh, tenuous. Tenuous. Bishop to c4. D3 is coming. I'm liking it for black, but but okay, still solid defense. We've seen Aryan already hold a couple of endgames where he was probably much worse. 
Shout out to all those playing Guess the Move. If you're following the games at chess.com slash live in the live server, I've seen some top players, including some title players, playing Guess the Move, which is actually, in my opinion, one of the most underrated things people really don't know they can do. If you're following top Grandmaster games, try to guess the move they play. There may indeed be some contests or improvements coming to that feature in the future. Foreshadowing. Dun, dun, dun. Foreshadowing. Um, Bishop f4. All right, so Black has to defend before he can just rush up with the bishop because of h6. I think under. what he wants to do is play d3 but not allow king e3. So if he plants his own king on d5, um, in fact, you could almost like mate white if he walks his king to e3 in certain variations. Um, so I guess you just play king d5 here. Just improve your king. Let him take on f5 if he wants to. Yeah, I, th I like it. He's going to play for d3. And again, this is still a two-result position for Black, but no, Arion has been okay. That inhibits tricky. that inhibits d3 a little bit yeah, because knight e3 check. And this could backfire because okay, we've been talking all about Black, Black has the more active king. You have the bishop pair. We're not taking any of these things back. The d pawn is strong, mm -hmm. but White has White has a three on two majority on the king side. And if you if you let it get away, I mean, you know, now you could take with h and keep f, or you could take with f and and then keep h. I mean, white also has an opportunity to get a passer here pretty quickly. Another annoying thing for black is that as much as he might not like the knight on f4, he can never trade the dark sword bishop for it because it's immediate handshake, right? I mean, the, the pass d pawn goes nowhere if the opposite color bishops appear. See people talking about the channel Besties Chess. It's actually shared, I think, by a lot of these, these uh, young Dutchmen who are friends, and we are currently talking with them about getting a little more active in their in their streaming. So if you go to twitch.tv slash besties chess, you might might even give them a follow. Who knows, they might be more active than you think sooner rather than later. That's a shout out to them if they're watching. Lucas, I know you're watching. I know you're watching your big brother. For those of you wondering why Jordan's not playing from home, he's on his way to a tournament, some league game or something next tomorrow. Which is why he's at Luke Van Wheelie's. Right. Classic. He's, he's not just soaking up that chess library behind him. Yep. Some say just in being in the presence of a grandmaster, you get better at chess. I tried that theory. It doesn't work. Hey, quick fair play policy question. Is reading the spines of books considered a uh, fair play violation? Depends on the book. Hmm. The um, classical French, 3, knight, c3. See, there's a hint. Anything with the French makes your chess worse. So oh, okay. that's okay. okay. <laughs> um, bishop f8. All right, we've got bishop to c4 coming, but you got to watch out for knight g6. But, okay, one thing that Yopi's doing well is understanding that sometimes you win these games, everybody, by not doing anything too crazy. Your opponent's getting under time pressure. It's getting harder to hold. The black king can come in at some point. Now he's now he's deciding whether it's time to go for the obstacle bishop ending. I'm going to guess no. No, because then h6 yeah, is incredibly weak. Yeah, so weak. he goes in. Yeah could lose that but i think this is the right approach from the perspective that you don't have to play perfect technique to win when your opponent only has four seconds now you get in king's going to come all the way i believe there's also the move bishop to e6 at some point wow all the way, that's why they call him all the way meg all the way it was actually may may um league of the league of their own references i corrected you on one to nothing <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Although you did quote Tom Hanks being on uh, SNL with a comedy skit recently, which uh, I loved. Anyway, la last night was fun. All right, Bishop's coming to C3 check, and here comes D2. But maybe maybe Bishop at 3 first? No. Are the, are the two passers enough uh, to give Black some headaches? This is going to be nuts. We have a race to the finish. Two passers and a knight versus two bishops. Okay, so he's going to fix them on one color. And but, then he may have to give away a bishop. Okay, this, is, this was nice. Now he can take F6 first, and I think it's over. He's only got two seconds, three seconds. Yeah, okay, remember, again, this is the SCC of old. I believe in the first year we had a one-second increment, I think. Although, oh, he played Bishop B4. <laughs> what did he do? Oh, no. That oh, is, my God. That is not uh, the way you, you handle these things. Wow. What? It's like these these <laughs> guys heard us about it being an equal match, and they're determined for nobody to no, take a No, but that's lead. the third game that Jordan has been I mean, I want to say just winning. Yeah, well, that was clearly winning. That was the most winning of the That wins. was the most winning of the three. Yeah. And, like, you wonder, was it a mouse slip? Did he pre-move Bishop before thinking the king? No matter what, that's just a, a, a faux pas for someone who's played 6,000 bullet games on chess.com. Look up his handle, Yopi2, right? Was it a mouse slip or a pre-move? I, I don't know. It, it happened I, I, so I fast. It, it all happened so fast, Mike. Yeah. It all happened so fast. I'm going to go mouse slip. Although it's a weird time to mouse slip. Huh. 
If it was, it's just it was unnecessary. He only had a couple seconds. So now psychologically, if I was in the Jordan von Furries corner right now, you have to you have to keep their their head up and remind them, hey dude, you've been in a lot of winning positions. Forget the emotions of these mistakes and just yeah. keep doing your thing. Yeah. But if you're in Aryan Tari's corner, you're like, look, dude, you played some of the worst chess you played, and yet you're still in it because Jordan is not converting. So you know, as a as a coach, you're psychologically trying to give them the positive outlook no matter what. But I'm, I'm, I'm frankly shy. I mean, this, this could easily be a two-game lead right now for Yopi in this match. Yeah, I don't know how he's handling it, and, and I just have to hope that Luke really is in a soundproof room and not yelling at him too much. Yeah. Uh, or, or, uh, or I don't know, maybe sometimes people play better when people are enjoying and, and yelling. I don't know. But Jordan's uh, demeanor definitely, I mean, who's, whose demeanor wouldn't change after that? You can't be full poker player there. Grandmaster Robert has hanging on the Twitch chat asking what just happened. I know darn well he's not asking about the chat. He's asking about this. You're right saying, there. who's that good-looking guy in, in, in seat B that I'm supposed to be sitting in that seat? He's a tall drink of coffee. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Oh man, that was that was nuts. I, I cannot believe this match is tied right now. If you're just getting here, we've seen we've seen a lot of excitement. It is an eight-nine matchup here in the JSCC. Brought to you by ChessKid.com. So, I mean, I guess we're kind of getting what we thought we'd get in a, in a very snake-like Medusa figurine of the odds to win the match back and forth. But but I think this could easily be Jordan Van Forest's lead right now. Well, it should be. I mean, he should be a plus one, maybe plus two. Yeah. If we were forming a, a boy band, a K-pop band of JSCC players, would these be picks one and two for you? Yep. You weren't expecting that question. I was not. No. <laughs> Reading the Twitch chat, hoping to find something funny. Uh-oh, uh we got uh, references we shouldn't have in there. That's why I don't look at chat. My very first glance at the chat, and we, we had stuff in there we shouldn't have. Yeah, sorry uh, about that. Let's keep it on... Uh, enjoy, what, enjoy what all the residue on drums. Robert has. We, I, I, I was actually I looking at the chess kid comment would. from someone who, despite um, a lot of comments yesterday, people saying they don't like blue and club. Look at that. Someone showing up defending you, Mike. Say, can we get the pieces to club and the board to blue, please? <laughs> so funny story about that. When I record chess kid videos, I'm in the chess kid font, right. which is blue and club. And then when I forget that that's in my account settings and I write a chess.com article, right. uh, I never, you know, hell hath no fury like blue and club pieces in a yeah. chess.com news article. It's amazing how people article. feel about their chess pieces. They, people can be very picky. Um, I'm kind of a, a try chess you will. I'll try any chess set anytime. The heart wants what the heart wants. Sometimes the club, you know, Neo and green is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. So knight comes to h5. I think g7 being under fire, followed by tactics on h6, make me happy. And a big part of it is that we've got this rook. Larry Christensen would be proud, potentially swinging over to g3 and keeping the attack going. Um, again, now Yopi going to take a second to think, but he's earned it because he's up a minute plus on the clock. And... Uh, <sighs> Again, this is I'm just I'm just surprised this match Whoa, has been so close. Seven. I love it. I'm surprised this match has been so close. I feel like again Yopi's going to be in control. Look at the knight coming in, the bishop coming into the dark squares. The rook is swinging over. This is how you teach your kids to attack, right, Mike? Love I mean, it. you look at full board awareness, the recognition of how quickly your pieces can coordinate can help you justify a sacrifice. I feel like knight g5 bringing the rook over makes sense. Um I also like bishop g5 and then knight h4 with tempo on the bishop, followed by rook over. Aryan takes kind of a confident swig of water, that water there. I mean, it seems so, but maybe he's just, again, complimenting himself on the on the really great choice of style with the wainscoting. I don't know. My wife would really like that, though. Could be our first miniature. I was about to point out that these doubled pawns on the queen side actually inhibit a lot of black's ideas, but why are we talking positional chess when there's no king side left for black? Uh, I, it I does mean, you're right, right. Obviously, if black defends, then, yeah. then white not only is down a piece, but has... It reminds me of Rosenthalus Apple, which is the f the opening game of Seven Deadly Sins of Chess. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Of course. I just wanted I, I wanted to shoehorn that reference in, and then right when I thought about it, Knight takes G7 happened. So, yeah, I was missing the uh, the Van Faris through the Taris. Huh? <laughs> huh? Missing the Van Faris through the Taris? <laughs> All right, but um, bum you win. All right, I, you I, win. I did plan that one out yesterday. The, yeah. The the move rookie six is actually useful in two ways. Obviously hits the bishop, but also prepares to blockade on the g6 square. Um, black having to defend against the coming threats. One thing I like about knight h2, Mike, is even though it was sort of the slow decision, you could go full pawn storm, right, at some point getting the oh, pony out of the way. Oh, that's fun. That is fun. I mean, okay, you can't play a four first. Obviously the bishop's hanging, but... I like where okay. your head's at. Keep, keeping that in mind as, as an option, although the more I'm looking at this... The more I'm complimenting, uh, complimenting Jordan's position, less I guess. Maybe I went 
never go full Danny Wrench either, right? Maybe I got a little too excited about that sack, and now we see Arian kind of... I think you've actually hit upon the main idea. I think you have to play the G4F4 stuff, right, at some point? But, you know, if this doesn't work out, if this doesn't work out, then you have to, you have to think that part of the emotional hangover of not converting on a couple of winning positions, which is what Jordan was unable to do, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes makes you a little bit more, uh, more aggressive, a little bit more impatient in future games. And I still believe that in a practical sense, this is gonna, if you can keep pressure, it's going to be very dangerous for Tari to have to defend as, as time ticks off. The bishop's running out of squares, and you don't really want to leave the protection of the g6 rook because you right. want to take back with the bishop if the rook's straight. But you are seriously low on squares on the b1 h7 diagonal. Yeah. Uh, I, well, okay, he just decided there was no squares left because pawns and rooks were going to attack him. Here comes h4 and h5. I like that. Notice now, everybody, if a trade happens on g3, we've got mate on g7. So takes, takes, we shake and bake all over the place. So the problem for black is how is Tari dealing with h5 coming? And again, even if computers could defend this position perfectly, this is why, from a practical point of view, um, I got so excited about the sack because I'm thinking, okay, this is just going to be so tough for black. Bishop g5, you can't play f6. Right, now one idea is also oh. your knight can go to g4. Wait a second. You can't play f6. The pawn's pinned the lady wait hold your horses hold your horses did i did i just miss that and and jordan missed that pp on the pp all over the place all over the p pp on the pp all over the p huh yeah we don't teach uh, uh moving f pawns on chess kid that's like the one thing that you know we actually revoke your account if you move your f pawn you and ben feingold right <laughs> um not quite that extreme Okay, but, but wait a minute, takes, it's not I guess so he's clear. taking on g6 intermizzo. Then he you have queen d3 check if the rooks trade? Yeah, you've also got queen g5 check even if the rooks trade, right? Uh -huh. Something like this, this, and then check a ruski, followed by opening the e5. It's, oh, I was thinking it's, if black traded rooks, but yeah, you're right, you're right. It's still nuts, though. I mean, I, I don't know um, what's happening in these positions other than I look at the clock and I look at the pressure. From a practical point of view, white is holding the cards, but we've said this before. Um, and uh, okay, you're always you're always playing that. If I can just defend, I'm up a piece mindset, and uh, that always, I think that helps human beings. We are we are emotional creatures, right? Not like computers. One of the other hallmarks of a good player to bring up Jonathan Rousen's book again is to notice when a critical moment is happening. So even mm -hmm. though they're draining, uh, you know, <laughs> let's say a significant fraction of the remaining time, they recognize that if you get this decision wrong, you're in trouble. And queens taking. I, I got to give a shout out to uh, not not cool bomb 9102 in the Twitch chat who actually called queen takes f6 right before it came on the board and uh, you should be playing guess the move on chess.com. Well, it looks very strong. So, yeah, I mean yeah. I, I I think it's it's a way to it's a solves, way to point out that problems. the pin is a problem and and actually Jordan is kind of whispering I don't think those are sweet nothings under his breath. I don't I'm gonna see guess any. those are explicatives because here's the point everybody if you take g6 you take f4. You just ignore the rook. I don't see any moves for white. I don't see any moves for, for white either. If you take here, I take here. Okay, so the trade happens, but any endgame shows you that white has failed in the attack, and uh, it's going to take a time scramble blunder by Tari for this one to turn around. So again, it's just really interesting if we're considering the tone of the match right now, everybody. For just joining us, uh, Jordan Von Furst won the first game, and since then... It's been, it's obviously the scoreboard talks and everything else walks. So clearly it's an even match, but it's been a game where Jordan has been consistently better on the board and up on the clock and just failed to convert in some critical moments. Maybe Rook B8 here? Yeah, and, and so this one here maybe showed a sign of impatience or frustration by the Dutchman who's, I think, going to lose, and we're going to have our first lead of the match for Ariantari. He has not led so far if he converts on this one. Yeah, I don't think the three pawns are going anywhere anytime soon. But if you don't trade rooks here, then black's rook becomes the dominant rook. Mm -hmm. So I really don't know what white's going to do. Would you trade rooks here, or would you roll the dice by keeping the rooks on the board? Maybe I, would, I would roll the dice just because well, I think I'm lost either way. And you press your time advantage by keeping yeah, it a little more complicated. If you're lost either way, keep as much smoke from clearing as possible, right? Um, so, I mean, you can play the king up and just try to get the pawns going. Very disciplined move by Tari, saying, I'm going to get your pawn with the bishop. I'm not even going to let you make a trade. Yeah, he saw 30 moves into the future. He had to do the bishop and knight mate. Yeah, he, that's he didn't all want he was doing he didn't right want there. To, just he, he went Neo on that, started seeing Matrix code. And, yeah, you yeah. Know. Um, by the wow. way, are our pieces called Neo font because of the Matrix? Um, I actually don't know why okay. they're called Neo. I know that it was a piece set designed from scratch by our, the one and only Dallin, who is uh, the head of product here at chess.com. 
our lead designer. Good so job, I, I, Neo was a set he designed. It's not from any other old school kind of Lenaris or chess font. Um, I don't know why he named it. Maybe he's a Matrix fan. We'll let Dallin answer. I'm sure he's watching. Okay, so how does White get the king side pawns going? I think you've you got to put the king on h3 and then risk it. Risk but, it. But the problem is you look at rook to b3, not b2. I overdrew that arrow, and you might just have to fall right back. So this mm. is, I mean, time says it, right? Looks along pretty easy that, for Black, along actually. Along with that hoodie uh, sweater pool in his mouth, the time says it all. Jordan is frustrated. Okay, so g4 check is possible now. Okay, he didn't go for it. H5, maybe threatening g4, because if the king takes it, the knight falls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, actually, wait a minute. He just forgot about g4? A g4 of king e6, knight g5 is mate. Did he just... Okay, well, that's uh, a good point. He finds it. If Yeah, he gives up the piece. He just blundered that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Tactics, everybody. Look at this. If the king had gone here, one knight hit after g5 another. was mate. OMGs or snaps. When I used to do commentary with Melek, all we would yeah. do is just try to find mates like that. But uh, you've, you're, my, you're my new Melek. Hey, you can be my Melek if I can be your wingman anytime. The uh, king. I th oh, he misses it. <laughs> Another one. OMGs or snaps lives. Knights, that was for real, knights. dog. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How did he get the, the A pawn? pawn is out of control. Yeah, the A pawn is no, very far away. No, he's going to get back. Away. He's going to get back. It's over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, look at Jordan returning the favor. He knights says, I've lost many games I had no business losing. Or I drew many games I had no business losing. This is a game that he clearly let slip away and then somehow comes all the way back. And, wow. uh, he was working on some knight moves twice in that game. He had wowzers. a mate on g5, wowzers. and he had a fork. That that knight was uh, not to be messed with. Ah, and here we see. I told you, when what? he when he abandons e4, he only has c4 in his repertoire. He doesn't have d4. He doesn't have d4 in his repertoire. Okay. So. Okay. Well, we'll see if that ends up being something Jordan was aware of. Obviously, if you're just joining us and this is somehow your first ever speed chess match, uh, we will interview the players after every match. We do that in uh, the speed chess championship. This is the junior SCC. Sponsored by ChessKid.com. But if it's your and, first uh, ever junior speed chess championship match, then uh, you're that's, in the right place. Yeah, you're tied with the rest of the world. Right, it's so, the first ever. So yeah. you're all, you know, you're you're not losing if you're if this is your first ever JSCC. Four nights English, but so wow. uh, I can I think I can check out. You got this one, uh, right? Yeah, uh, four nights English. Clearly, I know the theory to this yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I do, right? Four nights English all day. Actually, you um, know what? They have a propensity. That's another one of your words mm -hmm. to to make a lot of trades at the beginning of the game and all these openings they've been playing. Uh, this might be the this, first this one. Might be the first one where they really they really stick to the maneuvering. Gun. Besides the Maroxi game that we had, this is the first one where uh, we might see a, a true middle game. I guess that Benoni game was a little bit uh, a little bit similar. The Benoni type structure. I gotta admit, I'm a little disappointed in BJH for not hearing the call to action on the OMGs or Snaps emote. But he and I are gonna talk about that privately later. I do not watch enough Twitch to know what you Shame just on said. You. What? Shame on that you. was Norwegian to me. <laughs> ah, right. I just I. <sighs> Breathe, Danny. Um, all right. Now, jokes aside, we've got uh, bishop to c3, queen on b2, and then maybe the pawn comes to d4 later. We have a good question. How old are these kids? Does the beard come with the GM title? Uh, Jordan is 20. Arian is 19. So they are the same age. Yeah, and Arian is definitely delinquent on his facial hair requirement. Right. He did not get the Robert Hess memo. Uh, Jordan's doing his best with a little bit of wispiness there, but... Uh, yeah, we, we confirm their age with actual birth certificates, not yep. on facial hey, hair. Hey, that's what we do here, right? No one's getting the JSCC without confirming it. They both became GM at 16, by the way. I think Jordan uh, got his last norm at 15, but it was, you know, bestowed yep. at 16. Now, Jordan is the youngest Dutch grandmaster of all time. Arjen is number three, third youngest. Can you name the two younger Norwegian grandmasters? I can, but... They're the two most famous, so uh, it's exactly, not very hard. Right. We'll yeah. let other people do that. Yes. Uh, one of them may or may not be the world champion. The other one may or may not stream regularly on Twitch. Um, <laughs> although, after Aryan, who's the fourth? I actually think I know who that is. Do you? The fourth? Mm -hmm. um, I have a guess. Go ahead. Johan Solomon. I, th I think it's Steven Augustein. No, he's, no, he's the second. No, Hammer's the second. No, we're talking about youngest. I got Agdestein and Carlson as younger than Tari, but not Hammer. Oh, ha oh, he broke Hammer's record. That's why I was confused then. I thought Hammer made GM younger than Tari. Not according to mine, uh, but... You're right. Hammer is, I'm cer wrong. Hammer is certainly watching this broadcast, and he will correct us. He will us. correct it for wrong, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, well, you said we would have a game with a lot of minor pieces on the board, and that's exactly what we've had. I think we'll maybe see our first trade with Black having punched D5 through. No, more minor pieces staying on the board. Um... By the way, somebody's taking a page out of my book, doing anagrams of the players. Uh -huh. Ari and Tari, a rainy art. He could probably throw some rainy art on that beautiful wainscoting. <laughs> um, 
The knight on c5, I think we will finally get a trade. Okay, one minor piece that comes off the board, and I think it favors white. Aryan with the bishop here. You know, the, the dynamic potential here is going to be very difficult for the center to remain closed. Eventually, we will see some tension break. That light square bishop will not have a counterpart to challenge him. I'm liking Tari's position. It would be a huge game to recover. Again, we only have 13 minutes left in the 5-1 segment. Everyone can see that clear as day in front of them. Um, and uh, after this, of course, we move to 3-1, and the, the time continues to roll roll off the total match clock. We we don't talk about it because we've done so many of these speech chess championship matches right away, but remember, that is the dynamic that's going to be at play, is that eventually you have players racing against two opponents when you're losing. The one across the board and, and the, the time, right? Father time gets us all. And uh, in the SEC, there is no exception. I'm going to want some help with this G3 move. Was he afraid of a Greek gift type idea? Or was he afraid of uh, a knight coming to H4 I, I and lingering? I think he was more afraid of the knight coming to H4. Just kind of lingering there, right? Right. Well, uh, you could be right in the sense that if he was worried about E takes D3, then a Greek gift would happen. And what Mike's referring to everybody is that uh, if white makes some other move and then has to take back on D3 with the bishop, now that bishop no longer guards the G4 square. And Mike Klein knows his common tactical patterns. The Greek gift is when you sacrifice the bishop. Seems like a free thing. They open the door and to the Trojan horse enters, followed by Queen H4. And these mating nets become a real problem. So... One of the tactical patterns you just have to be aware of whenever a center like this is closed enough that white doesn't have a knight on f3 or f1, so you don't have that organic defense of the h2 pawn, if you will. These tactics are very, very common. And so good eye, Mike, and I think that that might have been what he was spying. And by the way, uh, the Junior Speed Chess Championship sponsored by Chess Kid just looked it up. The Greek gift video is king level. 45. 45 right. So get your gold membership to Chess Kid. This will right. all be covered there. Well, if the, you keep mentioning that. Let's remind everybody what that is. The uh, the levels on ChessKid.com are a huge part of what they like. A lot of kids, even if they don't have the higher rating in terms of chess, they'll say like, oh, well, I'm king level whatever. I'm only queen level nine, right? And so it's something that the kids actually really enjoy. It motivates them to learn. I know. Yeah, they're animated. I just said was... that phrase. Motivates to learn. Yeah. Yeah, they don't think they're learning that because there's animations and sound effects, so it's kind of like a Disney movie right. match with chess. And actually, you, you watch a video. <laughs> First of all, they aren't learning anything from Disney movies, but all right, go ahead. Jay. Yeah, every time you watch, by the way, I get a nickel. That's in my contract. <laughs> <laughs> a you, Disney movie? I didn't know that. All right. Yes. Bishop takes e4 plate. White has to part with the light square bishop, which is less than ideal, but a centralized knight, sometimes more important than a bishop. That's why White has to do that. All right. I actually am, you know, I, I liked Tari's position. I feel like it it's turned around a little bit from a practical point of view and you know I know that's weird to say that black is down a pawn but I feel better about his chances but c4 is weak I actually think that the queen coming to h3 ah when the knight goes back to d4 though black's knight can get to to e5 now yeah and not only is in ID5 knight f3 check a threat because if you know if we just show that for everybody if you just play play silly goose over here and allow something like this you're going to get mated on the light squares Okay, I thought he was going to play knight e2 just to be able to trade dark sword bishop for knight if it came in. But even if you don't, even if you don't stop knight e5, knight h4 was a threat. And look at Tari, he responded with f4, but of course that's a hugely weakening move. So again, I, I like where this went. This went for Jordan. A win here would be a really, really devastating blow, I think, for Tari, given that a two-game advantage heading into the three-one portion. Um, again, my prediction, different than the smarter chess prediction, I do feel confident that Jordan is going to be the stronger player as they move into faster time controls. Can you name a game where Aryan was just better start to finish so far? No. No, honestly, I mean, that's that's kind of a, that's a match storyline, right? I think that that's been part of the problem. I think one of his best games was the game he just lost, yeah. right? The game before this, where he played well and then eventually blundered. So... Um, I think that Tari's definitely going to have some figuring out to do as they move into the three minute if this match is, is going to stay close. So of course, it is very close right now, but... Okay, um, can you play knight takes g7? You'd like well, that, I you? guess you have to. Um, yeah, you don't have to, it. but you did. Somebody just subscribed. See, I noticed at that time. So that's not actually someone subscribing. You're so new to Twitch. It's so cute. This makes me feel so much better. I get made fun <laughs> of by Chess Bay and BJH all the time. You know I work for Chess Kid now. I know, I know, okay. but you know, this is this is uh, this is just awesome. So that's actually just a reminder to people that they can give us their prime love, uh. and of course, we appreciate all of our subscribers, everybody who's here. And uh, you invite me out, you put me at five thousand feet of altitude, <laughs> and you expect me to play my best chess within you know, a day? Come on! Shout out to all thirty-seven hundred of you with us, whether you're at Twitch TV slash chess, chess.com TV, 
thank you for being here watching the Junior Speeches Championship. All uh, right. So this is one of those positions where there's no good discovered attack. Is that what you're trying to say? There's a knight coming to f6. Well, and that's I see the that. Problem. But you're no, playing no, That's what I'm saying. So like, you move, you do your discovery thing, but in the end. There are problems. I mean, okay. I, I don't know that that's bad for black. In fact, we see it on the board. That's okay, every every single piece is now has been hanging now. Uh, yeah, every piece has hung <laughs> at least once in this. Uh, the bishop <laughs> on b6 is going to be the lone survivor. Shout out to Sam Shanklin Shout for his survivor show. Lone survivor. Shout out to uh, Mark Wahlberg. I'm just trying to find a transformer. <laughs> um, the uh, rook f2 move. If a1 falls, c3 falls. Right. And then... Uh, and then we have some night ending, right? You just play king g2 or something? Ah, so Ooh. sometimes you keep the pin. This is weird. Sometimes they come back. Sometimes they come back. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. I thought I was older than you, but you recognize every reference. I, I, I definitely do not recognize every reference okay. you make, but okay. um, but I did get that one. Um, every breath you take. The uh, rook takes a3, rook b1. So look at... Look at ah, so this is a better version of the night ending. He's forcing the pieces off the board so that when he equalizes material, everybody, he's got this extra A pawn, and, he, and he'll know how to use it. Again, Mike has talked about this already, that the, the end game's closest to king and pawn endings are knight and pawn endings. And what do we know about king and pawn endings? An extra pawn is, is huge, and the fact that it's passed just helps Black's cause. White, White does have some holding chances here, but, but again, Yopi is, is, is holding the cards. King f5... I think I think you could play for h5 and h4. No, he's he's gonna sit sit and kind of hold. Again, from a practical point of view, you've got to be happy with with what Black's doing, um, because again, time on the clock favors him. He doesn't need to be a perfect converter of this advantage, because it's gonna be harder and harder for White to find moves as time goes away. Seven in ten Twitch users agree. Van Fereest they think is gonna win the match. So 72 percent in our poll think that the Dutchman is going to be flying at the end of the match. See what I did there? I love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, you're, the problem is your knight on a3 can't really ever yeah, move. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was in my thought process wondering like, where the winning plan is, though, for black. Cause well, I think here's what happens. You put your knight somewhere like c3. So if kay. the white knight ever moves, you can control the a3 square. Mm -hmm. So you basically zugzvan the white knight. Then your king – well, okay, I don't know why you're trading pawns here. But I was going to say your king comes around and pushes the shoulders, the shoulders. white king out of the I, I way. Wonder if, I wonder if this is an endgame that um, Yopi feels confident he knows is a win. Sometimes I feel like these players – convert to endgames faster than we can keep up with as a commentator, mainly because I know from talking to many of them that a lot of them have really integrated table bases as a big part of their high-level preparation, right? You think about Knight C3 is coming. I was gonna say A3 can be played here, and he plays it. He found it. That's the blunder. Arion, Arion's, Arion's going <gasps> to... Check. Check. No. no this is the, knight okay. the knight has no useful square. Here. Okay. <laughs> no, but that was the blunder. As soon as he played A3, he, he forgot that it was not a forced move whenever you attack the knight. Let's back this thing up on an analysis board and actually show how that finished because I think that that is instructive. But what I was going to say is that these top players, Mike, have... It's been a master class with knights, by the way, by Van Fereest. Yeah, absolutely. And Van talking Fereist. to a lot of top players who, who have formerly... They all use, obviously, engines in their opening prep. You all know that. We know that. Computers are a big part of influencing top-level modern-day chess. But a lot of them have also begun using table bases because now you're doing the same thing, but it's backwards to forwards chess, and you're hopefully putting yourself in a position to make better high-level time pressure decisions where instead of having to calculate, you just have memorized that table base ending and you just know, right? And I wonder if, if, if Yopi was aware that maybe separating the pawns to the corner was going to be a win, and, and maybe, maybe he just knew that because if you win this pawn, even though it's a corner pawn, Mike, I don't know that White can defend the farthest separated pawns on the board, right? You've got a and H, and, you know, I, I think that's going to be very hard. Yeah, in fact, as if the white king runs over to the A pawn, mm -hmm. black can even win without his knight because it's a rook pawn. Right, exactly. So, yeah, and with the knight, it's got to be a the win. The rook yeah. pawns are the hardest pawns for knights to stop everyone. Again, this is getting a little high level, but I think it's just instructive overall to advise on how you can approach chess um, and uh, become stronger yourself. There's nothing wrong with using the endgame knowledge that computers have helped us solve, uh, with like table bases, and then, you know, converting to winning endgames. Uh, again, here, the point was white played king e4, everybody. You kind of assume, oh, they got to move the knight, and just forgot that, hey, a queen is more important than a knight. And that's exactly what happened there as we come back to the live position. But Now but we have wow. some elements of a King's Indian attack versus a French. That's kind yeah. of the pawn structure we've got going on, a favor to Bobby Fischer. You know, what I wanted to see is in the Caro, when you play D3 
and you play a king's uh -huh. in against the Karo. Michael uh -huh. Tall won a famous game where he played d3, and then a couple moves later, he played d4. Right. Like on the fifth move of the game. Right. Very famous game. Was it against Smyslov? I think it was Botvinnik. Okay, so it was somebody right. famous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was a very strong contemporary of the generation. Um, and we should note that this is probably going to be our final 5 plus 1 game. Yeah, likely. With only three minutes left, unless a blunder happens fast, you're going to see at least a one-game lead for Jordan von Furries heading into three-minute. And and again, it could have been more. He's played very well today. And shout-out and kudos to the young man for also not getting frustrated emotionally because there's been blunders despite having advantages, and he's managed to to keep his cool about him. So um, I really enjoy these night endings. We've had opportunities for some instructive stuff. I hope this is giving you Chess Kid material, more night endings to cover. Yeah, right and thing. in fact, uh, you know, the night's value goes up that little bit in Blitz, right? Because yeah. of its unexpectedness. That's that's a well-known thing. Right. That uh, you never resign when you've got a night. Yep. Right. Larry Christensen taught me that when I was 12 years old and mixing him mixed beverages. Um, that's a totally different story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> le le so, lemonade and fruit punch. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about what was in that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Interesting stuff. That was an instructive, instructive one. And um, that Black King better build a treehouse because if he ever castles King's side, uh, you get zero guesses what's going to happen yep. next. Bishop takes h6, followed by the house falling. Right? Not only is it almost certainly the best move, but it also is something that Jordan's been itching to do the last couple right. games. So. Right. And again, you know, this is um, this is a position that. I think is going to be hard, hard for Tari. I don't want to, I don't want to call it a two, a two result position at all yet. Black has established the goals in this type of closed sort of center race where you've got c5, you're trying to undermine white's d pawn, which of course will undermine the e5 pawn. And, and so this is a French structure where Black has established his goals in some ways, but it's also, as you said, it's just a long-term difficult position for the white, uh, sorry, for the Black King um, on the white square because, because you know. And, and for those who have never seen these positions before, uh, a lot of times white will move the knight on f3 somewhere and prepare bishop takes d5 tactics. Mm -hmm. Now, black messed it up by putting his knight to guard d5, but the idea is you want to play e6. Mm -hmm. He might still play knight h2, knight g4 with some ideas there. I like the, I like this by Tori, though. I mean, I, he's, he's, he's continuing to play aggressive, and in a close center position, that's really... Um, the the safest place for the king. Uh, wait Although, a minute. Now yeah. if you take then d5 yeah, with the say, ideas but, I was but just showing. The center's showing. not going to remain close yeah. long. You're right. Uh, fact, by, by the way, I play the king's in against the French all the time. Some yeah. of my most fun chess games were this exact thing. So uh, we so all you might be a little biased toward whites. Well, type. there's nothing wrong with that. I'm biased toward a lot. Ask of me, Agmaris, and uh, what happens when you play uh, the king's in against the French. Well, the King's Zen attack against the French has been a favorite of a lot of strong players. Fisher played it a lot. Yeah. Um. So it's you know certainly has its merits and um. And now we see a common relocation here, if you're wondering how to play this structure. You have the ability to open up your own king in positions where the center is completely closed, right? So if you're thinking... Ah, uh, wait a minute. My idea, but with the knight, knight takes d5 is coming. Knight takes d5. Similar idea, but you... e6, yes. punching through. And then he had to avoid it. Tari had to avoid yeah, it. Still play it. But play it anyway. Exactly. It, play it anyway. It, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. You might Put it on kidding. the board. Put it on the board. <laughs> Click the knight. The board. Click. Put the knight on the square. It, he's he's so good with knights. He wants to give away a bishop. But you know something. what? He he can be patient because where's that king going, right? He's chumping on his Snickers because he's not patience. going anywhere for we a while. We sit here talking about patience. Like we, we're patience. About practice. Not not a game. I, I was okay. He played bishop f1, but I think. The idea is that the light squares change. He can yeah. put the queen on d3 and then the renewal of the threat on e6 because the queen immediately delivers the good. So I think, right, okay. again, the patience. Okay. We're talking about patience, <laughs> Alan. I hope Robert Hess is Robert has such, appreciating the such Alan a great that, that never gets old. It never gets old. I don't even know why it's funny. No one does. Uh, King g2. King g2. Wow. Kind of lame. Again, he's talking lame. about patience here because he can play queen d3. You can take on d5 with e6. You can take on e6. It's just a... Now, what he's Black, a, he's Black abandoning has, all the fun. What's going on? Well, Black has has one kind of card up his sleeve, which is if White kind of overcommits to the queen side and just assumed that I was never going to castle. Oh, right as I say it, the card up his sleeve is he can eventually castle. Jordan immediately brings the knight back because he's gonna he's gonna go back for old number one to sack on h6. But I like to play on both sides of the board. He might just demolish the two queen side pawns and win the ending with the pass c5 pawn. Well, speaking of two sides of the board, look at that move f5. That's true. This is this is becoming uh, wide third open. third straight game that Arianus pushes F pawn. That stat was on my own. That stat. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you weren't on camera, but if you were, people would have seen another adorable thing you just did. Um, the uh, the um, the move queen d three finally comes in for different reasons now. I guess that 
probably not going to see an attack anymore, but if the knight falls, b4 falls, and probably a4 with it. So, so again, Yopi is taking a, a, a advice from Funmaster Mike here. He is playing on both sides of the board. Tari taking his time. Now with a minute 45 and two and a half for white, we are officially in our last five-minute game right now. After this game, we will be headed toward... Jordan chatting it up with somebody. Portion. If I had to guess, that's King Luke. Maybe we'll get him on camera a little bit later. Random Van Wheelie. Random chess.com question. We see his username is Yopi2. Yep. That tells me somebody's either Yopi or Yopi1. Have you ever heard of a strong player paying cash money to take over a username? You know, in sport, when you get traded and you're the star right, player, right. you sometimes shell out some Benjamins to get right. your favorite jersey number. Right. Ever happen on chess.com? Um, usually not, because all they have to do is ask me, and I usually give them the username they want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a cheap date. But um, if oh. it's available... It, it, it usually is given to them, but if it's not available because another active user is using it. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Title yeah. players don't get to just, you know, ask for usernames they want if it's not available. Um, Have you ever brokered the uh, the strong player oh, yeah. communicating brokered with the other player? Brokered a lot player? of deals there. Okay. A lot of deals. Okay. Um, okay. This is going to be two pass pawns proving themselves better than one possibly right now. Um because these two here are about to start running. And Not only that, but you control the b8 square with yeah. your bishop, your lingering bishop, which yeah. you, you may want to preserve in some situations. This is our last five-minute game again. You see the time has run out. 90 minutes of chess has already been in the books. We will be moving to the three-minute portion after this, and it only gets more exciting from here, everybody. So thank you to nearly 4,000 of you with us. The chat is lit, as my 13-year-old would say. Both chats are, are and, lit. And the B-pawn's about to be woke. Uh, <laughs> in fact, if, if Yopi wins this game, we could see him overtake Aryan in blitz rating. Yeah. I think, I think this could be the game where that would happen. Okay, but this is, this is going to be a dynamic one. You see a big time advantage. We do like Yopi's chances with the B-pawn. But okay, don't forget, there's a reason we like king safety, especially in faster time controls, because... That's how blunders happen. When you got your king, wide open spaces, hashtag Dixie Chicks reference you didn't see coming, and dark square potential problems. It's too political. They're, they're oh, okay. too political, yeah. <laughs> All right. I um, forgot where I am. The uh, rook b3 and then a2 rook b2. Yeah, I love the idea of getting the two rooks for the queen trade. Now, normally you would think the two rooks are better than the queen, but whenever you have weaknesses on both sides of the board, meaning the king is potentially weak here and white already has these huge advantages, this is just not going to be a position that the rooks can hold. So Can't you just play queen d2 and win the pawn the traditional way? He, he might, he might, but I think he's threatening to take, shake and bake, and go get a new, a new queen, right? I mean, he'll have two and black will have none. Gotcha. Uh, so, in fact, Arion. Oh, yeah, Black saw just, the writing on the wall. Yeah, the just a2 tucks pawn his tail between or, his legs yeah. and backs up. Um, yeah. See, Queen D2, I was exercising some of the patience you taught me. Wow. Uh, yeah, that is true. But I'm just, I'm just thinking this is just getting worse and worse for Black. He's got one last kind of trump card here. He plays E5, but this is... I don't believe it. I don't think it's enough. Yeah, I, I think I think White can even simplify and then use the open the open lines to get to get his own attacking chances. Queen G6 after the trade would actually probably force the ladies off the board. Whoa, the dark Play. squares are so weak it gives away the exchange to get some counterplay. But it's like one of those like please take me rooks. Yeah, please take me. Yeah, I have 14 <laughs> seconds. Maybe <laughs> I can. Jordan's like uh, uh, no, thank you, no soup for you. I'm well, now you can't take the rook because you put your own rook on C7. At least it's not as advisable as before. We'll put it that way. You got you can play Queen G6. So many things. Double on the seventh? No. Nope. D4. Dirty girl. Put the knight on f5 with the queen on g6, and it gets worse. Okay, he's looking for fancy mates on the white king, but... Oh, bishop... Oh! I thought about this move, but, it, but okay, I, didn't, it, I didn't understand it. I mean, if takes, so rook it's a takes bluff, h5, obviously. Rook takes h5 if he takes with the bishop? Rook takes h5? Well, I don't know. What's the idea? You tell me. Uh, king takes. Rook takes h5. If... if uh, No, he's got queen f6 and f2, but it's slow. Hmm. Now you can play knight f no but no if knight f five then rook takes f five and rook e three rook takes g seven win in some variation rook takes g seven and then queen g six check and then your other rook comes not quick enough uh, it's not quick not enough quick enough okay what a practical chance hmm. here from Tari I mean hmm. honestly even if it doesn't work out that was a that was a sneaky shot okay well rook takes g seven is a draw but um, he's got thirty nine seconds to figure out if he's got better than a draw. You could uh, take all the king side pawns if rook takes g seven and put your knight on f five. The problem is black could at least but get a draw still, there, right? Yeah. Oh, there is no rook takes f5 in those lines. Let's show that line from Funmaster Mike, because the point is you get everything, mm -hmm. and then at some point you're going to play knight f5. Some point, yeah. But I think if, if rook takes, you have a check in Ormizzo. Okay, wait, but we've got action. Other. Yeah, we got action, so that didn't happen. Rook a3 immediately met by queen g1, knight f3. 
we are a move away from some crazy action blunder here. I, I yeah, this is no rife. idea what's going to happen. Rife, ripe for blunders. I mean, if B7, we have seven, rook c eight. Okay, but oh, and right. he loses on time. Oh, a frustrating way to bring it to a close. But was King he Luke. But what was he doing? Van Welly looking over in the background. I don't think the players are aware that that was their last game in the 5-1 portion. Luke is because he's a big chess TV fan. Wow. Shout so out to the King Van Welly of, of Dutch chess who's uh, helping Jordan as, as a young young uh, future leader of chess in his country there, letting him stay, as you said, on his way to an event. That's what that's who it was, Luke Van Wheeling in the background. I don't know. I'm a big Luke Van Wheeling fanboy, so I'm yeah. getting more excited apparently than the chat is. It says in his Airbnb listing, your rating will go up if you stay here. Uh, again, I, I've learned I've learned that that's not actually true. You don't get better just by hanging out with Grandmasters. I tried it, but it didn't work. 6-3, uh, and probably not as close as the score indicates, really. Honestly, if you're just getting here, the lead for Jordan Van Forest may even be able to be more. He's currently doubling up on Aryan Tari. The Norwegian has some things to figure out for sure as we head to our first break. When we return, we will have more of the first match of the 2019 Junior Speed Chess Championship brought to you by Chessked. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Chess Kid is fun. Chess is great for the brain, but it's also fun to play. And Chess Kid makes it easy to have fun. Whether your child is a total beginner or a prodigy, they can hop on and find a well-matched opponent from around the world at any time. Chess Kid is the safe, parent-approved way for your child to play chess online. Chess Kid is educational. To kids, it feels just like playing, but chess is a great way to learn patience, strategy, and critical thinking. Chess Kid features a comprehensive training program that guides kids to level up on their way to mastery. This curriculum is designed to work with Common Core standards and global educational guidelines. There are more than 50,000 chess puzzles and a whole library of entertaining videos that teach strategies, tactics, openings, and end games specifically for kids. Chess Kid is easy. Whether you're a parent helping your child, a coach managing dozens of kids, or a school of hundreds, Chess Kid helps you organize your students and monitor their progress. Each child receives a weekly report card that shows how many lessons, puzzles, and games were completed. You can also organize kids into clubs and send them messages. Chess Kid is the online home of Scholastic Chess for thousands of kids, parents, schools, and coaches. Signing up is free and easy, so what are you waiting for? And we are back here with the Junior Speed Chess Championship brought to you by ChessKid.com. International Master Danny Wrench, Feedy Master Mike Klein. We've had one segment in the books now. The 5-1 is gone. Bye-bye. And with it, a three-game edge for Jordan Von Vries. We now head to 3-1. 
Yeah, he kicked a field goal there. He's up uh, six to three, and uh, really, it could be seven to two or eight to one. Um, but if you're a fan of knights hopping around in random places, stick around because uh, we've seen uh, under promotion tonight mm -hmm. a two knights versus king ending. Well, it was yep. an immediately a draw, and we've seen one knight for Jordan both threaten mate and just fork everything in Aryan's camp to win a game. So. Yeah. Um, it's, they're, they're hopping it, everywhere. You know, and you mentioned knights, but that's partly because they're also the trickiest pieces in Blitz and Bullets. So I don't. It's not really a coincidence, right, that the person who's been better so far in Blitz, Jorn von Fries, has had a lot of uh, a lot of knight moves, right? He's making knight moves, and we're about to make our way to the three-minute portion here any moment, and just like that. There we go. And his demeanor, by the way, is he he is definitely uh, less stoic than Aryan. He's right. been a little bit down when he's made some mistakes, and he's definitely jovial right now, probably chatting with uh, the Netherlands' most famous modern player, Luke Van Wiele. That's right. Uh, apologies to Anish Giri, but Luke's been around for a little bit longer. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And uh, all right, so we've got another English. You mentioned that Aryan's repertoire is very often uh, E4, and when he goes away from it, C4 is kind of his second weapon of choice. That's true. So we're going to ask Jordan von Verist, of course, after this match, whether that's something he knew. Or, you know, these guys obviously know each other anyway. Surely they're aware of some of this stuff um, that we're mentioning, whether they prepared specifically for it or not. But they are aware, and don't call me Shirley. Look at this. We've got we've got our, our uh, double heads kind of rotating around. We see currently match odds shooting uh shooting Jordan through the through the ceiling so Arion needs to stop that head from running away from him uh, by getting a big victory here as the 3-1 starts. But I don't understand, because we've already talked about the fact that Jordan's played 6,000 bullet games, and, and Arian's played, what, 14, right? Mm -hmm. So with Arian only being equal for a good portion of the 5-plus-1, uh, but the, the match odds show he was actually better better chances when he was equal. You would think he would need to be ahead going into the, the final second. But that's because so. he was favored gotcha. based on our predictions, yeah. Okay. Um, and okay. Uh, the... You know, the f it, this was very much a coin flip in regards to a lot of how we consider things. Right now, it just seems like Jordan's experience um, and confidence in in, uh, in playing Blitz and Bold on Chess.com. He's played he's played more games than Arion right now. It seems to be paying off. Of course, that there's still a lot of time left in this match. 90 minutes to be exact. If you're just getting here, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for being here. I love those graphs. Nate Silver at 5:38. Eat your heart out. That's right. We're doing just fine over yeah, here. We're Thank doing you. Just fine. That's right. Yeah. Well, right now we've got a, uh, let's see, interesting Rook A5 move on the board, and, and White has a weak D3 pawn to worry about, which is why we put a Rook on it. Um, Bishop D7, we're going to try to use the Queen side for counterplay, but uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure who's better here. Something feels artificial to me about Black's position here, and, and you know, now the, now the Knight would be under fire if you ever took here to open up this Bishop. So I don't know. Instinctively, I feel like there's something tactically amiss about Black's chances. Maybe D4 tries to force your way to open up lines. Um, again, I'm saying that knowing that positionally White could be worse. So I could be wrong, of course, but it feels like if White... Yeah, and he opens it up. I like this move. There was this funny idea of guarding A2 by playing Bishop H3, which is a long tactical idea. I'm not even sure we have time to see, but it was a, it was a funny way of activating your Bishop. And if he takes on A2, mm -hmm. you can trade. You can take on C5. You can play knight h6. Right, anything, and then you got yeah. an undefended piece. Yeah, I was looking at, like, because my bishop on g2 is my worst piece. So, hey, but, but I like d4 anyway, because whether you take it or not, okay, if you take it, you're helping these two pieces come together. Yeah. You're helping open these lines. So I think d4 was the right principled approach anyway. Whoa, and, it's true. and Yopi did take it. I, I uh, feel like the position opening up is favoring Tari's chances. Um Time on the clock, still favoring Jordan, uh, which is wow. You got C5 issues. The rook on A3 needs to be guarded by the queen, but E5 is an idea. You got queen, queen G5. G5. Yeah, yeah I, I like I like Tari's position. So this is going to be what the doctor ordered. If if indeed it turns into um, the first win he's had in a while and the first win in the three one portion. So. Um, just got a uh, message by Ben Feingold. I didn't, actually, but we were contractually obligated to say knife five oh, okay. when the knight went to f5. Got it. But we so didn't do that. We owe him now. Yeah. All right. And it looks like uh, Guess the Move is being played by Mr. Jeffrey Xiong, who uh, Classic. we will see. That's right. Jeffrey we'll Xiong, of course, one of the competitors in the Junior Speech Chess Championship. Jeffrey Xiong very, fans. Very June, strong grandmaster. June 14th is the day that you will see him play. June 14th, we'll be playing. Against the vodka uh, master. 13th, actually. Oh. 13th, actually. Zhang versus Smirnov. Anton Smirnov, of course, the young Australian. But, oh, wait. Did Bishop G4 just blunder Queen G5? Yeah, guys, are you not listening? We mentioned this. 
Yeah, we just mentioned Queen G5, guys. Of course, they they can't hear us. Uh, that would be a, uh, guys, that would be a uh, small no, flaw. Dude, where's my car? Um, <laughs> no, but okay, this has been a good win for Arjan. I mean, jokes aside, let's let's back up and, it and, and show yeah show where it happened. We were highlighting Queen G5 as a possibility along with E5 and everything with it, but this just just straight up blunder of a piece here. Yeah, there was too many things to think about, I guess. Yeah. And uh, and Tari Tari on his way to a. You asked, has has Tari had a game where he really outplayed and won from start to finish? This might be the first one. I think uh, we should get used to more Englishes. And what's the plural of English? English? English. I, yeah. I don't even know. Okay. Well, we're, we're gonna. Going I that, think he's yeah, gonna I keep <laughs> going back to it though, because he wasn't getting anywhere with E4, was he? I don't remember any games where he got a lot of E4 advantages. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, the uh, the English may be something he continues to go to, and obviously that'll be a storyline that we talk to the players about afterward. Um, but all right, I mean, this is uh, this is a very, very needed and timely victory if it happens for Ariantari, assuming he converts on this extra piece. The faster time control still favoring Jordan on the clock, and that's been a storyline we've had most of the day, but but this should be enough. Should be enough for, for White to win. Maybe Tari, who is, uh, by the way, a three-time Olympian, got a call from Magnus during the break. You never know. Yeah, a little, uh, little pick-me-up, a little pep talk. By the way, Tari uh, has an even record against Magnus Lifetime. There you go. That that's, being that being zero, that being zero games played. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to. Uh, uh, that's see. funny because I also have an even OTB record against Magnus. I have a oh. uh, I have a minus casual may or may not have had a few drinks, blitz and bullet time mods. Videos are on YouTube. Uh, I, I lost a lot of games that night. I was your videographer that night. That's why you were there. Yeah, I was there. That's right. Yeah. So there. I have a I have a minus record, but I can say the first time I ever played Magnus Carlson, he did not get the better of me. Draw. Nice. I have a Magnus story. I've only played him, I think, in two Blitz games. Yeah. I lost both at 5-1. Don't, don't worry about that. But he challenged me. <laughs> Classic. 2014 Classic. Sochi he World did Championship. He, did he ask you to sign his Fun Master Mike t-shirt afterwards, no, too? <laughs> no, no. I was the strongest player of the press but, corps, and he just wanted to play Blitz one night. If, if you look at this, though, this has actually become harder to convert. What happened here? Nah, I don't think it's that hard. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay, I agree. And... and uh, you're Obviously, right. a centralized bishop's going to do the job. Probably not enough to stop just obvious counterplay. But my yeah. first my first sight looked at, I, I didn't see how we were going to stop getting more pawns off the board. But then he answered that with the move f4. So um, Yeah, it's a little annoying how long it takes, but you're breaking through here. You're going to want to force the c7 pawn to c6, and then your king can invade. That's one way. Okay, this is pretty easy, though. You can even just take that. It's not hard at all. Uh, but f5 is probably quickest, yeah. Because you're guarding all the squares F6, on the way. F6, f7. Just As we say on Chess Kid, you're helping the old lady cross the street. That's right. Helping the old lady hold with her groceries. Old, hold her hand, right? Get up. If all right. If your babushka gets on the train, give her the seat. Match this is, is just on. Respect. But guess what? We just had a victory. So where does that put us psychologically? We've got now um, Aryan Chari recovering. Yeah. Right? He gets his first win in a long time. Where are you at as a chess coach here if you're giving Aryan the advice to keep the momentum going? Well, I don't know Aryan's chess coach. I know that Tiviakov coaches Jordan, but uh, I would probably tell him to, um, well, first of all, he has to play faster, of course, in the three plus one. Um, but I would also remind him that uh, Jordan uh, is l susceptible to make some blunders every once in a while. Mm -hmm. He has uh, been. Right. So and so, today. you know, his, the human element. I don't know what other advice I would have given him because his positions have been a little bit rotten. Um, but uh, what, what, I, I'm not a good coach of GMs. I don't do that much. Okay. So what would you have told him during uh, the break? Yeah, because I have a lot of experience with that, too. No, I think I think this is a good reminder that, hey, the 5-1 portion did not go your way. Right. The five one portion did not go your way, but this is still a completely uh, winnable match. Right. Yeah. You're within striking distance and that's what you got to focus on. And so um, now it's six four. He wins the first game of the three one. And, uh, and I will give a very obscure trivia question to the chat. Okay. I actually did serve as the second to a grandmaster once okay. at a high level round robin tournament. Really? Yeah. What I'll let I'll, I'll let the chat try to guess. OK. Who the Grandmaster was or what the high-level tournament was? No, who the Grandmaster was. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. It's pretty hard to guess, actually. You'd have to really know a lot about my travels. So put it in the chat. I actually was a second. I'll give you a hint. My job was not actually to help with the chess. It was to uh, go on walks after the game mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that my player had uh, someone to talk to. 
uh, after the games. So it was, it was a social, a yeah. social second. Yeah, it was. You a could situ- be my social second anytime. I am your social yeah. second. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, uh, this is the Junior Speed Chess Championship reminder. Throw us your prime sub if you got it hanging around. Get yourself some chess emotes. Have some fun while you're watching the chess show. Um, all right, we're back me- to an opening. A member of staff got the answer right. Somebody said Simon Williams, who was at the tournament in question. Uh huh. Um, somebody said Morph- Oh, I, I knew this, of course. It was Irina. I knew yeah. that. You've told me this story. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Irina, Irina Crush uh, was this. And she actually went on to win that year at the U. What was. No, no. This was a, a, a tournament in oh, Malta. This, okay. They were filming for a TV show. That's right. And because she got an all expenses paid trip for a second and her normal coach couldn't go. There you she go. She said, Mike, do you right. want to go to Malta? Right. And. Uh, more money, more travel. Yeah. Um, it was a completely platonic thing. I yeah. want to make that very clear on the air. Of, of course. Yes. The uh, the move B5 here brings us full full circle to White having an attack, even with the Queens off the board. And it's full circle because, I, I as I was about to mention, we've actually seen this opening already before. Um, we uh, If we back this thing up real quick, analysis style, and remind you, uh, they keep making moves, so it's hard for me to do that, but there we go. We actually have this Queen trade that we've already seen a few times today, if you're just getting here. Uh, it's been an endgame that has favored White pretty much throughout, as far as uh, Yopi's experience, it seems, in the position, and he's consistently had a slight edge. Um, and uh, even though he actually went on to lose one of the games in this line, um, here I think, again, if you ask me to choose, the queen side opening up so quickly, these knights hopping in, something, something feels rotten in Denmark, if you ask me for the uh, black king here. I, I'm even considering whether I can trade on, on c6 for e4, gain a tempo, and then do I have some sort of follow-up, like knight a7 check? I don't even know. I'm Okay, and he, he goes for it, so that hopefully means he calculated better than I did, but he agrees with my my crazy instincts. Oh, which is, again, a crazy thing to do. Mm-hmm. I didn't see rook f4. I hope that uh, he did. <laughs> rook f4. Yeah, the king no, he w- doesn't. He should, look at that. <laughs> that was like a, we were traveling on the same telekinesis, Kyle, which yeah. is a bad thing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a levitation, Holmes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the king wanted to hide on d3 to blockade the pawn, but knight c5 would have fallen. Would have befallen. I just switched boards on. So, my bad. You're back. That was an You're accident. <laughs> Switch the boards I was on. Um, the king can run over here to d3. Has to, by the way, because if you go to g3. Yeah, but knight c5 is still happening. So you're just assisting black and then getting his pieces to good squares. Look how quickly that turned around. Wow. What mm. a quick turnaround there for uh, for our, our Yantari, actually. And if he gets a second game here via that, that bad king walk, which is... Again, instinctively, I felt like White should be the one with the attack. Let's trade and open up the queen side, but it was all it was all uh, a bunch of a bunch of falseness. I, I think he's going to he's going to play rook f two, king c one, rook e two, and he's going to go for check yeah, and mate at the same black time. Black has mating net ideas for sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now the knight can come to e four with check in some positions and, and into c three. You can even do that right away. The rook is already defended by the bishop, so. Um, I wonder if he should have checked on f two first anyway, and not been so fancy. But maybe, I don't know, it wasn't so clear. The deep one was going to be weak then, so. All right, what's done is done. Now, does the king go forward? He does not. Thank you to Chess Vibes for backing me up there with the Rotten in Denmark reference. Of course, I would not throw shade at Denmark for no reason. Um, <laughs> Hamlet. First Shakespeare reference, by the way. one nothing, Danny. Um, all right, by the way, to clarify, the, the Jeffrey Zhang match was actually rescheduled for uh, June 14th. So for those of you who uh, we're, we're double-checking our confusion there, and just to, because we know you want to update your calendar and get all of your appointments lined up. There you go. You have a date on June 14th. One of our only matches that will actually be played in the evening, so I'm kind of glad that we're accidentally drawing more attention to it because if some of you show up at 10 a.m. on June 14th, you will be shocked. It is our, our evening match, and that is because Anton Smirnov will be playing from Australia. Australia. And we have an Australian kid playing June 1st in the chess kid games. Okay. There was no way to avoid this, but he has to play at 1 a.m., 10-year-old kid. But it was known going in that whoever qualified they, from Australia... Yeah, that's borderline child abuse. I have uh, kids, and they are in bed at 8.30. It's the summertime. Wait, no, it's the winter down there. I don't, I don't know. Care. I got a, phone ba- a family phone basket. Everyone's phone is in the basket. If he gets caught with his phone upstairs... You have a family phone basket? Yeah, it's actually a very important part of, like managing a, a Generation Z child. If you want, I can read you a lot of parenting blogs. Came for the chess, stayed for the child rearing. There you go. Okay. All right, back to the analysis, because we got some nasty trickiness. Knight d5, we're going to have a fork on e7. You do not leave Jordan with knights. Has, Never give Jordan a knight. N- has nothing been learned in the first two hours of this match? Knight d5, the check is coming to e7. 
and you can't, what, what can you do? You can't even play knight e4 because if rook takes e4? Is that a chess move? Oh my gosh, d2. I, I think d2 is just, just a bluff though because if you give check, how would, how, okay, this is like where you get angry at the chess gods. Can I phone where a friend? Where is my mate? Uh, can I phone a friend like you're about to say? I, I can take c7, king oh, takes, no. knight b6, king moves. I have rook d7 to pick up d2, but no, my knight would have fallen in that line. So he I, plays knight b4, but you know what he's considering? Knight a5, like world's weirdest uh, perpetual or World's something? weirdest double knight attack. And he went that way. And he's got rook takes c7 with knight d5, but that's not going to be enough. Somebody with a computer is yelling at us here. And yeah, this is completely this is ridiculous position. Somebody with a computer position. thinks like, how could you guys gonna see this? Oh, he could have promoted to knight. <laughs> he could have underpromoted to a knight. It wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, okay. Look at the mating net. With only six seconds, this is it. This is this is whether Tari can defend with only four seconds on the clock. I don't uh, think he found it. Arabian it mate. mate on a7. Uh, rook b8 check is... Rook wow, b8. Did what a frustrating defeat right there. Man. No, I mean, that's a huge moment. Yeah. That's a huge moment, and the reason is that that's how you recover. You lost the first game in 3-1, but you shake your finger, and you say, not in my house. You're not making a comeback today, Junior. And I'm re contractually required to say this because I believe that one Peter Dockers is watching, but uh -huh. you know how many points Jordan has? Zafin. Zafin. Yes. Zafin. It is the coolest word in the Dutch language. <laughs> Zafin. Yeah, it's I, I said that in a different context, and I didn't think it meant seven, but Zafin. Zafin means seven. Zafin yes. means seven. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Well, he's got know. seven. Zafin to four. Uh, we're back to an opening. We've seen them play also in the 5-1 portion, a Meroxy bind where those light square bishops are going to come off the board. Yeah. But okay, that was a huge win. Like, no jokes aside, uh, the hype is real for Jordan von Faris right now because... He, uh, he weathered the, st the storm there, and that was a very, very tricky position. You called it with the knights. Those knights were nasty. I tell you what, it seems like an oversimplification, but, I mean, when, you know, the third or fourth game where the knights take control and it's mm -hmm. always Jordan doing so, mm -hmm. tells me something. Tells me he knows how, how to make an L. That's what it tells me. <clears throat> tells you that he knows, he, uh, he watched the chess kid video on how to move a knight. That's what he did. All right. um, That's in the pawn levels. The... Uh, the move queen. Okay, so now we're in a, so, this is a more traditional bind. Yeah, you can um, play b5 here, even as a, a sacrifice sometimes. I think queen yeah. a5's idea is to play b5. Yeah, queen a5 definitely supporting b5, and sometimes it's like you said, because even if you lose the pawn, there ends up being tactics on c3. So white is probably going to play queen d2 if I putting myself in, in Aryan's shoes here. That's usually the response. You can also consider castles, because if because one of the one of the tricks, so to speak, of punishing the queen, yeah, is that if b5 is played here, everyone, you might see chop, chop and then knight d5. And suddenly the bishop has sort of been been tricked into getting doubled on the next move because uh, moving would lose the e7 pawn. So uh, these are just some common little Meroxy bind tactics. Well, he doesn't go for it. Even there, I'm, I'm actually surprised. I think that there were several opportunities to maybe try to land this trick. He was maybe worried about the a pawn eventually falling at the end of those lines. Um, but I but I like this for, for, for Yopi. A, Jordan. a neat tidbit our producer put on the screen that was uh, told to us in one of our interviews that Jordan got stuck at 2200 for more than a year. Yeah. And he said one of his most difficult plateaus was to get past 2200. Um, he did say that he did consider quitting chess for just a very brief period before he realized how much he loved it. Mm -hmm. I asked Ari on the same question. He said he never contemplated quitting chess ever. Um, so these guys are probably That's, in this for the next 20 years. They, they did have some different answers to those questions. We both read that in preparation for the show. And I, I found their personalities very uh, – that was that was true. Jordan was like, yeah, I really actually struggled with whether chess was going to be my thing. And, and Arden was like, I've never considered quitting chess. Not even now, right? Shout out to Danger Guy for the three-month sub. So this is three-month chess anniversary. If you happen to find chess through the chess channel here on Twitch – we love you, and we appreciate that, and thanks for being here. So, Another interesting question I asked them both. What I said, what is the best job in the chess world besides professional player? Yeah, Jordan's question was great. It was saying he thinks that being a FIDE delegate yeah. would actually maybe be one of the best. You get to travel. Five-star hotels. It's Five-star like hotels require, apparently yeah. require FIDE's budget. Sorry, it shouldn't go there. Um, the uh, <laughs> no, but, um, <laughs> no, that was an interesting answer from Jordan, and Aryan's answer was that coaching seems like a good place to make money. Yeah, yeah, and I I couldn't disagree. I did it for 15 years or yep. so. Yeah. Well, these are chess kids who used to be little. Now they're facial hair and braces and all, but still playing in the Junior Speed Chess Championship brought to you by Chess Kid. And uh, all right. I like where this went for Yopi because I feel like if the tactics earlier. What about Queen E2? Uh, do you. Queen E2 pins. Yeah, that's one of those, you know, takes the knight four turns to get two squares away diagonal. We all know that one. Got that one memorized. 
So I just wondered what Black was going to do to extricate himself from the pin. I, I, I think that there was possibly What am I this. missing? I'm missing something. Because if we, at the very least, I have a trade. Because if takes, I mm -hmm. get a check. Right, right. So maybe that was the idea. I'm okay. not saying... I, okay. I, I was just trying to come up with it because you asked, but I... I, I, the reason I, I I should finish my thought. The reason I like the transition for Black. I play a lot of these Sicilians. I used to play more of them when the Accelerated Dragon was a more regular thing. And it feels like when Black can get B5 safely, everyone. When this happens tactically and there's no punishment for it, something happened well. Something happened good for Black. And what I was suggesting is usually, usually the way you're responding with this is some sort of something on D5. Um, one example is that you can even play knight d5 early in these positions, Mike, because even this trade is sometimes better than what's happened on the board to the left because the the, the c file can be used for white. Um, okay, in this line, probably the a pawn falling is why they couldn't go for it. So so if black was able to tactically get b5 and it just seems like there was no way to punish it, my suggestion was something like this. But again, I guess I would have been wrong. The a pawn falling apparently not good enough for the double pawns. I don't know. But, it, you know, again, that's just a, it's like a cue, right? You're taking cues from the position without any uh, any concrete back me up. It's just that if black gets B5, now you see the pawn on B4. So the A pawn is backward. Um, this knight on the dark square has been very good. We just saw a pre-move recapture from Artie, and it should be mentioned that you called it in the 5-1. You said sometimes you're slower in the 5-1, you're faster in the other segments, and Arian has got one of his bigger time advantages, and, and, yep. uh, and this, a not this insignificant one. by far one. the biggest time advantage Yeah, not had. insignificant at all. It's a great point, yeah. But I still like I still like Black's chances in this bind. I, I feel like I can play Rook A8, okay, Queen A6, another way to do it. So, um... Do you view these positions as Black up a pawn because the B pawn holds back both Queen side pawns? That's a good question. Subtle reference to the backward pawn mm -hmm. uh, lesson level on chesskid.com. Let me, let, me, let me figure out which but, one that um, one is. The, um, but, uh, you know, that's that's the point of why I keep saying I like black and this this bind structure is this pawn here is is worth as much, I guess, if you're talking about the dynamics of the position as these other two. Of course, if white can somehow trick its way by this pawn with something, that's really not the case. Um, you know, there are two versus one. But, yeah, I mean, black has more space on the queen side. Now, look at the time disappearing for Ariane as he scooches in. Um, and by the you way, can, you can trade queens. <gasps> oh, yeah, check. Oh, my gosh. I just thought I thought he was blowing the rook, but he wasn't. He was he was uh, checking the king and uh, and saving the day. And he still has an edge here. He can still trade. I, I wonder if trading the queens instead and using the rook was better. But but no, I guess he wants to take advantage of of white's king. But again, I just I like this position for black. This is this is going to be. If I had to call it time pressure combined with where this game is headed, I'm expecting Jordan to get this one. Well, the uh, one minute time advantage is now completely gone. Uh, by the way, you weren't wrong. Backward pawns, king level 31. Maybe uh, some other point we can get Arian to show us the uh, the lesson levels on Chess Kid. Uh, our producer, we can. Um, Arian, not Arian. Yes. Arian's going to play chess. Our producer might be able to show that later. Or, uh, one but thing he might Arian not loves be. more than anything is when his his commentators throw him a curveball. <laughs> we do it. We do it. <laughs> shout live. out to Arian, by the way. First Studio C <laughs> shout out of the day. We love this guy sitting there behind the behind the scenes, rocking it. Okay. Okay. They agreed to a draw, but that's kind of a half point saved there from Jordan, considering how much time he was down. Yeah, the time the time was really the only reason I think he settled that. But that was an outplaying by Black and that and that bind. I mean. Start to finish, if you get B5 tactically and you don't get punished very often, it's a sign of good things to come. And uh, that was that was the kind of typical position that you would see where, where black was in control, controlled the C file. The the two pawns on the queen side, as Mike said, were not as good as the one. So, all right. Well, this has been... Uh, this time it's Yopi going back to the Joko, which is a repeat yeah. of the Mosquitoes Gnomes Pro Chess League clash from this year, where... Uh, the stinging of the well, I can't. The pun is gone. But your your <laughs> stung Arian. You lost all of us too. I, yes. I blacked out. But we're back on the chest. Do mosquitoes attack gnomes? They do in the pro <laughs> chess league. They do in the pro chess. Yeah, league. that's right. Jordan von first plays for the uh, Amsterdam mosquitoes. Arian Tari plays for the the Norwegian the Norway gnomes. So that's what we're talking about here. We've seen this pawn structure before already. Yep. Um. A trade on d4 would be back to a bind structure with totally different sets of minor pieces. But I, I feel like that's a good choice now for Tari. All right, here comes knife five. Look at look at this look at this uh, spy on f two. He's saying if you take here, if you had taken on on e six, you would have helped make a long distance relationship. Don't need a dating app for that one to hook up, right? You know what I'm talking about. Um, so that's not on the table. Instead, knight f five, queen f six. But I'm I'm liking Black's chances in this game. Just feels 
Feels a little better for Tari than he's had out of the opening stage the last time they played this structure. Really? But White's got those knights. They've bumbled their way in, huh? Oh, look Can at you that. See where I'm going with that? Uh, I uh, know exactly what you're referencing. Okay. But um, I mean, and seriously, um, you can't ever extricate the knight with g6 because you've already committed a pawn to h6. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I like the knight just sitting there forever. Okay. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. Yeah. Forever, Smalls. Um, the, uh, the move d5 would be a way to challenge your theory. If we could get d5 safely, it undermines the protection of the knight here. I'm, I'm wondering if this is something that Tari is calculating. Um, Minor point, but doesn't black have to take time out to guard a5? It's kind of annoying, right? Well, I think that the problem... Okay, you, you're right. I guess he decides he needed to open the rook. I was, I was more curious if a line like this was actually on the table. Because if takes, takes... Again, if you keep taking, my point is this at the end of the variation. If you take e6 in or Mizzo, I take, and I'm, and I'm renewing potential issues on the f5. At least I thought I was. So Tari doesn't go for it. I, you know, I don't know. That d5 was kind of in my, in my eyes to, to undermine um, the plan there. It's only on the table in Mesa, Arizona. That's right. All right, so King H1. King H1. So he's, he's afraid of the f file becoming an issue as well. If he plays rook g1, we know what his intentions are. Where is he going to put the rook? I'm going to go bold and say g1. I don't know. Uh, come on. Well, this is a useful move, though. It defends both b2 and f2, right? Even as awkward as it kind of looks. Um, now the bishop can back up to d2, but I think I think Tari should just say goodbye to the a pawn and, and try to throw everything in on the king side. Because, again, if this a pawn falls, white already has double pawns. It, it doesn't even feel like white is up a pawn. So, ooh, that's another thing to do. You defend the a pawn indirectly by saying, if you take, I no longer have an a pawn. Right, the classic tension, you know. Remember, yeah. the stronger the player, the more comfortable they are with tension. That's a great real quick tip, I guess, for all levels of chess player, right? And um, now you got to deal with the queen and the g7 pawn behind it, though, speaking of tension. So uh, Atari might have to trade on c3 even though he didn't want to. Because how else are we dealing with threats like, wait, oh, now if you dig with the knight, okay, you can take c3. Okay, so yeah. that, that actually is perfect. Perfectly okay, timed. So he took the way he didn't want to have to take, but... Good, good timing there for Black to get rid of the F5. Yeah, I, I still right like where this is going for him, and I, I'm still looking for D5. I want it. It's, I've been calling for it for a while. Let's let's push D5. If you take, we open the rook. No, he's being very patient. I, I don't know if it's the correct play in the structure because long term D6 is weak. But <gasps> what? Six. that is uh, another unexpected knight move from Van Fares. And he's got an inner Mizzo where he takes on D8, and the rook was wait who's. Yeah. Who's blundering here? This keeps, neither this neither keeps player happening. seems to have the body language of thinking something went wrong. Take on B2. I guess I'm doing that job. I don't know. So you take on B2. Okay. He did. He lost the exchange, but only temporarily if the knight is trapped. No, queen e8 check and knight takes f7. Right. Tari shakes his head and says, uh-oh, spaghettios. You take on f5 with your queen and crawl out. Uh, well, queen h8 is coming. King g6. Oh. G5. We got Ampassant coming. What in the world? But why would you not just at least take on f5 with your queen and have your king walk out that way? I don't know. I think you might have been right. Could it could have been better, but I think either way, this uh, this tactic backfired. Let's back this thing up and see what happened there, because the critical moment was right here, where we were we were eyeing this discovery, but didn't realize. I how thought knight b5 was the only discovery. Yeah, but how dangerous was it was coming on the board, and after rookie eight, 96 was played, and I, I'm gonna say I, I you know, I don't know. Is this enough? I feel like I was right. What? Ooh, the king hides on f1. How clever is that? Yeah, we got to stay with the live position. But d5 would have avoided that tactic, by the way. But OMGs are snaps. Wow. Tari loses again and is now down by four games. And it was, an, it was a night move. I was so unexpected we didn't see it. So, yep. uh, I mean, it's kind of a joke at first. Like, ha, 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 one of these 2600s could no, move the night better I than mean, the other I one. Think, I think he was too patient. I am going to bring up the analysis board because I'm because I want to learn. I have learning inside of me. I'd like to get it out. What happened here was, again, like the the move that has been that was calling to be played was the move d5, and this whole tactic worked only because of the move rook e8, because it was the inner Mizzo threat on the undefended rook that makes this discovery. That's a good point. The attack on the queen, and after bishop takes, you take here. And the point is, everyone, is if this rook wasn't hanging with check, then you could save the bishop. You could make a number of moves, but that that causes all these problems. I'm wondering. If the move d5, if knight e6 is played now when you take, if you take d8, there's no inner mizzo. The knight is still trapped. I could take here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It feels like maybe at this point in the match, Aryan is 
is overthinking things a little bit. I don't know that um, the most principled move d5, right? If I'm if I'm seeing it, it's it's probably not that complicated. Um, and uh, now we're in a structure we haven't seen yet at all so far today. Yeah, in fact, I made a point of telling the listeners that Tari never plays d4, and although technically he played one knight f3, we're in a d4 opening. So uh, that means even you can be wrong sometimes. Once. 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 <laughs> I, I blogged about it. If you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> With you, you and my wife have written blogs about the one time you were wrong in our relationship. Probably every pronunciation of both these players' names I've been wrong. That's true. That's true. It's a little contest I play with myself, kind of like Super Troopers, like the meow. You know, like how many times can I put slight emphasis on the wrong syllable and see who pays attention? Shout out to everyone who's with us, all 4,500 with you. This is the Junior Speed Chess Championship brought to you by ChessKid.com. This is the first match of the entire event, so that's super exciting if you're enjoying yourself. You now know where you're going to be. If you're watching chess for the first time, give us the follow. Give us that follow. It's right there because guess what? There's a lot to follow down below right there. You've got a lot of matches coming up uh, this year. The winner, of course, has a lot of cash on the line, but also the opportunity to compete in the main speech chess championship. You know guys that have won that. Guys like Magnus Carlsen, guys like Hikaru Nakamura. Some big names have played and won that event, so these guys are really trying to get into the most elite tournament that is online chess. So. By the way, a couple of CCOs here. You're the CCO, Chief Chess Officer of Chess.com, and I stole your title for Chess Kid. That's right, you did. Yeah. You stole it. It, yeah. was, it means we do everything and nothing. That's it means it everything means. and nothing. It's, it's a made-up title. When I when I was seven years old, I said, I want to be a C-suite executive. I want to uh -huh. be a CCO. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, uh, I I tried to go with, like, chief, like, carburetor officer or, you chief know. Chief Cheetos know, officer. Cheetos. Um, but uh, anyway, All right, thank so, you for uh, being here. I saw Fee and Shadow in the chat. Thanks for being here, Fiona. Joe Bruin, our boy JB. Everyone who's tuning in, appreciate your support. An actual chess question from me to you. Please. Would you as white... Okay, the chess question's gone away now. I was going to say, would you play... No, okay, you can play can, E5. We, we can uh, this back is my question. An no, 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 it happened here. It happened. I was going to say, would you play E5 when the knight's on D7? You give away a D5 square that black can never occupy with his knight. Right, because you've got control. This is my exact question. And, it I, happened. and I think you were right. And to point out why it didn't happen the move before, everyone, is uh, the key point to E5 by Mike is that if you did it, if you did it with the knight on f6, this knight's going to fill the d5 square, mm -hmm. a permanent outpost, yep. and right in front of a backward pawn, right? So this is, this would be great for black. But apparently Aryan missed, maybe maybe Mike was right, and he actually missed the opportunity to play it the first time when the knight went to d7. He missed it. But then he said, fool me once, shame on you. I will not be fooled twice. And he played the move h3, and after knight d7, did play e5. I, I agree, and I like Tari's position here. What a great potential outpost on d6. The yeah, sun even he's, shines he's played, on a fun master well. some days. Yeah. Yeah. Look, so, so, <laughs> so this is uh this is a good position for Tari, which he needs to get. This is a four game lead that's slipping away. I mean, again, by my predictions, I believe Jordan is going to be the better player. By our smarter chess predictions free match, Tari is actually higher rated at blitz, and so the the slight nod went there. Um I think because you've got so much more space and the knight is such an annoyance, maybe you try to keep all the rooks on the board. Um, certainly one set of rooks on the board because you yeah. want to invade somehow on the queen side. So the I, I like this for Tori. This is this has got to be a win for the Norwegian. You at this point in the match, Mike, you got to start converting on games like this. Yeah, and the knight is regrouping to b6. I think everybody understands that. Uh, so White will take permanent control of the a file. Slowly, he will eat the b pawn, and uh, I think that's that's the general plan. Uh, isn't this just a blunder? What am I missing? Uh, the exchange. Knight. Maybe the knight was better than the maybe, rook. Yeah, maybe he did that on purpose, <laughs> yeah, it's right? True. Sometimes it's true. that happens. I mean, I, I don't think so. It, Jordan is really obvious in terms of how he feels about his position. Every time he's been better and winning, he's been leaning in, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. His knight gets to stay on d5 forever. It can't be traded now. I think he did it on purpose. I okay. truly do. Okay, let's back this thing up. And also, his demeanor has not been that of a poker player. We've seen it on his face. Uh huh. And he did not look uh, concerned at all when that happened. Okay, well, he took a little bit of time on Knight F4. Of course, when you follow the games on chess.com, everyone, you can actually see the time logs directly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy Mike's theory, especially because uh, Jordan took 23 seconds to blunder Dr. Evil Fingers Knight F4, which makes me think it wasn't a blunder. He did play Knight F4 on purpose. You know what? People in the chat are going all full Zapruder. Apparently, we weren't watching close enough, and they're micro-analyzing uh, different tilt held movements. So apparently, it was a blunder, according to them, according to their... Back into the left is where I his, actually don't his agree. head went I think back. That was actually left. one of those like 
Oh, all right. He went for it. Like, I actually don't think that was the best for him. I think that was Von, uh, Von Furry saying, like, I actually don't think that was the best. That's Nakamura number 14, often confused with a blunder. But actually, it's like, like, whatever. It's a whatever nod, not a blunder nod. Do people still say whatevs? They do, actually. Okay. Whatevs. Um, <sighs> I mean, Black actually has some play here, right? Which is why I thought I, that... I think that Black actually has more compensation than he might have got otherwise. I think you're right. I think if takes Rook A8, you have Queen C5, both getting behind the C pawn and guarding the bishop, or, or this way, he's going to take C5. I, I don't even know why he's giving check, but I think that Von Faris went for this 100% on purpose. We see his body language leaning in. So it was accidental, but it might turn out okay. Uh-oh, oh, wait a minute. What a not, move. Okay. <laughs> not okay. Not okay anymore. Uh-oh. Queen D6. Mr. Look e at that. Now, that is a head nod of... Uh, that was nice. Yeah, I missed that, that one. That was nice. A uh, hi. I'm going to need you to come in on <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. King G7. King G7 saves it. Holy. That's not a horrible defensive oh. move. That's actually a great move. Yeah, what's well, the, the only move? The x-ray defense of it, Queen to it Bishop. It must be the only move. Wow. And now he's still okay, fine. So he wins the C pawn. Okay, let's show the tactics there for people who didn't but wait, quite the, follow the B, that. Wait, you B3 takes B2? B3 wasn't rook that possible? B2. No, I mean, black is not losing. Oh, but B3, he would have played rook B8 and gone after the B pawn is what, yeah. he, what he would have done. So yeah. queen D6 was played, everyone. This points out that trading would have lost on the spot for black because the bishop is pinned. It also indirectly makes the threat of rook takes F8 because the queen is blocked X-ray style from this. But by playing king G7... Von Fries removes the threat of rook takes because now it's no longer check. And if you take, we could have traded here and taken, and then black would have been winning in the king upon ending. So super advanced and, and nice calculation, frankly, by both these players. The most likely result maybe should be a draw because that would be karma, right? Poetic justice. They both played well there in that really critical moment. Four seconds left, though. So I think giving away the exchange... Okay, where a little bit of hindsight was the way to go. It's like, maybe it was accidental. I'm not sure. It's like if your wife asks you to go buy Apple and you buy Apple stock by accident. Uh -huh. And then like, you know, 10, really ten, years, that mad? 10 years later, Except you're like, Except that now Apple my... stock is like, you know, cost a lot to get in. So well, if I'm, you had done it 10 years ago. It would take you a while to prove your wife wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. take you a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is, uh, I'm going to give you advice. That's uh, a dangerous. We've got some problems here for white in that uh, their pawns are quite far apart. They're hard mm -hmm. to deal with. Mm -hmm. What? Was it not possible to play G4 there in G3? But this might be the same idea. Mm, yeah, okay. The pawns aren't quite as separated, but still. So black is the still idea. the only one who can win. Okay. Yeah. King e oh, wait. That would have... Oh, now he's got to draw. Because if you block with the bishop... Okay, the point here, everyone, is that if white ever takes B2, F2 comes... And the rook yeah, can't stop the rook him. but now the he's got rank. the rook coming to d1, and so it is indeed. He's going to play bishop d2 there. Okay, yeah. I thought he was going to try gonna a little give trick. Up a draw, and it's a, it's a. Uh, Whew. Whew. Wow, that feels. I hope it was as good for everyone watching as it was for me. That right there is how chess is saved at a high Let's level. Let's see a Frankenstein was... Dracula, bishop c4. Oh, I didn't see it. All right, they're working nine to five. <laughs> yeah, that was um, <laughs> that was tough right there uh, to defend, and Tari did it with very little time on the clock. So golf clap is what we give that. Um, whoa, we have a Vienna game with F4 and G3. Not only that, but if you take back, is there going to be an immediate knight Do G4? It. Do it. Oh, I can't play knight G4. I'm an idiot. Move the knight. But knight somewhere. Get then her involved. There's nowhere to go. Get her involved. There's nowhere to go. Wait, if there's nowhere to go, then isn't white going to play D4, to knight to, F3? Baby. Nowhere to hide. Okay, well, he's going to play his D5. Yeah, D now, okay. this is actually the most principled thing to always do, and now he'll play knight E4. Whenever you're no knight g4. Oh, he's got it. It's, it's, it's my idea, but it's a, it's the delayed mic. The, the delayed the better, mic. The better version. Okay, yeah. Yopi yeah. has basically just given this game away. This is going to be our first miniature of the match. There's a reason he just took a confident swig of that Arctic, uh, well, I don't likely know. Norwegian can you, shield water. Can you play knight h3, queen h4, king e2, knight f2, queen e1? Like complete desperation. Wait, wait right? which line are you talking about? I don't know knight h3, queen h4, king e2. Or maybe king f1. Maybe I king just, f1. I'll even just go for this anyway, right? The bishop's coming to g4. No, king, I meant to put my king on f1. Okay. You go to f1, right? But even here, I mean, I can move discoveries. And it just I was feels... gonna, yeah, it's it's bad, but a knight f2, queen e1 was like my only type of... I mean, you I even have this. And the, yeah, no, this is this is a miniature written all over. Well, this I can play queen e2 then. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I, I moved no, my f-pawn. You should be happy about this because this is chess kid material for all those watching. You're going to do a video about this. Let me show you why. We've got f4 always principally punished with moves like d5, whether it's a king's gambit 
whether it's a, a Vienna game, kind of the delayed F4 lines, whenever your opponent opens the center early in any of these doubled king pawn games, these romantic style openings, D5 is just, it's the move you get even if it costs you a pawn. And the moment black got it on the board, this whole thing starts to backfire for white. This is going to be, this is going to be a massive attack. So, yeah, the only I mean, this is like that's what you want. You want you want principles to win when you're teaching kids. At Look at kids. this. He wants he wants the bishop g4 idea more than he wants that dead rook on h1 with knight f2. Oh, I he, think he, I like he, it. He, he went full Bob Barker. He wants the whole thing. Yeah, don't forget to have your pet spade and neutered. <laughs> <laughs> Got me with that. <laughs> the price is wrong, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the price is wrong, Bob. <laughs> Wait. You know, I tried to talk to my kids about Happy Gilmore the other day. Yeah, how'd that I, go? Uh, well, I realized I wanted them to see it, but then like my on? wife gives me Bishop? that look, like this is just resigned. What like that look that Arn gives me sometimes when it's like I'm crossing the line, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, all right, you can't watch Happy Gilmore. Yet. Hey, speaking of Arn, right there, shout out to Cross. Yeah, shakes and his head. Got brother and we Josh. Got brother Josh watching in the background. He's making clips of this show for social media. Use the hashtag Speed Chess and get involved. If uh, if you didn't know, we actually have a contest for clip of the day. Um, the moment of the match, if you're the one who clips it, you will get a $25 gift card to Amazon. So if you're somehow tuning into Chess for the first time, you're like, man, these shows are lit. The chat is lit. They got prizes. Forget you, Ninja. I'm watching Chess from now on on Twitch. You're right where you need to be. Um, by the okay, way, I hope that was a big win, by the way. We now only have a three-game lead. I hope they didn't get a shot of my water. I'm drinking a Scandinavian water that is not Isklar. Oh. Which is maybe like the first in the history of chess broadcasts. Well, we have a policy. We learned this. Like, you don't really want to show logos on camera. And I didn't. So I will not didn't. name what I'm drinking. And you didn't. No. And so I will also cover. <laughs> what kind of water is it? I bet you'd like to know. That is not Fiji water. I know Fiji is not in Scandinavia. <laughs> Thank you for right. letting me know. I've been to Fiji, and actually, you know what's funny is um, I go to these islands yep. where the water's really expensive, so you bring your own. Okay. But the cheapest water is Fiji water, which we consider a delicacy in the U.S. Yeah. So I've got like my backpack full of like seven liters of Fiji <laughs> water <laughs> as a backpack. We'll talk about that later. Oh, that's weird, right? All right. Supply and demand. How does this world survive? All right. So, Ninety-eight. Uh, hitting the rook. Uh, sorry, hitting the knight in the center. Um, combined with knight before coming. But see, I mean that that last game, by the way. I know we we we. You know, blew through it very fast because, okay, frankly, it was over before move 15 or whatever, right? But th he completely beat himself, uh, Von, Von Foris did. And that's the kind of thing that if your opponent makes a comeback in this match, when you were up four games, seemed like not a big deal. But that was the worst we've actually seen JVF play all day. Yeah, and by the way, it's just patterns. When the pawn moved to F4, I know the audience saw me hang a piece with knight G4, but it does show that's the very first thing you think about. Yep. How do I get my queen to H4? Yep. And uh, Arian, of course, did it in a way that was winning, not my way, which was losing. And that's why he's there and I'm behind the desk. But, no, and but the pattern is, recognition is real, yeah, and that, yeah, that exactly. was a really good one. So if you're just getting here and wondering, what are they talking about? Back up and watch the game that we just saw, because now we're going to focus on this one where the C4 pawn is hanging. Shout out to uh, Yopi, who may be recovering. Jordan, I don't see why you can't take it. Uh, D5 is there, but could you sack the exchange and get nasty? Maybe not. Maybe Bishop E6 first will be played. So the idea is this, if knight c4, bd5, chop, chop, unless you have a follow-up, probably not necessary to sack the exchange. So I'm predicting JVF settles on the natural developing move, but then he runs into b3. So he plays it, like I thought, but if b3 is played by Tari, it's not exactly clear how he coordinates. And, and indeed, b3 on the board now, so... Um, it's one of those positions where he's going to play like rook on a to c8 because at some point the c file is going to be important, either through a knight b4 idea or a pawn b5 idea. Okay, he's he's going about it in a little more of a uh, less obtuse way, if that even makes sense here. But he just wants to force b5. There is no doubts about what he's trying to do. Shout out to the uh, the live chess chat. So many of them asking it just makes me crazy. They're like, wait. Wait, this is this is actually a match, and there's commentary. Like people <laughs> watching games on just they have no idea. We, should, we got so many people just doing their own thing on chess.com, which we love. In fairness, when I was flying back from Fiji that year, yeah. ten years ago, I was overnighting at the uh, Incheon Airport in South Korea. Mm -hmm. Macaulay Peterson calls me in 2009 and says, "We're doing a live broadcast of the U.S. Championship. Do you want to come on?" And I said, "What is a live broadcast?" Right. And that was only 2009. I also remember saying the phrase, "What's YouTube?" So we've all been there, right? We've all made mistakes. Gotcha. Um, uh, the uh, Okay, so f5 is now played. This is going to get nutty. Nutty, nutty. Um, 
Knight f4. Black is winning a pawn, but it comes at a price. I don't care. Knights... I, I just see the two queenside knights for Black doing their normal uh, and foray And you're just assuming Yopi's going to get a win, right? He's yeah. been very nasty with his knights so far, but I... Okay, regardless of what the past has taught me, I, I like the way this went for Tari. This knight on f4 without the ability to dislodge it, control over the light squares, and I could be just getting uh, overly, overly excited about the potential of the bishop here. But, okay, bishop a5, I like this. There's even going to be threats on d4, because watch out for things like knight popping into e6 if this knight is removed, even at the cost of an exchange stack. I, again, I'm being a little superficial here, but that's because, like you said in the last game, right, your instincts is a strong player. You kind of smell blood when it's in the water, but not all of us are great whites like these guys here. I was wondering if um, he was going to take on c7 and then play knight e6 and just deaden the dark squared bishop as best he could. He's... Similar you, idea. You know, this works here because after king up, if the knight ever takes on d5, you've got c5 falling, which is going to undermine the protection of the knight. I feel like this is moments away from the second victory we've had in a row from Ariantari. I it's, just feel like black is very close to making a blunder here. It's very funny how you can't take the knight on d6 with anything because uh, there's a d-file problem and, a, and an also a, uh, a fork. I got 99 problems. D-file happens to be two of them, which is weird. Um, two of them belong to one file. You know, Which they, is my knight and my rook. My shampoo says it's two and one, but by definition, two cannot fit into one. Right. That's Plus, those things give you dandruff. That's why two was two invented. And Pro tip. Knight takes c5, undermines the rook and the knight, and, I, and he's shaking his head. I'm telling you, back to back games. Look at the nod. That's the confident nod, yo. That's the Aryantari nod, yo. Yes. Yo, get me that confident victory, yo. No? See. No? Okay. You do? <laughs> that got weird. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, you see that nod, you, though? It was to, like, uh-huh. You have to warn uh -huh. me when it's going to become a dance party. Uh, I right? Was, I mean... I was trying to make a, a joke about the knights being Pringles and how you uh, can't eat just one. Yeah, but, uh, that was... Then you went full Janet Jackson full, with the mouthpiece. Full, right? But yeah. no wardrobe malfunctions today. Okay. Not on chess.com. Panthers, um, Panthers lost that Super Bowl. Let's not talk I, about I that. I know you've been uh, talking about it. This is, we're not going to start talking about your Panthers. Here comes another mate. Michael it's going to mate him on. Uh, no, you just got to no, get rid of the no, bishop. No, this is, this is full tilt by JVF. And I'm telling you, that last game where he loses in a miniature fashion mm -hmm. is going to come back to matter in this match. Explain to me how this is. Uh, okay, I can't. Can't count rooks so well, easily. Just, uh, yeah, I'm just up a rook. Yeah, I'll count rooks later. Okay, I was like, well, explain <laughs> to me. I was like, it's a rook. <laughs> and uh, Tari says, uh, "Yeah, okay. You cooked. Uh, you been told. That's what Tari says. That's what that. That's what that nod was. It was a bit of a." No? Okay. You've been told. <laughs> 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 All right. He's about to convert. What? Why? Oh, you know what he's doing? Super wasting smart, time. Wasting time. He's wasting time yeah. on the match clock. JVF. He's watched a few speed chess championships before. But that tells me that he thinks that uh, this lead he built up in the 5-1 needs to sustain him, right? Yeah, I mean, okay, yes and no. I think that, again, you're just doing the smart mathematical thing when you're taking time off the game clock because that's what the speed chess championship format has that's different than a normal chess tournament. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that is, is him speaking to, to any, like, weakness he feels in the bullet. Um, all right, well, uh, Arian has now taken the lead in the 3-plus-1. Right, and it's uh, the first time all day that he's won two in a row. Don't play knight B to D7. Let me show the smothered mate. I'm curious to see how smarter chess brings those heads closer together. That uh, it looks like Tari has crept up above 30%, which is the best he's been in since really the beginning of the five or the end of the five plus one. Yeah. Queens leave the board early again. It's been a lot of endgames today for for a good lesson for uh, an event sponsored by ChessKid.com. We talked about the fact that kids are often very hesitant. So take a lesson from your future heroes, right? If you're a chess kid out there, I want to play in the JSCC one day, Mom, right? Well, then get off Twitch and study some chess, you know? There you go. So. And, and how does Jordan recover from a game where he got mated on move 10? Get the queens off the board the next time you're playing white. Well, you know, he, the last game he just lost, right? So, I mean, now he's... He needs no, I'm to talking about the last... He got miniatured, right? Right, but the yeah. one, but then he lost the game after that. Right, right? I'm just saying his next opportunity yeah, yeah, so is now, white. Now he's like, yeah. hey... Still um, moved his f pawn, but he got the queens off the board first. Right. Yeah. The, uh, no, I mean, the, the, the match is close. It is only two games right now. I, I like I like Yopi's position here better than I have the last two games. And the okay. main reason is that E4 is weak every one, and I think it's weaker than the E3 pawn's going to be. He was thinking about Rook takes F6 there, I believe, because you get the mobile center pawns and everything, but he probably decided it wasn't worth the risk because you're playing for three results if he'd played Rook takes F6 there. Right. I don't know how you play for three results. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you want to play for three results. I'm okay, saying yeah, all yeah, three no, are still in play. Two, yeah, exactly. We all know playing for two results, what that means. It, I'm yes. saying you're, you're definitely introducing the element of losing if you sack the exchange there.
So Yopi coordinating his pieces on the F file here. Now, okay, I'm liking this. This is this is a recovery game, right? He is uh, he's trying to stop the bleeding, as they say. You're gonna have a couple of bad moments, but you just don't want them to get out of control. Um, C4 now with C5. Uh, the main thing here, everyone, is that if you trade on E5, not only does the knight have to move, but you may actually not have a safe square to move it to. Um, G4 guarded by the bishop, but there's going to be all kinds of weird tactics here. Uh, oh, okay, he goes for it. I guess my th my uh, sort of that assumption... Weird. They're not was, that weird, the tactics. Yeah, I was going to say, my assumption was that the bishop would come to A3, things would get nasty, but I think that... Okay, I think, I think white's still better. If he trades everything and plays king to D2, and then black comes up, can I really get to this E pawn in time? I feel like even if I get there, I can, I can part ways with bishop for knight. And if you take H2... Something tells me the bishop pair will be better, but... I thought he might trade once and play rook f4. Um, okay, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, the more we look at the position, this is looking like Aryan's playing well. He has won two in a row, and, and he's up on the clock. I mean, that's not something that's been that common today. Uh, Jordan von Furry says has been up on the clock most of the time, but, but in the 3-1 portion, Aryan's been faster. Everybody in the chat saying Rook F4 immediately, I just noticed that. But is, why is that better to play it immediately beforehand? Well, one of the ideas is that if they take E3, I think they're all looking at this trick with Bishop E6 check. Ah, okay. Silly chat, tricks are for kids. But you can still play it by trading Rooks first and playing Rook F4. It's the same trick. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying they're wrong. They're probably looking oh, at Oh, so you're wanting to trade and then play Rook F4. I thought, I don't know why I thought this was better. Maybe in this variation, if he trades Rooks, the E pawn is scary. Because you don't Possibly. have a, you don't have a rook lingering Possibly. on your own. And there's first also rank. knight f2. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Either way, that was a, that was a good potential trap there um, to watch out for with bishop e6. And but to Yopi's credit, he's trying to keep pieces on the board because he feels like the rooks and bishops are better long term uh, connectivity kind of pieces, right? Uh, they they do better in positions where there's tactics on both sides of the board. But how's he going to stop knight d3 check? Fork town. Fork emote. Get him out. Show me your fork emotes, chat. We love you. Let's get this hype hype going. Actually, seriously, that fork is not not possible to stop. Well, I mean, is it a fork if it doesn't win the Oh, is he going to play king c2, bishop d3 to survive? He's going to play it this way, okay. A little taste of his own medicine with the knights uh, lingering in his territory. <laughs> Classic BJH going to spam fork town. Um. Okay, you got the bishop pair and the pass pawn, so uh, I still believe that, you know, Bishop d7, e6, e7 ideas are are going to be an issue if black doesn't come up with something. Okay, this is a good move. It stops bishop d7. Uh-huh. But e6 is renewed. Mm -hmm. But your bishop doesn't control e8 anymore. Okay, you got the g7 stuff going on. I think he's going to answer e6 with bishop g6. Uh-huh. That would be a nice way to deal with the threat of the diagonal. Just put the bishop there, and then the e6 pawn has wandered too far, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, so the blockade is in place after knight e6. If knight e6, I wonder if we go full fisher and grab a7, though. Well, I we're going to find does. out. Yeah, I like it. Because you can't really trap that bishop. And Now, worst case scenario, if you're Yopi, you can take e6 and have obstacle bishop ending, and he does just that. Now mm -hmm. it's back to kind of a comfy result. Actually, this, result is, this is not so easy for white to hold, because black is the one with the ideas here. Well, you have the H and G pawn. White also has the passed A pawn here, so I just... But his, his A pawn looks much slower. Oh, you know what could have been played right there, though, that I think I think Aryan even missed? Why in the world did he not play rook to H6? Yeah, but this plan is so good. Well, wait a second. The H pawn would have just been... Oh, after takes, he's going to play H3. Oh! Uh -oh. I, told wow. you that, I told you this was not easy for White. No, you the were rook, right. The rook Look is so passive. Now if takes, H3 comes... And uh, and what happens? I have no idea. Um, God, there's got to be something. Oh, he played h3 first. Okay. Can you play pawn takes pawn and give away the rook well, for nothing? You can play g2 check in or Mizzou if you're Tari and then just gobble this guy. What about my idea? Pawn takes pawn, give away the rook for nothing. You would do that. You would. Uh, Maybe he missed it. I don't know. I mean, it is very scary, right? Because you can, the white... And, and I guess from a... Set, yeah, you can always go for this line, and that's that's what he wants. Now, black is is firmly in control, can, can and somebody, white is under time pressure. This is... 
the momentum has certainly shifted here. If you're just joining us at one point in this match, Jordan Von Forrest was up four games on, on, the, uh, on the scoreboard. And with two victories in a row and maybe a third on the way, Aryan Tari is, uh, is about to make sure this thing is close. So we could be in for a nail-biter, folks. The 8-9 matchup at the JSCC brought to you by Chess Kid is, uh, is not going to disappoint us. The, the chat brought up in my line where I sacked the rook, White can always play his rook back to g1. And, uh, then, and then I was going to play bishop g2 check, but still not quite good enough, quite enough after the king moves to yeah. g to f2. Because this is, and Arion takes a confident yeah. swig. JVF gives the old, uh, you did good, you did good, right? And uh, a good lesson. My line was very hat. committal. If you're not going to work and you can still have an advantage by keeping the game going, don't right. commit. Yeah. And again, from a practical point of view, and that's a good lesson for all all youth watching, is that if you're up on the clock, again, you don't have to go for the most forcing variation, yeah. right? Because especially when it doesn't work. <laughs> especially when it doesn't work. But even if you, like if there's any uncertainty, you don't need to force that, yeah. right? Because let your opponent suffer without time to figure it out. And again, we now have a full winning streak for the Norwegian, who at one point was down 9-5 to five in this match, is now only down by one point. We have five minutes left in the 3-1 portion, which means... Uh, I didn't think I would say this, given where we were at, but we could have a tied match headed into Bullet. Yeah, and the way they've been playing, Crazy. this is probably the final 3-1 game, just based yep. on the way they... They've had a lot of long games, a lot of end games. Yeah. They've had a lot of long games on the F-pawn in state still, put it that way. Chess Vibe says we have a match. Uh, I, I don't know that he was happy about that. <laughs> Voting for his uh, his fellow fellow Dutchman, I assume. But well, who knows? I could be wrong. I think, I think you know, Peter's a fantastic journalist, and he's definitely impartial. But for these kind of matches, a little bit comes out. And I think there's, there should also be a rule in international sport yeah. that the smaller country you're from, the more nationalistic pride you're allowed to show. I think that's probably true. What do you think? I think that's probably true, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I mean, or maybe you just naturally have more more national pride because it just again still did you a smaller country smaller population shout out to manor monkey who says that he thinks anish giri is jealous of all the like pretty much every other top dutch chess player has three initials you got rvk robin van kampen right yeah right lvw Lok van wheely yeah jvf jordan van forest mr sergey tiviakov that doesn't count <laughs> <laughs> okay you got that one so uh, anish giri has some company all right um this is going to be the last game of the three minute portion i'm going to predict that and that means if we have a tied match hit in a bullet don't go anywhere the last half an hour is not going to disappoint today in the first jscc of the year um an interesting structure we've got doubled e pawns but an open f file to compensate again i if I had to choose, I'm liking the momentum here for Aryan, although I say that right as I wonder how I'm going to defend E3. This so reminds me of a stonewall. <laughs> it looks like a stonewall structure where white gets the open F file, yep. and then the bishop on C1 is garbage, yep. but he's got this latent pressure on the F file, and is it worth the, the bad bishop? I don't know. Black but, but I think something backfired for uh, for Aryan because now, now just seeing the natural pin there, and backing up. The main thing is that if this tension breaks, it almost always will favor black because there's no way it happens without e5 becoming weak, uh, whether you take or push or anything. So black is going to gang up on this pawn and try to force something to happen. Um, okay, but all right, uh, bishop e2. One thing I will say is that JVF seems to have recovered on the clock. He says, I'm not going to keep getting myself under time pressure. Back where he was very often in the five-minute portion, if you're just joining us, was was consistently up on the clock in the first segment of the day. That was an interesting choice to play f5. It just goes to show he did not want that backward pawn on f7 for the entire game. And by the way, some of the people in the Twitch chat are doing the Rorschach test on our graph, and our odds graph. They're trying to figure out what, what they see in those symbols. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I see a fish. Um... I see, uh, you know what I see? Huh. Uh, tongs that you use when you barbecue. Oh, nice. You like that? Nice. You barbecued last night. I did. Yeah, I should have gone with that. Good. But I also got barbecued salmon, so obviously fish was on the brain, right? But don't talk about the ginger sauce. We don't have that kind of time here. We got, yeah, yeah that took, <laughs> took a few <laughs> minutes yesterday. <laughs> Bishop H4 was uh, opening up the diagonal, and so obviously uh, Aryan tried to expose it, but Black went right back. Again, just point out, if you didn't do anything, there would have been some devastating consequences with that battery. So uh, Black has managed to relocate the bishop, permanently fixing dangers on the diagonal. Um, I'm wondering if White should just play bishop g4 at some point just to do something with that bishop. You know, tie down the white, the Black Queen to, to e6 or something. Now might be a moment. Just play bishop g4. 
Yeah, somehow uh -huh. the transition has, has positionally worked out well for White. These doubled E-pawns are definitely going to be the worst the worst pesh key on the board. Um, speaking of which, the name of that little pawn waving high to you is Peshka. Mm -hmm. uh, the only chess mascot on the planet, as far as we know. He's our farmer. He's our farmer. Um, he's adorable. Steffi94 in the Chess TV chat went going real deep on that on that image, saying that she sees a mountain and its and its mirror picture on a lake. Ah, uh, the New Zealand special. I've been to that that yeah, lake and that mountain. That, look at that. The, yeah. the, the, the lake is in the middle and the mountain is up. I and absolutely down. see it. I think yeah. Steffi94 wins the contest. That mm -hmm. was that was deep, Steffi. The lake um, is a little bit toxic. The water turned orange, but yeah, I, I generally right. or I a little agree bit with too her. close to Chernobyl in this one. LOL. She wins. Oh wow. my! What just happened? We just got a huge. Huge uh, gift there from Shield of Deflection. I will not shield or deflect my compliments of you. Thank you for the gifted subs. Really appreciate that. If you randomly got one, give us your emote pride. Thank you for being here. Tari is riding a three-game win streak, which is the tied for the longest of the match because uh, Van Far East also had a three-game win streak, yep. uh, round seven, eight, and nine. So <sighs> this is getting this is getting super crazy now. Van Far East is he recovering here? Rook F2 is a fork on E2 and G2, and Tari's like. He's got that, like, I'm a little tired blank stare, where I look like this a lot when I play chess. Like, did I really just miss that? Mm, I think he really did. And I, I think, think, I really I think just he's really lost, that too. Yeah. That, that didn't go well. That's a bummer. Um, so he's going to he's gonna hope for pressure with rook d7. I thought even maybe queen f5 there may have been better, but he's, he's got calculated the, that he can stop the checkmate let's attack get the piece with back. But white's king must be weaker than black's. Yeah, queen f5 is just a simple shift of the imagination, as they say. In fact, and he does it. Yeah, it was so good. He was just double checking there. Yeah, he had I all think, kinds uh, of time to do so. F file not possible. What's weird is Tari must have known that Queen F five was coming. Oh man, he's it, really taking. This really isn't the hardest it, loss he's had. This, well, I mean, it's hard because you had so much momentum going your way. You had just won three in a row. You will now, instead of tying up the match, heading into bullet, you are now going to be down two games. So. Wow, uh, JVF just pops out of his chair, shaking, shaking off the nerves a little bit. We see the players exit the room. Loke Van Welly, he's the coming, one, the he, only. He, he called in the righty. He's like uh, one plus know, one. We're does he know that he's only? I don't think he knows. Let's, he let's keep the oblivious cam going. How he, long can we keep him going? In his can previous we get a timer life, for how how long it takes for him to not be oblivious and realize he's on the show. <laughs> 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 All right, well... In his other life, he's a seat filler at the Oscars. That's right. He's a no. <laughs> seat filler. He's that guy, like, up in, like, the, the, the nosebleeds at a sporting game that they put on the Jumbotron, and they just see how long he stays there until he looks up and notices he's on camera. Hey, we do the kiss cam. Can you kiss him from, uh, from up top down? I below? probably could. Kiss his head. Uh -huh. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for being here. You are the man. You are the man. Uh, <laughs> big yawn. Um, we, uh, we're we going to move to our last break before the bullet portion gets underway. If you if you have not been playing, this is your final call to action. We've seen a ton of you uh, giving us clips, throwing a moment our way. If you think that you clipped the moment of the match, use the hashtag SpeedChess. Share it on Twitter. Of course, if you share it in the Twitch chat, we'll also look for it there, and you may, you may win. But really, we want that social media going. So use the hashtag SpeedChess. Share the clip. Uh, on uh, on Twitter, and we're about to give away an Amazon gift card for $25. When we return, the bullet portion gets underway. We announce our clip of the day, and the Junior Speeches Championship rolls on. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
And we are back here with the Junior Speech Chess Championship, getting set to move into the bullet portion. But before we do, we actually have our clip of the day, which was tweeted by uh, one of our one of our favorite followers, Joe Bruin. So congrats to Joe for uh, for winning the twenty five dollar Amazon gift card. I think I already gave him like a free diamond membership a few months ago, so I can't even do that. But all right, let's see what was chosen as our clip of the day before we move into the bullet portion. This is the SCC of old. I believe in the first year we had a one-second increment, I think. Although, oh, he played Bishop E4. <laughs> what did he do? Oh, no. That oh, is. Oh, my God. That is not uh, the way you, you handle these things. Wow. What? It's like these <laughs> these guys heard us about it being an equal match, and they're determined for nobody to no, take a lead. No, but that's the third game that Jordan has been I mean, I want to say just winning. Yeah, well, that was clearly winning. That was the most winning of the That winnings. was the most winning of the three. Yeah. And, like, you wonder, was it a mouse slip? Did he pre-move Bishop B4 thinking the king? Uh, no matter what, that's just a, a, a faux pas for someone who's played 6,000 bullet games on chess.com. And I remember that moment because it wasn't too long ago, but it may actually end up being critical, right? We have a two-game lead for JVF. According to our pre-match predictions, Aryan should be the favorite in bullet. So that mouse slip... Obviously, it was chosen as our clip of, day, clip, of, clip of the day. Again, congratulations to Joe Bruin for choosing our winning moment of the match. But you think it's gonna you think it's gonna end up being some of the matters here? You think that Aryan's gonna gonna stage a comeback? I don't think that remembering specific games like that because it's not like there's been one huge blunder in the match. There's been right. probably a couple, um, so it could impact them. But I don't think it's what's going to their minds right now. Right. You don't have time for that in the one plus one. But for yeah, sure. it's hard to say what happened with Bishop E4 there. I mean, yeah, just, no, just completely weird. I was I was flabber flabbergasted. OMGs or snaps. It was real. Ah, more traditional Karakon now. Now, now okay. we're in the bullet. The gloves come off here, everyone, and we have got a, a fish on the board. It's stockfish, right? That's really what the shape is. I <laughs> love that. I That's love good. that. That's good. The uh, again, again, I like Steffi's mountain mirror on the wall, but uh, the fish, the fish is real as well. Now, okay, in this bullet portion. Are we going to see a transition to some more mainline theory? Usually, uh, it's the other way around, right? You get a little more exotic. Don't it depends you? on who's playing, right? Obviously, if you have a Caro playing, it's you know, very often like that, right? The faster the time control, the more the more unique the openings get. But, but I don't know. I think some players like going in honestly to more theory, more stuff that they're willing to reveal in Bullet because they're nervous. They want to play things they know. They don't want to mess around anymore, right? Yeah, you get to move twenty with still fifty-five seconds left, right? right? I mean, that that's yeah. kind of where you're where you're in your happy place. So. Um, all right, well, we have a two-game lead. Again, thank you for being here, everybody. This is the first match of the Junior Speed Chess Championship of the year, uh, brought to you by Chess Kid. And right now, these guys are no longer kids. They got their big boy pants on, playing for thousands of dollars right here on the line and a chance to move on to the next round. Okay, so if he trades, you take back with the E-pawn, I think, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we have the classic question, is the E-pawn a strength or a weakness? Oh, took with the knight. Took with the knight because yeah. it was a potential skewer you on see, the file. See, once the queens leave the board, I feel like the E5 pawn is more of a liability. Wait, uh, the B4 must have been played for a reason. Uh, he's, got a he's got bishop F3, four. and then the brook is hanging, and that what's was going on? That was a super well-calculated tactic. Oh, he has knight D5. Oh, okay, in the so, end it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but still, like, that was that was messy, and I'm pulling cores everywhere. Hope I didn't break anything. That's my, We're a, good. A, as my Croatian sailing instructor said. Yeah. Polako, Polako. There's plenty of time to fix these problems. Polako, yeah. Polako, Polako, slow down. Polako, slow, slow, slowly, slowly. <laughs> so if I have any Croatian fans out right. there, I hope I just got a Croatian fan. Yeah. Rook F4, back this thing up. The um, Okay, I think that black is... Black is holding. I like the knight on e6. It's still the existential question. Is the e pawn a strength or a weakness? And I still don't know. Right. Uh, if the block, if the king gets to d5, I'll give you my answer. Can I wait? You can wait. Okay. Um, and I think that that might happen because we're going to be in an all-in. White wants the e pawn to convert. Black is going to maybe be ready to give up the knight if mm. he can get some other pawns for it. You know, I, I read somewhere that the king is worth about four points in the ending. You can't trade your king for a knight and pawn, but the power of the, being able to guard all the squares around you is worth a four-point piece. And right now uh, we're seeing and white. we're seeing exactly yeah. that. I mean, yeah. the dominant king compared to the uh, the black counterpart. Okay, I'm sensing mates coming up. Yeah. <laughs> the white king has nowhere to move. But... But um, where is it, right? I mean, well, now, well, now, oh, we even threat. had knight to. Kn mm -hmm. I thought he would follow with king c6. Well, knight c7 mates the threat. Well, I thought knight, c knight b8 check and then king c6 was where he was going, but Maybe. instead he backed up. And he may lose the e pawn with it. You can see ghosts pretty quickly. Once you like, you, you, can, you get your king to a dominant position, you're like, oh, oh wait a minute, I just right, made it right, myself. Right. Yeah. 
No, totally. You, you're very nervous when your king is in, in such a weird spot. He's uh, calculating the king upon ending. He knows he oh, can't by the go way, for it. Oh, by the way, if king c6, was rook takes d5? No, because of b5 check. There were oh. some interesting ideas in there. But he, but, he, but he finds a way to tricky, 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 tricky JVF. Wow. He tricks his opponent and saves the knight. Uh, it wasn't even a trade into a winning king upon ending. It was just Look, a win of a piece. I did all this research for the match. You should have just told me to review how the knight moves. Exactly, it. right? It's been all knights yeah. all day. We're throwing, we're throwing that one away. We don't need that one anymore. That would have been our clip of the day right there. But again, thank you for playing everybody who made clips and used the hashtag speed chess. We're going to be doing it all year long. So if you didn't win a $25 Amazon gift card, you're not going to be getting that nice new pair of Amazon uh, Batman socks that J J Joe Bruin's going to be wearing. So... You know, shame on you. Um, Is that what you spend your money on? I, I, I do have Batman socks, of course. Of course. Bishop um, A3, it's like, a, we, you know, um, our um, colleague Sam Copeland calls this the corkscrew. Bishop A3. Well, it's when you're castled and you remove the fianchetto bishop. Is that the anti-Lafong, the corkscrew? I don't know. I actually think I used the word corkscrew in my chess kid video, sponsor of this match series, the Junior Speed Chess Championship. But look at this backfire, though. The queen has sort of wandered too yeah. far into the Von Four East. Yes, I'm trying to see the Von Faris through the Taris. Uh, right now. <laughs> it was funnier the second time, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, Knight you get, takes you get your producer the to laugh, the you've pawn done well. removes protection of the B4, uh, the B4 patch. Oh, uh, that's, that's one way to win the queen. That's one way to win the queen. Except I don't even think it wins her. Well, you, could you take you and take play rook the C1? Rook and then she takes C4 and she's getting out. I thought you could trade knights and play rook on FC1 and throw her back on A3 and, and tickle her later. <laughs> <laughs> Knight b6 to d5. Actually, I think that black is just fine. So wow. somehow this queen is surviving despite being kind of in over her head. This is Lasker, um, Lasker, 1919, by the way. Kidding with you, buddy. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, now to bring the other rook over, there's still plenty of time to organize a trap. I just I want the queen to be trapped at this point just because it feels wrong if she doesn't Well, e4, trapped. rook c3 would get the job done. Okay, so that's possibly a threat. E4, so rook what are we C3, gonna see? remove the knight. What are we going to see? We're not going to see f5. Oh, it's too rook C3 ugly. just a l invited? No, but then knight e4. Mm -hmm. Very nice move there by... Knight forks, by my friend. Forks. What did you think was going to happen this game? Right? It's all knights all day. Mm -hmm. JVF loves himself a, an active pony. This queen is either... But okay, from a practical perspective, this is still much harder. And now e4 finally well, comes. Now I he's think getting it. I think that the queen will suffer consequences of how far she went, Help me. Uh, especially with the time. But maybe, okay, but now there's c5. <gasps> queen g3, he misses it, flips the lady across the board. Wow. No way he saw that coming. Or she might get trapped on the king's side. No, I think that he got out. <laughs> well, what about g5? G4, g5, g5, pp on the pp, all up in the p. I would have played g4, the g5 place. there. Look, that's a double pin. Double pin. He's going for g4, g5 now, but you should have just played it before. Uh, th this has been like super. She's still going to get trapped. I told. Well, not really, but super wild. But I mean, Forktown. Wow. Okay. Tari Tari is already almost in must-win territory. Okay, not quite. There's plenty of time down three games, but probably take it. Probably take three. E one. Oh, can't E one hanging right. You can, oh, queen of two saves everything. Okay. And Tari's manages to take his piece home. Yeah, things are he normalizing here. He should get this here. one now. Finally, finally, the smoke is clearing. Maybe rook e3 here. Right. King h2. He's got rook g1. Knight e3, also good enough. Don't play rook g1 now because e3 falls. Although, actually, h4 would have been mate. Yeah, yeah. So he missed it. Rook g1 was possible. Oh, uh, rook, rook g2 he was rook possible. Yeah. Winning the queen. All right. Again. Uh, Still are five seconds left. You oh. might regret not winning the queen there, but yeah, no, he's missed. He's missed two wins. If he doesn't convert on this, this will be one that goes down. Uh oh, in, as rook a, b2 uh, alert. A, a backbreaker. Rook b2 should still be uh -oh. winning. Oh, oh my! No, you, you can take and play right c4. And promote oh tonight! God, promote tonight again! Do. Promote Let's tonight go. again! Se under second under promotion. Get it up there! Oh my <laughs> God, that was ridiculous! <laughs> That was a series of moves that should be illegal, that was a even in the Netherlands, of where everything's okay. That was oh unbelievable. Oh my gosh. What in the world just happened? You know, you got me yesterday in Puzzle Duel, but uh, I, I got the under-promotion tactic Dude, down. And, and that's the second time What's that Jordan here? Van Forrest has under-promoted with alt. He knows what he's doing. Oh, that's too bad. He gave he's away the pawn. Sack and get a draw. But he could have tried to sack his knight for the C-pawn and oh. use the king and the rook pawn to win. He could have tried that idea. That was the most exciting draw in the history of chess. Clip it, mark it down. Certainly in the history was, of the Junior Speed Chess Championship. That was Rabunka. <laughs> that was a trick question, but man. 
on your part. So he should have won the queen with rook g2. I mean, he just would have made life so much producer. easier. Did you, did you wire. tangle yourself? No, I just I keep yeah. hitting some of my feet. I'm going to kick it out All right, of the you, you do you, and I'll take over yeah, the show. you do what you're doing. Okay. We're good. And we've got uh, well, a little wow. uh, a man named Nakamura in hey, chat. Hikaru Nakamura hanging out in chat. No yeah. one wants to miss this this excitement. This has been no – I mean, dude, that game was just, just wild. I'm sure he saw the under-promotion even faster than we did because yeah, I think it's impossible course. not to. The, uh, I, I thought it was over for white. Over for black, over for white, under promotion, and now I've blacked out. Back on <laughs> to another Karakon. So this is this E6. is how many Karakons have we had e6. today? I'm asking e6. that the sixth? Oh, you're saying E6. E6, E6 alert. Oh sorry, uh, I was doing chess. Knight D F three. Yeah. Oh, why not to F three to stop E five? Hmm. Yeah, Jopi not really that confident in his position either. Huh. He gave us a yeah, you're not supposed it, to let that E pawn go down the board. expression worthy of Hikaru right there. Knight D4, E5 was coming. E5 still coming. Big center. Big center, fall hard. Mm -hmm. You call that the snowplow in the chess kid world. Oh, wow. Crazy stuff. Um, Whew. I'm just, just waking me up with the next underpromotion. I know, right? If we underpromote to bishop, we should just give these guys a $1,000 bonus. Yeah, like, uh, that should be a thing. If you yeah. underpromote to Bishop in, like, an actual way that made sense, well, you know, on <laughs> there chess, it is. On chess, could we have achievements? I knew I like knew if you missed my subtle shout-out. I say things, and he reads my mind of what <laughs> of what emote and clip and gif I'm looking for. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, no, that was that was a it was a JVF nod worthy of Hikaru there for a moment. Um, okay. Now here's an attack uh, worthy of something because I think the king is going to get in big trouble. If you Knight g3 is a fork. I, I don't even raise an eyebrow to these forks anymore. I thought this is just a normal fork. Rook g8. Now we've been so caught up in the hype of how that match ended, honestly, Mike, but let's not forget that that game had no business getting away from Ariantari. Yeah, absolutely. He, he missed Rook g2 winning the queen. Rook g1, the move before that, which would have been winning the queen because of the mate. Mm -hmm. So Tari, Tari has had his opportunities to make this match closer, and he hasn't done it yet. Um, and Hikaru mean? actually adding to it. He's saying getting good positions, but he's just too slow. Yeah. He pan I mean, honestly, he panicked there in the time pressure because Rook g2 was winning. Rook I mean, there were so many wins, and he just he panicked, which is, again, where the bullet experience comes into play. And so I think that, I think that you know, look at these two guys' profiles. And you're seeing you're seeing a guy in JVF who's played more than six thousand bullet games. I'm sure, I'm sure some people played more like Hikaru, but that's a lot of bullet chess. Um, and uh, and Aryan is just not even in his league in terms of total bullet games played, and that might end up, um, you know, biting him big time. I want to find a tactic where White's queen's on E. Uh, it's too late now, but I wanted to take the rook and promote tonight and make a fork, and it's not even close to Good. being. Looks in the like he will recover this one though. He's up. He's up a rook, and so tell me about the clock here. Twenty minutes left. At what point is a player sort of dormy where they have to keep winning all the rest to have a chance? Well, I think it depends. I mean, remember we saw we saw um, Jan Christoph Duda down two games with six minutes to play against Alexander Grishik last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might be the most we've come to saying someone is mathematically out, and he won, descended. Actually, if Robert Hess is still, I don't know if anyone's still watching, but he might have been down two games with four minutes to go. Might have been, and there's some time it wasting going on. That We call that the full Belichick. Yeah, so right, right now just, what JVF you know. is doing, everyone, this is a match strategy. Don't be upset. There is no unethical stuff. First of all, Bullet could be stalemate. It isn't. But right now he's milking time off of the total clock because he does have a two-game lead now with that victory. But this is not enough time left in the match for him to be able to milk out a uh, game. I mean, he still is going to have to win some because Tari has plenty of time to come back. Okay, we're starting some different openings here. Is this uh, the G6 Lopez? Yep. D6 is the Steinus. What's G6 again? G6, he can castle and play E5. Yeah. And Carl giving shout-outs to... Uh, to Yopi for the uh, for playing it out, calling it good meta. That's gamers talk. Hikaru's almost gone full twitch. Now, five now in professional American football, work, you sometimes have a person on your sidelines who does clock management. Yeah, is it legal for Luke to be the clock manager and like, like to say something him. like, "Hey, play this out"? Definitely not. And not I don't not think legal. he would. I don't oh, think he would. Okay. But no, I mean, it is interesting, right? That's like the future of team chess. We've been doing these team chess battles, right? Yeah. You have a teammate to kind of like remind you of some big picture stuff. I mean, that's not a bad little uh, variant there. Um. All right, h6 is played. It's a two-game lead. Still 17 minutes left in the total clock. Can you? We I, have a match. I want to take on d4, and then if he takes the knight, play queen takes and, and threaten all kinds of stuff. But none of that works because a queen takes d4 anyway. He's got b5 coming with bishop b7, but this g4 knight has wandered too far from home. Yeah, now he has to play. Oh, g5 and f5, but h3 is. Well, he h3 had, now met with f4. He had to answer knight takes g5 somehow, right? He had to guard his knight. 
But okay, this is this looks like another game that's that's moving in Tari's favor. I mean, this whole thing feels like a very tiltish approach for Black. Hmm, okay, okay, it's bullets, so who knows? So now knight takes knight takes c7. Uh, knight takes g5 now. Oh no, you're gonna get mated because after pawn takes bishop, ah, bishop takes. I'll mate show on that H2. with arrows. If takes takes, we shake and bake on f3 and drop it like it's hot on yeah. h2. Watch out for that. And I was suggesting knight takes g5, but there's similar mates happening after pawn takes bishop. Probably. But now you take g3, and if takes. Oh, I thought he would take f2 in a miso. No, he's going down material anyway. And again, like the instincts I said a few moments ago still stand. I mean, this is this feels like a very tiltish approach for Black. He's now down a rook and. Bueller, Bueller, I'm looking for compensation. So if this is another win for Tari... I think he's going to play knight c4 because he's got to get every last piece he's got in the game. If you want to have any chance of taking on f3, you've got to play this way. Yeah, but this is... I mean, oh, you're this not, is it's a, not, this not is a win for black it's right It's not now. enough, I'm just saying. I mean, sorry, win for white, up a rook. All right, if he wins this, we're back to one Takes game with 16 minutes left. Doesn't blunder his rook if you had taken. C1 fell. Okay, that's a little weird. Yeah, maybe maybe moving the king was better than taking of two straight well, up. We've already seen one botched conversion, and this is oh, you can take twice and play knight g six. Take it twice and then knight g six. Okay. Okay, he's this got still plenty good. of attacking pieces to yeah. beat the queen. In fact, the threat of rook f one to f seven is mate if you're keeping score at home. With only four seconds, he found that. By the way, that was nice. Well, if and I now, find that, he can find it, right? <sighs> It's good. His mouse might be hot right now. Somebody cool him off. That was a nice conversion. Somebody cool him off. We have a match, ladies and gentlemen. At what point do we remind them of the tiebreak rules? We might. We have Saf always letting them know, driving players crazy. Hikaru knows all about that. But in close matches, it matters. Hikaru, yes. you just beat everybody by 20. But in close matches, it matters that we tell everybody what the score is and how much time is remaining. So if you're wondering and curious, do the players know what the situation is? First of all, we do our best to tell them. If they ignore all the different ways that we get a hold of them via chat, you know, that's not really our problem. In fact, Sasha was mad at me. Grishik was mad at me when he lost to, to uh, J, uh, JKD. Um, but um, that's uh, Jan Christoph Duda. But okay, he later, for, he was just mad in the moment that he lost the match. But honestly, I mean, there was, you know, he was being told the match score. And ultimately, he lost right at the, right at the end of time. But I think we could have overtime today. That's how well they're playing. And it's four one plus one games. Is that right? If we go to overtime. In fact, let's yeah. check on the format there because I've I've miscalled overtime before. <laughs> it's my understanding. It's four one plus one games, and if they're still tied, they go to a, an Armageddon. But I think you're right. I think last year I robbed, I robbed um, somebody the opportunity – against a Maxime Vache. Like, no, it was in the bullet this year, I think. I think I said, like, oh, they just keep playing till someone wins, and everyone said, oh, we believe Danny. Uh, <laughs> your mistake. Because <laughs> um, uh, the rules of the bullet chess over time were different. Anyway, back to the chess. This has been an amazing match. Thank you for being here, all 7,000 of you with us. We appreciate your viewership, your love, your support. It means the world, and this match has given us what we... Uh, Given us what we wanted. This has been fun. I'm gonna have to come back in another one. You go, what do you go to the seventh rank or the G file? Probably the seventh rank, right? You know, I like the G file. Third rank. Okay. Would, uh, wouldn't the rook been more productive on D7 than D3? The knight wanted to take the pawn anyway, right? Yep. Ah. Yeah, but this looks good for white because that knight on H7 is just so out of it. Right. I was just thinking if your rook was on D7, you could play bishop H5 and things like that. Okay, maybe black would not have played knight takes C2, but. Yeah, but right, G6 bishop coming. Or with G6 coming. Yep. You could have taken on right. F7, but the okay. bishop was so strong, he wanted to keep it. By the way, if we do go to overtime, there'll be just a 90 second break. That's all. Yep. We, uh, we will make sure the players know the rules and everything. But okay, we still have 13 minutes to go. Anybody's match. This has become a full on comeback right now by Ariantari. Um, who's finding himself in the bullet portion. Proving experience is not the most critical factor, at least at this stage. Um, and uh, he's bringing it. Again, okay. this is a weird just, position. Now who's got the knights? I don't know. Get your knight to g6 and it's mate. Easier said than done. See, so yeah, I'm back to the Melek and me thing, and I'm just trying to find weird mates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Huh. How does white improve here? Walk the king to g6? They just resigned? Uh, black one. Was it a time thing? Can somebody tell me in the chat? I, mean, I wasn't paying attention to the clock. I think he just ran out of time and then r and then ran out of ways to defend. Honestly, the threat was king e7, and how are you defending the rook? I think his rook was just trapped, and we really? weren't realizing it. Okay. 
It's one of those things where White had the pressure the entire time, and we just didn't even yeah, know I mean, the pressure fizzled. I would go to the bat cave, but we're focused on the bullet. No reason to bring up the analysis board. What matters is that is the third win in a row, and we've, Aryan Tari has just tied this match. We've not been tied since, what, 3-3 three, three or something? Yeah, we haven't been tied since midway through the five-minute portion, so if you're just getting here, I guess you made the right call. It's like the NBA. All you got to do is show for the fourth quarter to see these players playing hard, So if right? we put the graphic um, back up, uh, whose head overlays the other one since they're yeah. now tied? How does we'll, that work? We'll bring that back up. <laughs> it's, it's super confusing. I'm going to guess that it's it's they've now become one. Uh, two become one, like every good Spice Girls song. <laughs> and uh, these two are deadlocked as far as our predictions on who will win the match, odds to win the match. This has been a really, really wild ride. But right now, uh, Jordan Van Forest has to stop the bleeding. I mean, Ariantari is in a zone. He's winning, winning games in a row, putting together, putting together good things. Um, wow. I guess uh, you take on G6 here. I mean, isn't that the only antidote to F6? I, but I think it's a good antidote. I don't really like the, the choice here from Jordan Van Forest because even if it wins this E5 pawn, I feel like it's a practical position that I... I like playing white in, I guess. You know, you know, I'm biased toward kingside attacks. Yeah, but, but being, the go. being the aggressor in bullets is a pretty high premium on that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the H-file is real. He's right? attacking without his exists. army, though. You can even play knight d2. Now, be a, be a boss and play a4 rook You know what that threatens. Checkmate patterns with g6, kids. Uh-huh. Can he give away the entire queen side to do it? Yeah, he, he'll, 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 he'll be happy to do it. If he can get g6, it thre that threatens queen d2. I don't think he saw that coming. What a find. Wow. Queen takes d2 check. He's going to have at least a draw now. There's nowhere for the king to hide. Yeah. He's got queen d4, forces king h2. The king has to block the h-file, Queen f4, g3, queen f2. And if king h3, the h-file's blocked. I mean, he could even play for e5 and e4, hitting the king. Whoa, that's a little surprising. Yeah, I would have thrown in the check first, so this, this shenanigans didn't happen. Yeah, what was that about? I think maybe he missed that the other rook could come to the f-file. I don't know. No way. I mean, did he miss that the rook was hanging and that it was forcing king h2? But even queen e3 forced king h2 because you can't walk queen back to the Queen c7's mate on the board. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That Mario was a Atari reversal. Now has a, that was an absolute collapse. That's the game to mark. By Van, that might be our moment of the match. Sorry, JB. I'm taking game back 24. your Amazon gift card. Game 24. Giving it to somebody who just clips that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but seriously, we... Uh, Dude, this is an epic comeback right now. Yeah, he was down four games at one point. And somehow, some way, smart and ch smarter chess proves me wrong again. I don't even know how he does it. Like, this guy's got, you know, some sort of, you know, Tim Donahue strings going on here. Um, no? No. Okay. NBA fixing games reference. Ah, uh, okay. right. The, uh, no, I mean, but it doesn't make sense. I mean, JVF is the better ball. This just shows you that tilt is real, right? Hikaru Nakamura talks a lot about that. I mean, the emotional swings. These matches are difficult because when things start rolling out of control... You don't have a rest day. This is an OTB chess, right? This is... Uh, Bishop takes E6. Not a good move, but maybe it is a good move. I think Queen F3 is probably the more principled way to keep the attack going. Also, how do you stop Knight takes E... All right. So, <laughs> I, I mean, know. but JVF has got to stop the bleeding here. This momentum is running out of control. He's the more experienced bullet player. Um, but right now, he is... Uh, he's, he's... I played it now. Okay, and if takes F4, then Queen G7 is winning. So that's the idea. Okay. He made it more complicated, but he also made it more good. More gooder. More gooder? I'm uh, going to start a school for kids who don't read good, and maybe you can go there. <laughs> How many schools does your family have to start? <laughs> uh, this is bad news. Oh, so man, check the clocks. Hilarious. If he goes up two games, and this match takes another minute or two, Rookie. then it's almost the same yep. Duda story. It's about two games, yep. six minutes left. No, I mean, we're in a we're in a F5. Points out that we have PP on the PP here. The bishop is pinned. Okay. Somehow when that smoke clear, Tari is up a piece, but he's only got 11 seconds and still dealing with an attack. Um, I, I, I like the practical chances for I, JVF. Oh, and there's no way he saw that. Knight takes F6 flying with check. Okay. The bleeding is about to stop. Okay. We so are going to have a tied match. So two and a half hours, we've gotten nowhere. Two and a half hours, we've gotten nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, seems where we're headed. Okay. I mean... I'm speaking a little prematurely, but he's got 40 seconds and he's completely winning on the board. You would think that uh, Van Forest takes care of this one, but that move knight d7 is a little odd. He leans back, right, but not the gangster rap style. He's not pulling up his pants. He's like, uh-oh, I may have missed that. Um, okay, he manages to hold on to the piece. Tari only has three seconds. Queen f4 check is coming, followed by knight out could at just, some point. Could have traded queens on d4. 
Yeah, I still, think still can at some point. Good enough. Queen d4. The d set. I thought queen d4 would have been winning the knight on move I one. Just, it was. He missed it. Just take the knight. You can do anything you want okay, here. But if he has it again, queen d4. Okay. He fool him twice. Not so. Not not so fast. And then knight c8 wins the queen. Okay. So he sees it the second time. We have a tied match with right. only seven minutes to go. At least two games left. I've, More than know, that, probably. You know what's so exciting? I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> there goes mm -hmm. Smarter Chess. Like, oh, guess who was right? Whatever, kid. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Is that an actual video of what Matt Jensen looks like as a kid? It's pretty close. It's pretty close. <laughs> it's got to be pretty close. <laughs> nice do. Smarter Chess's legend and celebrity continues to grow with his Cut. somehow accurate win prop. I mean, this is literally becoming down to a coin flip, which is basically what he predicted, that this would be a one-game match. Yeah, and actually, I kid. think it's flipped back. So, you know, uh, Jordan van Forest was faster in the five, mm -hmm. and then it flipped in the three, and now he's back to being maybe a little faster in the five, in the one, right? Crazy. All right. Well, um, the players, I assume, are being told, of course, um, they only have six minutes left. I'm sure, I mean, there's no, you can see it on their faces. You know that they know every game is critical at this point. That's kind of the memo you need, right? You don't need six different bosses to tell you about the TPS report you didn't deliver on your desk, right? Um, they know They know what's going on here. I guess Bishop just, C5. Just double rooks on the D file. Okay, double rooks, also good. Double rooks, and then you've got some ideas of Bishop C5, you know, kind of normal chess. Yep. <laughs> Steffi94 says, the clip of the day should have been when I said that Jordan Van Forest is the huge favorite in Bullet. Touche. Touche. We'll see. Not over yet, right? Shout out to the Chess TV chat and the Twitch chat. We've got Anna Chess with us. That's Anna Rudolph, Grandmaster of Kara Nakamura. Everyone's showing up here for what looks to be a photo finish in store. Um, okay. Yopi back to being up on the clock. Hikaru says, unpleasant for black. Unpleasant in game for black. Okay. He's getting some counterplay now, though, on the G file. Using the H file. C4, what's the threat? Because if it doesn't threat anything, here comes the rooks. They're going to double up. Okay, don't double now, obviously. But if the king had gone to E2, we might have seen the other rook join the H file party. I think this has turned around a little bit. Um, yeah, if takes, takes back with the knight, and then black gets the pressure, so he's not going to do that. Never go full takes, takes, takes when Hikaru's in the chat. Okay, he still wants to take and play knight E4, perhaps. And yep. he might still do it. Yeah, actually. Take and play knight f4. Okay, but then takes, f takes. f5 is uh, not so safe. Yeah, but a centralized knight competing with a bishop that normally would be the better binder piece here with pawns on both sides. And we know the knight is worth seven points today. We've been seeing that all day. Right. The yeah. knight is worth seven <laughs> points in blitz and bullets somehow. Nobody knows how. Okay, white did um, succeed in fixing black's pawns on the color he wants them to be on, the targeted seven, color. Seven, knight, okay, knight c5 is hitting a4. Um, white pawn feels fast. He, did he blunder? He just blundered. And he's leaning in. Oh, MGs are snaps. Wow, that was... Uh, that I was mean, literally... I mean, he it was playing well enough to be holding the endgame, maybe even going to be a little better with the A-pawn. I guess the bishop and rook with the G-pawn were still dangerous, but that was just a massive blunder. And with four minutes to go, we have a lead for the Norwegian, who, again, if you're just joining us, was down four games in this match at one point and you always ask that we always ask what is the biggest lead that has ever been lost or the biggest deficit ever overcome and it is four games so we have never seen someone overcome five games still to this day but we have seen four game leads overcome and we may be seeing another one this game began with a little more than four minutes and correct me if i'm wrong you can't really have a one plus one game go four minutes it would have to be incredibly long right could be right. I yeah. mean, it, you know, I think you could. But if Tari um, wins this game, it's over because you can match. Yes. You can match stall the final game yep. if, if he's paying attention to the clock. But I mean, yeah. okay. No, so. this is now now, and he's got a great attack. I mean, this is like Yopi is in position to win a game here. Lots of space. Very easy position playing bullet. But yeah, no, this is like if it's a draw, it's not over. But if if Tari wins this game, this match is over. Knight's and we coming have a to huge H. Comeback completed. Knight, Knight's coming to H four probably. And he's giving the pawn. He's not even trying to guard it with his king, which would have been crazy. G5. The knight can go to G2. Nobody just wins the pawn. That's So from a practical point of view, though, Tari got his king out of the center. That's true. I think from a bullet perspective, like this position just got a little easier for black to play. Now white's worried about the king, right? White's got, white's got a king on an open F file. Wow, he's going to shelter his king on like G3 or something? G2 maybe? Rook H7 is possible here? No, you got to be worried about discoveries. It might have been possible. Okay. Second time around, he finds it. Almost certainly the penultimate game at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we guard e6? 
E6 under fire, also she have to use your knight queen. h5, and then using the f6 square. Gotta use your queen, yeah, because even, even like taking... Bishop takes d5! But he misses that it's not checked! Well, it's no, you checked! Take, you take on c6 to check. It's a double check. But the bishop is pinned. Right. So does it still work? It does still work, even if queen d7, the bishop... They couldn't have seen what this. What a tactic. There's no way he saw it all that. You see that little, like, lean yeah. back breath of fresh air? This He's is, like, oh, I didn't plunder. This is where you get Thank active God. pieces, because active pieces mean good things. Right. Yeah. But that was nuts. That bishop takes. I don't think he saw that bishop takes c6 was check. If I, I'm gonna ask him oh, about that. Look at that this knight b4 move today. threatening bishop c6. I mean, it's not like forced or anything, but it's a pretty clever move to find. Okay, in, at you the right have moment. to win this game. If you are JVF, you are literally in must-win territory now. And if you win, you tie the match, and we get down to a winner-take-all single game, most likely. <laughs> we but. got this lurking knight that is just giving me all kinds of panic right? attacks. You've got lurking queen a3 check, a7, mm. the knight a4. Queen d6, a nice way to bring it. Working that queen in like it's surgical. Yep. Bishop b7 threatens bishop, bishop c5. Bishop b queen a7. Well, he's going to play bishop b4, queen a5 is another idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, bishop c5, queen a7 is cute. You want to sack the queen. Yeah. I want to sack the you queen. Get, bring you bring get it to the c5. Cuteness. He likes it. You Give get me the, the queen sack. Give it to me. No, it's not mate. Oh. <laughs> not anymore. <sighs> hey, my idea would have stopped that. Just saying. It's mate. If he had played queen a7, okay, but he gets that. Either way, we have okay. tied. Tied, and almost certainly the final game. By the way, queen a7, rook a7, a4 was a cuter mate. FYI for the record. And? We have a winner-take-all moment right now. This, this is, is it. it. Okay. I'm like, I don't even look at the analysis for it. I'm like, like, everybody's looking right here. We're all looking at the same thing. Like, what's going to happen? I'm so nervous, Mom. Come on. No. The match is almost over, Mom. <laughs> We have to go to soccer practice. I don't even want to play this season, Mom. <laughs> I want to watch Twitch. <laughs> they don't look like they're nervous on the screen. Dad's but I, like, you signed up be. for soccer. You followed through with your commitments. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're having an existential crisis over there. This is the literally my <laughs> life. I have walked up and unplugged Fortnite when Nash was playing because baseball practice was starting. And then, like, their face is like... <laughs> Um, all right. All right. How do we how do we sack a knight on f5? I don't know. Or on I'm so excited. This is such an interesting match. These guys have both played great. I'm sorry that this is going to end. They both put a rook on e1 and match. play knight d5 and just win. Uh, oh my gosh! Bishop see. g4 is coming. Bishop g4 is coming. He blundered it. Bishop yeah. G4. What's an exchange on a blood game? Come on. Right. I mean, I don't disagree, but it, you know, it was a blunder. That could um, be, this is important that this move that is That dark for bishop is a problem, but the knight will get d5. Do you even want it? I think you do. I don't know I if that you was do. the I right you trade. Take, you take because there's lingering ideas on the dark square diagonal. I know, but that knight's coming to d5. Yeah, you could argue that the knight is as good as the rook here. <gasps> doesn't move his queen. Doesn't wonder his queen. No, his, his king sl slid over when we were talking about soccer when practice. I was, when I was distracted. Yeah. 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 Uh, why Crazy would you, stuff. Why would you not castle quickly and often? Okay, you don't really want to take on b7, because after castles, a rook's going to b8. Yeah, queen takes I would c3. castle kingside, put the bishop on f6, so I think that somehow JVF has... Right, but that's no, why white's not taking on that d7. That knight on d5, it's a monster. It is. And he got rid of it right away, instead of yeah, keeping that... Instead of keeping that that idea in in I feel like c3 in his was like the move there. To keep the knight on d5, guard the diagonal. Well, he has to move his queen and play rook f5. Yeah, he's got an that's attack. That's his idea. He's got an attack. You gotta give... Don't play rook f5 now, because queen takes rook. That would have been a blunder. Yeah. Well, uh, it's it the same blunder. This is the attack. PP yeah. on the PP. You got palm problems. Peshka uh -oh. falls. This is this is uh -oh. it. JBF might be about to stop one of the is. biggest comebacks ever. And check the time. He's way up on time as well. Oh my gosh. This is this dire is straits. This dire is the straits. final game. Whoever, if, if this game is decisive, we have a winner. I don't see what White does here. I mean, the the, the pressure is mean, all going away. But it's bullet, right? Any blunder can happen. We're going to catch up with the players after this, so don't go anywhere regardless of what happens. We're going to have... Okay, he's at least got a threat, a right? He at least made a rook g4 threat. Rook g4 is a threat. If you uh, play f5, the e5 rook loses protection. Right. Okay. Very nice he's... way to defend. He's going to slide the rook to g5. Okay. Bishop and gets, c2's gets falling. E4. C2's falling. But bishop e4 is a queen c2. Idea? Oh, you meant queen takes. Not queen rook takes c2, and if rook g4, you had rook g5. Oh, but if trade, then f7 fell. Okay, so he was nervous about okay, it. Okay, but he can't just take on g3. Yeah. All right, I mean, it's not like White really had anything. He just tried something. Oh, we're getting down to it. Now E4 is falling. I think you missed that. It. It's just over. He's winning the bishop on E4. Well, the rook on G3 is hanging. But it should be enough with the queen. Yeah, it should still be enough. I'm just saying it's not. Uh, what do you do now? You take and play king G6. There's no way to deal with is queen there G5. there a puncher's check. chance here? And he resigns. And that's, that's it. That's it. 
Jordan Van Faris, the Flying Dutchman, moves on. They don't know. They, they don't didn't know. know. They're they're rematching, but we have rules against the continuation. The of game play. will be aborted. That is the match. And Tori. Oh, and he now oh he realizes what just happened. He must wow. know, he must know the score too, and that that was it. Has to has to know the score. It's but like it's like he knows he lost, but Faris doesn't know that he won. Yeah. No, Tori, Tori knows Tori knows what's up. You could tell by the reaction. Luke should be watching in the other room, the broadcast, and running in and giving JBF a JBF knows that he won. Now, likely, he's learning. The whole chat's going wild. Wow. 8,300 of you with us. If any of you go anywhere, it will break my heart. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with interviews with the players. The first ever Junior Speed Chess Championship match brought to you by Chess Kid is in the books. The Dutchman moves on. A four-game comeback by Aryan Tari stopped at the last moments by JVF. When we return, we will have interviews with the players. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Sit tight. And we are back now, joined by our players who gave us gave us quite the show. One of one of the best speed chess championship matches I've ever been a part of. Um, it was the first ever junior speed chess championship, so you guys really set the bar high. Um, Aryan, we're going to start with you. Obviously, I know that despite how great the match was, clearly didn't didn't exactly end the way you wanted it to. But you really found a rhythm there in Bullet. Were were you aware or not aware of how much time was remaining in the match clock? I was not aware. Uh, I just, I, I was like, after the last game, I thought it might be the end, but uh, I was hoping that it would be one more game. Right. So you were kind of aware, right? You knew it was getting close and it just, you know, got yeah, came down I mean, to the wire I was, there. I knew we were like playing 30 minutes, so it's going to be very fast. Right. Jordan, you stopped the bleeding at the last moment when it finally mattered, but how, how rattled were you when Aryan was just just rolling through games and, and almost completed uh, was an amazing comeback and at one point was leading there. Yeah, in the five minutes I was doing pretty well, I thought, but then suddenly in the three minutes I started uh, blundering everything. My level play dropped severely and Aryan started winning game after game. And the uh, same started happening in the one minute. So yeah, that was very, very upsetting. And uh, after I was down uh, a game with like a few minutes to go, I was like, I was like, thinking I'm probably going to lose the match or something, but yeah, it was really tough. Uh, Jordan, a couple times today, especially during the under promotions, Danny and I were yelling. Uh, I'm curious if Luke was watching the match on the internet in the other room and if he yelled at all during the match. Uh, I don't know. Luke, tell them. Come on, I'm, I'm a dad and I have two kids. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I don't want to watch Jordan's shitty game. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Do, do, you, do you guys have Auto Queen on, or did you have to hold down Alt to promote the Knights? Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I was holding on, uh, holding uh, Alt button. Uh, I, okay. I had Auto Queen uh, on, but uh, I was hoping that Jordan did not have it because. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I also had it on, but I, 
I, I knew the alt button you can use uh, on the promotion. There you go. Well, it, pay, it pays to play on chess.com. I, I, I was going to say, you both seem very familiar with the auto queen and using alt, and I've made that mistake. But, Arjan, on, on that note, I, I think one of the storylines coming in here was that uh, JVF, Jordan Van Forest, has played more than 6,000 games of Bullet on our site. You had played, going into this match today, less than 20, um, at least on your official account. Uh, how? But but clearly it didn't seem to matter. You you actually won the bullet chess portion overall, even though you lost the match. How confident were you that that you would be able to hold your own uh, your own in bullet despite having not played nearly as many games as him? Yeah, I wasn't sure at all how I'm going to be in bullet. I thought also Jordan might be the favorite because uh, I know that he played more than me on chess.com, and I started playing bullet two days ago. But generally, I find it the most fun uh, portion and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I like it much more than five plus one. And it worked out very well. Yeah. We saw a ton of night forks in this match. Uh, I think Jordan may have had it slightly more than Aryan, but certainly, I mean, some of them were quite unexpected. But do you think about that when you play your Blitz games, that you value the night a little bit more than you would in a classical game? Or is that something that just happens nat and organically, that you don't actually value the night a little bit more? Uh. Yeah, I mean, in normal games, I prefer the bishop over the knight, but in a bullet knight can knights can certainly be tricky. But I mean, first of all, it really depends on the kind of position you're playing. Uh, bishops can also be great pieces. And second of all, I don't. It's not really really like I'm going uh, for the, such a decision like consciously like uh, thinking uh, I should go for the knight instead of the bishop or something. I see. It's I more of an. Uh, I agree with Jordan. It really depends on the position and. Uh... I mean, when you get one second extra per move, you will never lose on time. Gotcha. It's more of an accidental feature of the night. You're not going for those sorts of things. So, taking a step back a little bit, one of the one of the things we talked about throughout the match was uh, the consistency you guys had in your repertoire. Uh, I mean, things mixed up a few times, but overall there was a lot of e4 and a lot of Carol cons. Um, Jordan, when you were when you were white, was that something you guys both expected uh, coming into the match to get that opening a lot? Yeah, I prepared this line a little bit, not not too much, but I thought Aryan might play the Karo Khan uh, or e4, e5. And actually, against e4, e5, I prepared this knight c3, g3 system, but every time on second move by x and I played this knight f3, so then I couldn't go back to the system, but I think in the end it was a good choice because the one time I did get to play that game, I lost in like 10 moves. So. That was I was going to say that was that was the game of the match that we were talking about as the comeback was on. Did that did that get you excited, Arion, to get that mini that mini victory there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a very n nice win because Jordan just uh, I don't know he forgot to move already in the opening or something, and uh, I got a free pointer basically. So then I felt better and I managed to come back. But generally, yeah, I, mean, that... I, I was expecting e4 uh, by Jordan and. Uh, yeah, I decided to play the Karukan, but uh, I didn't look at this knight f3, d3. It's a common uh, sort of platitude in the chess world that you're just taking things one game at a time. In this case, one match at a time. Uh, Jordan, I'm curious, do you even know who's playing in the 1 versus 16 matchup next? Have you looked in the bracket at all? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so the platitude holds with you. Yeah. You passed the test, right, <laughs> of, a, of a chess player focused in, in front yeah. of them. Now, Aryan. I guess asking you then what's next. We know that you, you unfortunately won't be able to win the Junior Speeches Championship, but you could still qualify, uh, given that there are a couple of open qualifiers in July. Are you going to play in those and, and try to get your way into the SCC the, the old-fashioned way? Qualify? Oh, well, that's for the Fisher Random, right? Well, there's Fisher Random qualifiers, but no, the Speeches Championship actually has other open tournaments with one more chance to qualify, even, even for players in the Junior. I don't know if you're planning on playing it, still trying to get in. Uh, I didn't know about that, so... There we uh, go, yeah. right? Uh, I should play, I guess. That would be funny if you went on to qualify and you won the Speed Chess Championship, but you didn't lose win the Junior Speed Chess there Championship. There you go. That, could, <laughs> that, would be, that would be a stat for the ages. But so, guys, this was, this was absolutely amazing. I mean, you guys, we were, we were at peak viewership at the end of the show today. Everybody was on the edge of their seat. Um, I mean, honestly, you guys gave us, you guys gave us uh, quite the show. Um, I don't even have any other questions besides a huge thank you and a congratulations to both of you on an amazing match. Um, but I guess we should come back to JVF and say, well, now that you know, maybe you have looked, and if we if we show our bracket, who's playing in the one sixteen match? So, um, who would you who would you like to play as uh, Grandmaster Wei Yi and uh, Prognandana 
to go down there. Um, who do you who do you think's the favorite there? I think I guess there's an obvious answer. But what are your thoughts on on facing either of those two guys? 